What do you want, Mom? If you don't hurry and get away from that mirror, you'll be late for your first yellow broadcast. I'll be late for the second one, too. You're making me nervous. Now, your hair looks all right. Stop printing. Oh, it's a mess. <laughs> hey, Mom, can I borrow your curling iron? Why don't you use your own? I ruined it last night at a weenie bake. Oh, well, I look good enough. So long, Mom. Goodbye, son. Now, remember, Philip, be nice to Mr. Benny. He might give you a raise this year. He wouldn't give me a raise if I could read music. So long. Oh, Ma, what time is it? It's time for you to go to the broadcast. Now, hurry, Kenny, or you'll be late. Oh, gee, I'm nervous. Darn this coat. I keep getting both arms in one sleeve. That's the laundry bag. Take it off. <laughs> gee, I'm lucky you didn't send me out. Well, so long, Ma. Now, Kenny, sing good tonight. And remember, be very nice to Mr. Benny. Oh, can't I give him a hot foot? Not until next week. Okay. Goodbye, Ma. Goodbye, dope. Hello? Oh, hello, Mama. Yes, this is Mary. Yes, Mama, I'm just leaving for the broadcast. And gee, I'm so nervous. Yes, we're all going to be together again, our whole gang. No, no, Mama, they didn't fire Jack. I don't know why, they just didn't. <laughs> uh, by the way, Mama, how's Papa? What? He did? <laughs> he broke his leg in a swing contest. <laughs> why, the old jitterbug. What? No, Mama, no. No, you mustn't. They only do that to horses. <laughs> Well, thanks for calling. i got to run along now. Goodbye, Mama. Gee, i better hurry. You better hurry up, Mr. Benny. If you don't leave right away, you're going to miss the program. Rochester, how can I leave right away when you're still pressing my pants? I can't go to the broadcast in my underwear. That's right. You have got both legs. <laughs> I have not. It's the way the light hits me. Hey, Rochester, look at that smoke. Are my pants burning? It ain't wrong. <laughs> well, give them to me before they're ruined. You know, it's a funny thing, but every time you press my pants, you burn a hole in them. Yeah, that is funny. Yeah, well, don't laugh. Oh, well, I'll put on an old pair so I won't be late for breakfast. You know, Rochester, I don't know why I pay you. I don't even know when. <laughs> I told you I'd pay you as soon as I went back to work. Right now, I'm short of cash. What's that green stuff in your mattress, Grant? <laughs> yes, it's grass. Well, I mowed some of it last night. <laughs> now, Rochester, you stay away from my mattress. I'm saving that for a rainy day. Well, so long, I'm off the studio. Good luck. Say, boss, can I borrow your top hat tonight? I'm going to the grand opening of a chicken shack. No, you can't have it. And another thing, I wish you'd stop voting for Bill Robinson and all those popularity contests. You're working for me. Goodbye. So long, boss. Well, he's gone now. Come on out, Josephine. <laughs> The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, after 13 weeks vacation, we set sail on the sea of joy. It is my pleasure to bring you the jolly skipper of the good ship Jell-O, Jack Benny. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and thanks, Don, thanks for that corny introduction. <laughs> Jolly skipper of the good ship Jello. Oh, brother. <laughs> that came off a cob with a gray tassel. <laughs> well, gee, Jack, I thought that introduction was cute. Don, this is our opening program. We've got a hit much higher than cute. <laughs> Believe me. Well, anyway, here we are together again, ready to hit that old trail for another 39 weeks. I know we're going to have a lot of fun. Huh? Yes, sir. Do you feel nervous tonight, Jack? No, why should I be? We have the same studio, same gang, same sponsor, and the same old microphone. Hello, Mike. What's new? <laughs> well, that's the only change that I know of. Huh? 
But no kidding, Don, it's good to see you again. Let me look <laughs> at you. Say, you've lost some weight, haven't you? Oh, not so you can notice it. I didn't notice it, Don. Just making conversation. You know, <laughs> you know people always say that. Eh? Well, now that you mentioned it, Jack, I did go on a diet, and I'm two pounds lighter. Two pounds lighter? Well, that's like taking a bucket of sand away from the Sahara Desert. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry, Don. Stay the way you are. You're all right. Well, Jack, you look as though your vacation did you a lot of good. You look rested. Yes, I had a nice rest. Of course, I had to cut my vacation short on account of the uh, American Legion Convention here. You know, I'm a legionnaire. I belong to the Lake Forest, Illinois, Post. You see? Lake Forest? Yeah. Well, I thought your home was in Waukegan. How do you happen to belong to the Lake Forest Post? Well, uh, Don, you see, Lake Forest is eight miles south of Waukegan, and... That's where the recruiting officers caught me. Oh. <laughs> I figured you might as well be loyal to wherever you're nabbed, you know. Look who's here! Hello, Donzie. Hiya, Jack, old boy. Glad to see you. Bill Harris. Oh. Uh, gee, Phil, it's nice to see you again. Huh? Thanks. Glad to see you too, baby. Baby? <laughs> Phil, this is a cigar in my mouth, not a teething ring. <laughs> well, Phil, here you are, back on the job with your boys again. Is your orchestra all rehearsed? Yeah, they know when to laugh. <laughs> I don't mean that. But gee whiz, Phil, you're certainly in great shape. You're tan and rugged. What have you been doing with yourself? Well, I'll tell you, Jack. I've been exercising and going to bed early, and to top it off, I haven't had a drink in four months. Oh, you're kidding. No, if you don't believe it, look at me shake. <laughs> Same old Bill. Huh? Well, where did you go this summer, Bill? Oh, I worked most of the time, and I took my orchestra on tour across the country. And by the way, Jack, we even played your hometown, Waukegan. You did? Gee, I bet you got a great reception there. What hotel did you stop at? The one with a bath in it. <laughs> oh, the new one. <laughs> oh, the Chateau Waukegan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, pretty swanky, isn't it? Yeah, I had a lovely room overlooking a cow. <laughs> now, listen, Phil, there are no cows on the main street in Waukegan. It's a pretty modern, peppy little town. It's peppy, all right. We held a swing contest one night, and a cigar store Indian won it. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> Waukegan is a regular ball of fire. All right, all right. I was only trying to rip you. I had a swell time there. Well, that's different. Uh, say, Phil, did you meet any of my old gang there, you know, and any of my pals? Oh, yeah, I bought a suit of clothes from a friend of yours there, a fellow named, uh, um... Julius? That's Julius the Finnegan? Guy. That's huh? the guy. Oh, uh, you bought a suit from Julius, huh? Was it a good fit? Yeah, until he let go of the back. <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> don't, don't run down his clothes. Just so happens that the suit I've got on right now, I bought from Julius. That one? Yes, I had it for years, and it wears like iron. Here, feel it. Here. See, the suit might rust, but it'll never shrink. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else, Bill. The last time I was there... Come in. Well, well, if it isn't the effervescent kid, Surefire Livingston. Mary! Yes. Applause. Uh, hello, Mary. Gee, you look great, huh? Gee, it's great to see everybody again. Come here, Don. Here's a great big kiss for you. Oh. Well... <laughs> Oh, hot oh, oh. mm. oh, Wow! Hey, control yourself, Don. Yeah, he only got the blue plate. Oh. And, Phil, here's one for you. Plant it, honey. Pull in your lips, Phil. You look like a you bangy <laughs> Mary, Mary, that's enough. Cut it out now. Okay, remember where we left off, Phil. I won't forget. <laughs> Come on, Mary, now. How about giving me a kiss? Oh, Jack, not in front of all these people. <laughs> what about Don and Phil? You certainly got modest all of a sudden. Yeah, just in time. That's so. What you see in Harris, I don't know. That guy'd kiss anybody with a skirt on. Wouldn't you, Phil? Anybody but Harry Lauder. <laughs> you ain't kidding. <laughs> oh, uh, Mary, before I forget it, uh, I want to congratulate you on your marvelous performance last Monday night in Seven Keys of Ball State. Well, thanks, Don. I thought I was kind of clever. Clever nothing, kid. You were terrific. They're right, Mary. You were excellent. Now, you take that scene that you did with me. You know, the, uh, 
One where I... Oh, was... that was one of your best scenes, Mary. It sure was. <laughs> and it was a tough one, too. Yes, sir. Mary and I had to really work to put that one over. I... <laughs> Mary, you were so convincing. I believed every word of it. Well, thanks, Bill. I did my best. Yep, we really went to town on that. Huh? <laughs> but you know, fellas, my favorite scene was when the maniac came in and threatened to kill me. And I had to think mighty fast. You were the... great in that, Mary. Thanks, Don. You weren't even in it. <laughs> Thanks, Don. Thanks, Don. You know, fellas, if I wasn't so modest, I could talk about my performance, too. If somebody will ask me, for heaven's sake. If you want my opinion, the best thing in the whole play was my telephone conversation with Cecil B. DeMille. You know that long scene? Yeah, boy, was it long. All right, fellas, I know you're kidding. You're not going to get my goat not on the first program, anyway. Well, Phil, how about playing a number? I'd like to hear the boys again. Okay, we're all set. Say, Jack, where's Kenny? Oh, he'll be along pretty soon. I'm kind of anxious to see him. You probably have a lot to tell us about his trip to England. I bet he comes back from London with a monocle, a top hat, and a cane. And a fog all around him. Oh, I don't know. Kenny might have been a little slow last year, but now that he's been abroad, he might surprise us all. You know? Come in. Mr. Benny? Yeah? On behalf of the 48 states, Canada, and the Hawaiian Islands, I want to welcome you back to Radio Land. Well, thanks. Now, for the third consecutive year, who are you? Just a flatfoot stoogie with a floy floy. Goodbye. <laughs> you know, I could use his head in my trophy room. Play <laughs> that. That was What Goes On Here in My Heart, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And, Phil, I want to compliment you on the remarkable change in your band. But you never know there's the same bunch. It is, and I got all new men this year. You have? What came to the boys? What became of the boys you had last year? Oh, they're working. Well, that's good. Huh? Uh, what what band are they with? You don't think they could get a job with a band, do you? Well, no, no. <laughs> think of it. No. <laughs> I should never have asked that, fellow. Well, this is a nice outfit you got. Say, I see you've added a flute to the orchestra. Where? Right there. That's not a flute. That's a bean shooter. <laughs> Oh, so that's it. All the time I thought I had shooting pains in my neck. <laughs> well, it's a little bit annoying while I'm broadcasting. I wish you'd speak to him. I'm not going to get an interpreter just for that. Well. <laughs> anyway, Phil, I'm glad you got rid of your old gang, because toward the end of the last season, they were getting pretty fresh there, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were. Getting pretty, pretty fresh. <laughs> yep. Say, Jack, what? I just happened to think of something. What is it? What about the $15 Phil's old piano player owed you? The guy in the old... Hmm. The... Hey, that's right. He borrowed 15 smackers for me. Phil, where is that guy anyway? Oh, I've seen him around town. It's fine. He's probably sitting in some nightclub having a swell time with my 15 bucks. Well, there's one consolation. He isn't eating. Why not? Jack took his bridge work for security. <laughs> <laughs> What if I have got his bridge work? He suggested it. Yeah, next time you'll keep his mouth shut. Yeah. He tried to while Jack was taking it out. That's a lie. I cut this finger opening a can of peaches. <laughs> I know what I'll do. I'll take the $15 out of Phil's salary. You know, Phil, you're responsible for your musician's debt. Listen, Jack, I don't even pay my own. Is that so? Well, I'm going to turn over a new leaf for you. And another thing, before you fire any of your guys... Come in. Announcing the Jello tenor, Mr. Kenneth Baker. Kenny. <laughs> Kenny. To you, everybody. Kenny, gee, I'm glad to see you again. Sure missed you, kid. Glad to see you too, old man. Hiya, Kenny. And Philip old thing. Mm. Hello, Kenny. And Don Wilson, South Pillow. Well, that fits. And uh, where's our little leading lady? Ah, oh, there you are. Yeah. Hello, Marie. You look rippy. Hip, hip. Up home. I pass. Gee, Kenny, no one would ever know you'd been to England. Uh, shall I wait downstairs, Mr. Baker? Now, nah, stick around, Higgins. Here, give me your hat. I'll hang it up. Very good, sir. <laughs> Say, who is that, Kenny? Oh, I brought him over from England. That's Higgins, my valet. Kenny, if he's your valet, what are you hanging his hat up for? Oh, he'd do as much for me. <laughs> Well, that's thoughtful. Can you imagine that, fellas? What does Kenny need with a valet? He's getting too old for his mother to dress him. (laughs) 
Well, valid or no valid, Teddy, it's great to have you back again. Well, tell us something about London. How did you like it? Oh, well, it's beautiful, Jack. It is, huh? And, oh, boy, did I have fun driving around the town. I took in everything. Oh, you did? I say, I bet it was hard getting used to driving on the left-hand side of the street, huh? Yeah. It took me about four cars. Well, I... <laughs> I figured it would there. Tell me, Kenny, did you, uh... Hey, Kenny. Yeah? Did you get over to Paris? Did I? I'll say. And, Jack, have I got something to show you. Come here a minute, will you? What have you got, Kenny? Yeah, what is it? Now, nobody can see him but Jack. Come here, Jack. Look. Mmm, postcard. <laughs> postcard? And how? Look at this one, Jack. Well, well, the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> wow! Wow. Ain't that hot stuff? And, and get this one, Napoleon's tomb. <laughs> Pretty risque, huh? Kenny, there's nothing risque about these cars. They're perfectly all right. Well, I can't understand that. I bought them in an alley. <laughs> I'll put them away and don't show them to anybody. Don't worry. What a guy. All right, Kenny, now that you're here, we're all together again. How about a song? Okay, huh? I'm ready. Well, I beg pardon, Mr. Baker, but it's time for your tea. Oh, righto. Kenny, we don't serve tea on this program. You're not in England now, you know. Well, if I can't have my tea, I won't sing. Oh, you won't, eh? You'll sing if I have to send for Chamberlain. <laughs> Imagine that, Mary. Eight weeks in London and he won't sing without his tea. Lucky he didn't go to Alaska. He'd have to throw him a fish. You said it. Oh, go ahead and sing. Higgins, I'll take that tea. <laughs> That was Irving Berlin's Remember, sung by Kenny Baker, England's gift to the United States. <laughs> Congratulations, Kenny. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and now, and now, and now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, as the half hour of our first program is nearly up, I would like to announce that next Sunday night, we are going to offer the first dramatic thunderbolt of the Benny Theater Project for the new season. We are going to present for your amazement none other than our own version of Metro Goldwyn Mayer's current success, Yellow Jack. Thank you. This play deals with the situation in Cuba right after the Spanish American War and the heroic efforts of the United States Medical Corps to forever rid the world of that dread disease, Yellow Fever. We will now give you a preview of some of the highlights of this stirring production. <laughs> Drama! <laughs> oh, oh. Jack! Jack, are you all right? Oh, nurse, these mosquitoes. These infernal mosquitoes are killing me. Did you put up the net? Yes, and they started to play badminton. Oh. Suspense! <laughs> Darn that mosquito. Ha ha, you missed me. <laughs> I'll get you next Sunday or my name ain't... Comedy! Who was that mosquito I seen you with last night? That was no mosquito. She just looked like one. Oh. Go <laughs> back! Whoa. Whoa. Virginia. Virginia, listen to me. Yes, Sergeant? This is a dangerous experiment, and the odds are against me. If I come out of this alive, will you marry me? What are the odds? <laughs> you have just heard only a few of the highlights. <laughs> For next week's sensational offer. So be sure to tune in next Sunday night. Yellow Jack. Thank you. Play for it. And we hope you'll all be with us again next Sunday night at the same time. Don't forget new thrills, new laughs, and mosquitoes trained by Busby Berkeley. In our version of Yellow Jack. And now, folks. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Oh, take it, Mary. Well, that's right away. Huh? That's kind of quick there. Oh, Jack, it's from Fred Allen. Allen? What does it say? Uh, dear Jack, just heard your opening program. Motion pictures are my best entertainment. <laughs> that's so. Good night, folks. Start right away. Start that kind of stuff. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you our master of ceremonies. I could say he's one of the greatest comedians of all time. I could say he's one of the most glamorous lovers of the screen. I could say he's an outstanding personality. Well, why don't you? All right, I will. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Benny. (laughs) 
<laughs> Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and listen, Don, no more that I could say stuff. For heaven's sake, if you have anything as nice as that on your mind, come out with it. I can take it. Well, uh, at first I was going to, Jack, but then I thought I'd better tone it down a bit, not make it too strong. Don, I wish you wouldn't mull over things. If you have a sudden thought that I'm marvelous, say so. And if you think I'm a heel, think it over. <laughs> That's my motto. I remember that. I wish you would. Oh, uh, by the way, Jack, uh, what did you hear about our opening program last week? Any comments? Well, Don, to tell you the truth, I got mixed opinions on it. You know how people are. Mm, kind of spotty, huh? Yeah, some people thought our show was marvelous, but others thought it was terrific. <laughs> That's what I like to hear, both sides, you know? Well, Jack, uh, didn't anyone say the show was bad? No, Don, not a soul. I didn't hear one unfavorable comment. Jack, that's unbelievable. I know it. That's the trouble. <laughs> but on the whole, Don, the critics were very nice. Now, take Jimmy Fiddler. He was grand. He gave us two bells and a tinkle. <laughs> <laughs> a tinkle? Yes, that's a bell, only he doesn't put his heart into it. You know? <laughs> uh, did you hear anything nice about our show, Don? Oh, yes, I did. I read the swell review in the Grapefruit Growers Journal. Oh, the great. <laughs> The grapefruit growers, did they like us? I'll say they gave us three squirts. <laughs> well, that's marvelous. A squirt, eh? Did you call me, Jack? <laughs> no, no, Kenny, but as long as you're here, stick around. Uh, Don and I were just talking about our first program. Did you hear anything about it, Kenny? Oh, my mother was crazy about it. Yeah. She thought it was very asinine. <laughs> Oh, she did. Well, you didn't help the show any, dragging in that goofy valet of yours that you brought back from England. What a guy that was. You mean Higgins? Yeah, I don't see him around. Where is he? Oh, it's his night off, so he took my girl to the movies. Your girl? Kenny, how can you be so dopey as to let your valet take your girl to the movies? Oh, that's all right. Tomorrow night, he's taking me. <laughs> Funny, I thought that was going to be a bop. So did I. Oh, well, um... <laughs> Anyway, Kenny, if I were you, I'd fire that guy before he goes too far. I not really me. Would. Why not? Well, every time I tell him he's fired, he gives me a spanking. <laughs> well, that's the worst yet. You need a valet. Like... Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, man. What are you throwing around tonight? Oh, nothing, nothing. Say, Phil, Don and I were talking about last week's show. We got some pretty nice comments. Did you hear anything? Well, Maurice, my hairdresser, loved it. <laughs> Say, that's... That's intriguing, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing, Phil. The newspapers were grand. It was simply wonderful. They sure it? were, every one of them. Did you see that swell write-up we got in the Bartender's Gazette? The Bartender's Gazette? Well, well, what do they think of that? They gave us three Mickeys. <laughs> <laughs> Mickeys? And I don't mean Roonies. <laughs> well, that was nice of them. With that, I'd rather have one in print than in a glass, you know? <laughs> oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Say, how do you feel after last night? Oh, I'm all right. Why? Well, don't your legs feel kind of stiff? No, no, of course not. Where were you last night, Jack? Oh, uh, Mary and I went to the ice carnival here at the uh, at Pacific Auditorium. It was a great show. And afterwards, we went skating ourselves. Boy, did we have fun. I'll say. Can you skate, Jack? Can I? <laughs> you know, fellas, it's the most amazing thing last night. Now, I haven't been on ice skates in over ten years. Yet the minute I got on them... Down you went. <laughs> Well, naturally, my ankles were a little weak. What do you expect after ten years? But, Jack, for a fellow that's as much out of condition as you are, you shouldn't even try it. Look, Phil, that's just why I did it. I think skating is great exercise. It's marvelous for you. Well, I like it even better than horseback riding. You could have used a saddle last night. <laughs> all right, all right. Don't exaggerate. Was there a big crowd there, Jack? Oh, sure. Everybody was there. Joan Crawford, Eddie Cantor, Hetty Lamar. Oh, a whole flock of them. Oh, boy, Jack. Do you know Joan Crawford and Hetty Lamar? Do I? I call them Joan and Hetty. If that means anything. <laughs> hey, don't mess your neck with them. <laughs> Now, Kenny, I didn't get that fresh. But if you want to know something, I helped Hetty Lamar on with her skates, and then I went all around the rink with her. Did Jack really do that, Mary? He had to. He got his fingers caught in the strap. <laughs> well, it was fun anyway. Say, Jack. What? <laughs> tell him about that trick you did jumping over the three barrels. Now, wait a minute. Don't try to be funny. What was it, Mary? Well, oh. Jack was showing off in front of Joan Crawford. <laughs> now, listen, Mary. Go on, Mary. 
So he put three barrels oh, together he... on the ice. And when he went to jump over them... <laughs> what happened? <laughs> His suspenders broke. <laughs> That's so. <laughs> His defenders broke, huh? I'll bet the house came down. <laughs> that wasn't all. <laughs> well, what of it? I got over the barrel, didn't I? Huh? And then when Jack started to do a figure Mary, eight... now let's drop the whole thing. Skating, barrels, and everything. So time for your song, Kenny. What are you going to sing? I'm going to sing, so help me. And you know, Jack, I don't think that accident of yours was a bit funny. You might have got hurt. Why, well, certainly. I might have broken my neck. That's right. <laughs> oh, go ahead and sing. And listen, Mary, I want to tell you something. If you don't... Okay. Yes, sir. Well. Yes, sir. Good. That was So Help Me, sung by Kenny Baker. And, Kenny, I don't have to tell you that it was very good. No, I know. I know you know. I know Jack knows you know. Peace, children, lest we get into a routine. <laughs> and now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as we announced last week, uh, tonight, we are going to... Uh... Hey, wait a minute, where's Rochester? Here I am, boss. Well, I'm glad you're here. Now, look, Rochester, uh, the reason I sent for you is we're short of actors, and I want you to be in our play tonight. Now, uh, here's your part. Go over in the corner and get familiar with it. Okay. Yeah. Hey, boss. Yes. I don't want to be mercenary, but do I get any additional stipend for my efforts? <laughs> What's that? Don't go on. As soon as I mention money, you get deep. <laughs> Look, Rochester, stop complaining. You're getting enough from me already. I am? Yes. I've been working for you for two years, and all I get is a pocket full of dreams. <laughs> Never mind. Now go over in the corner and study your part, will you? Yes, sir. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we announced last week, for our feature attraction tonight, we are going to offer our version of Metro Goldwyn Mayer's current film success, Yellow Jack. <laughs> Thank you. A dramatization of the struggle against yellow fever during the Spanish American War. Now, I will play the part of Dr. Benny of the United States Medical Corps, a fearless scientist in the cause of humanity. Mary Livingston will play the part of Miss Blake, my nurse as portrayed on the screen by lovely Virginia Bruce. What a girl. Virginia Bruce. Gee, she's beautiful. Yeah. Well, let's get on with the play. <laughs> now, uh... <clears throat> Now, Phil Harris will play the part of that dashing young soldier, Sar Sergeant O'Harris. Hey, Jack, am I going to handle the love interest? No, Phil, all you're going to do is catch yellow fever. Can I catch it from a blonde? <laughs> Definitely not. Now, Kenny will play the part of Private O'Baker, as smart a soldier as ever threw a hand grenade and forgot to let go. Do I always have to be a private? Why can't I be a general? Because you don't know enough to come in out of the shrapnel. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, Don Wilson will play the part of my associate, Dr. O. Wilson. Well, anyway, Rochester, my butler, at no increase in salary, will play the part of Private Van Jones of the United States Army. That's me, as fast as soldiers ever won a hundred yard dash from a bullet. Rochester, we don't want any cowards in this army. Well, somebody's got to pick up the brave ones. <laughs> got something there. But I need real tough guys, ready to do or die. Man, you're looking right through me. <laughs> All right, that's enough. And now, folks, our play Yellow Jack will go on immediately after the next number. What's it going to be, Phil? I don't know. The boys have a surprise for me. <laughs> oh, this ought to be rich. Play, Mr. Leader Man. Play. <laughs> That, uh, that was a surprise number played by Phil Harris and his grab bag orchestra. <laughs> Say, Phil, as long as you didn't know what the number was going to be, why were you standing in front of the band waving your baton? I was trying to mix them up. <laughs> well, congratulations. You did a marvelous job. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our blast of the evening, Yellow Jack, or Boy Meets Mosquito. <laughs> The scene is the United States Army headquarters near the thriving little town of Rumba Center, Cuba, which is just three shakes and a wiggle from Havana. 
As the scene opens, we find Dr. Benny of the medical corps busy in his laboratory. There is a tense look on his face as he peers into his microscope. Curtain. Cayuba. <laughs> Good heavens, what a stroke of luck. Oh, nurse, Miss Blake. What is it, Dr. Benny? I made a sensational discovery. Look in this microscope. It's the biggest germ I've ever seen. Here, look. That's your thumb. <laughs> Darn it, and I've been studying it for a week. Oh, I'm so worried, I don't know where I'm at. All our soldiers have yellow feet and they're dying like flies, and I can't stop it. Well, I must get on with my work. Miss Blake, where's my hypodermic needle? In your arm. Oh. <laughs> well, take it out. You know it don't belong there. Yes, sir. Oh, doctor, doctor. Yes, Private Baker. I've just discovered another man with yellow fever. You did? Where is he? Right here. Hello, Mr. Blenny. <laughs> That's my laundry man. Get him out of here. <laughs> oh, I have failed miserably. Where does this germ come from? What does it look like? What can I do? What time is it? Oh, I don't know. I tell you, I don't know. <laughs> but this is too much. I'm going mad. Is that the phone? If it's not, we're both nuts. <laughs> Hello? Yes? You have? I'll tell him right away. What is it, nurse? Dr. Wilson has located a specialist who's been studying yellow fever for 20 years. And he knows what causes it. They're waiting outside now. Well, show him in. Hurry. Yes, sir. Right this way, quack. <laughs> hmm. Uh, good morning, Dr. Wilson. Uh, good morning. Uh, Dr. Benny, I want you to meet Dr. Nazaro, the famous authority on tropical diseases. Glad to know you, Doctor. Who's the dame? <laughs> That's my nurse. You may go, Miss Blake. We're about to hold a conference. Okay, I think I'll scram over to Ward C and grab a few pulses. Goodbye. <laughs> well, gentlemen, let's get down to business. Tell me, Dr. Nazaro, are you positive you've discovered the cause of yellow fever? Yes. After much intensive research, I have discovered that the disease is carried by mosquitoes. Mosquitoes? The zoo. You know, I had a hunch all along that it was mosquitoes. Why, Doctor, you told us it was elephants. Well, I was in there punching. <laughs> Tell me, Doctor, how did you arrive at this conclusion? Well, to begin with, Dr. Benny, there are over 800 different varieties of mosquitoes. Well, slap me down and call me shorty. <laughs> 800 different kinds. Do you know them all by name? Yes. First, there's, uh, there, there's the Rechendin Serpent Pankerton. Yes? Then there's the Bangin Flangin Flungigan and the Sangin Flendus Furriver for Sunday. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, possibly the most dangerous species of all is the Fangin Flangin Dindin. <laughs> oh, those. Oh, they're vicious little devils. But come to the point, Doctor. Which one of these mosquitoes carries the deadly germ of yellow jack? It's the smallest one of all. A tiny insect called the Stegomyia. The Stegomyia? Oh, this is very important, Doctor. Are you positive? That's it, that's it. That's all I want to know. At last, Dr. Wilson, our problems are over. All we have to do now is find a Stegomyia. But first, we must find out where we can get hold of one. That's right, they may be ticklish. Next, we must find a volunteer. I'll wait for that one, folks. <laughs> Next, we must find a volunteer who is willing to expose himself to the bite of the deadly Stegomyia. And then, gentlemen, we will have discovered the secret of Yellow Jack. Calling all Stegomyers, calling all Stegomyers, report to the base hospital at once. Bring your stingers. That is all. Two days later, Dr. Benny's laboratory is filled with cages and cages of mosquitoes. The experiment is about to begin. Well, that's the last time I'm going to tell you. <laughs> All I need is one man who will gamble with death. Ah, it's you, Miss Blake. Yes, uh, pardon me, Dr. Benny, but there's a group of soldiers outside, and there's a volunteer among them. What's the group of soldiers for? They're dragging the volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Send them all in at once. Come on in, men. Company! Call 
out here to perform a brave and fearless duty. One of you must step forward in order to be bitten by a stegomyia mosquito. It is a dangerous assignment, and you may not come out alive. Now, which one of you men will be the first to volunteer? Not me. I'm a coward. A coward? Shake, River. <laughs> oh, men, men, please. It's good for the good of humanity. Now, who who will give his life for his country? Hmm. Well, that's settled. Oh, no. How about you, Rochester? Will you enter that chamber and be bitten by a Segamaya? I wouldn't go in that room if I was a cat with only two down and seven to go. <laughs> but what have you got to lose? You're not a married man. You have no wife, no children. No, but I got a future and I'm going to use it up. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. Terrible. What are we going to do? Well, what about you, Dr. Benny? Why don't you volunteer? Me? Why, my, I would, Dr. Wilson, but I can't. I just started an ad a pearl necklace. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be glad to. Oh, Doctor, I'm disappointed in you. Don't let this experiment down. Be brave and let that mosquito bite you. Very well, Miss Blake. I will. Oh, no, Doctor, no. What am I saying? Don't do it. I love you. You mustn't do it. All right, then. I won't. <laughs> Why, you dirty coward. <laughs> what? And to think that I once loved you. Yes, just a second ago. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going. I've got other important things to do. Why, Jack, you're yellow. Yes, you're yellow, Jack. Yellow, yellow Jack. Yellow Jack. Yellow Jack. Yellow Jack. Yellow Jack. Yellow Jack. I'll go. It's for the advancement of civilization. <laughs> And I must go through with it. Farewell, men. I may not come back alive. The following day, Dr. Benny has just entered the room where the poisonous Pegamoya mosquitoes have been turned loose. He is wearing only a suit of armor. I am not. <laughs> and the experiment begins. Well, where are they? Come on, you winged devils. Let's get this over with. Mm. Oh, there they are. There they are. Gee, they got a mean look. There's one close to me. Go away. He's getting closer. Cat! Cat! <laughs> Lucky I got this fly paper on my chest. Hmm. Well, this baby means business, but I'll get him. Get away! Get away! Well, I got that one. See, that's only three of them so far. I wonder where the rest of them are. Ah, here comes a whole band of them. Oh, boy, swing, you fingers. See, look at them. Good heavens, here comes a big one. I can't stand this. I know what I'll do. Comes a big one. I know what I'll do. I'll hide in this Murphy bed. Move over, Murphy. <laughs> He's coming closer. <laughs> hey, I'm scared. Hey, are you a Stegomaya? I ain't Corrigan. <laughs> get away, get away. I can't stand this. And so, folks, I was stung by the deadly Segamaya. It caught yellow fever, and I lived to marry Miss Blake by nurse. Oh, darling. Oh, dear. Oh, honey. She just went out with Sergeant Harris. Oh, well, I'm a hero anyway. Playboy. <laughs> We will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. I hope you like our little play tonight, and I would also like to announce, folks, that although the mosquitoes on our program tonight gave a vivid performance, they were not real Stegomayas. In fact, they did not sing. No, but the play did. <laughs> oh, George Dean Levenston, huh? Good night, folks. <laughs> 
The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to announce that next week this program will move to the new NBC studios on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. So tonight, folks, let us bid adieu to this old room where for three years, every Sunday night, you have heard that same old sweet voice saying, Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. Well, Don, this is our farewell performance under this old roof. Just think, after three years of work and worry and fun, we got to move. I don't know how you feel about it, Don, but... See, I'm ready to go over in the corner and have a good cry. Oh, Jack, I wouldn't take it that hard. After all, it's just moving from one studio to the other, that's all. I know, Don, but I'm sentimental. I just can't stand changes. I felt the same way when they raised the prices at the Brown Derby. <laughs> but I'm built that way, and there's, there's nothing I can do about it. But, Jack, this new studio will be wonderful. Why, it's modern and gay. It's full of bright lights and decorations. Don, none of that, please. I'm not a child that can be bought with chromium and tinsel. You can't tell me anything. I made up my mind to be brokenhearted tonight, and I'm going to stay that way. But, Jack, you're so silly. After all, this is only a building with so much brick and steel and cement. Brick, steel, and cement? That's enough, Tom. That's like saying Garbo was a rag of bone and a hunk of hair. <laughs> you're just cold and callous. Now, wait a minute, Jack. I've got feelings. Why, I've got more sentiment in my little finger than you have in your whole body. Your little finger. I've seen legs of lamb that were smaller than that. <laughs> hmm. You and your feelings, eh? John is right, Jack. You're always making a mountain out of nothing. What's there to be sad about? Well, yeah, you... why are you always trying to get sympathy? You haven't got any more sentiment for this building than a termite. Oh. <laughs> oh, I haven't, eh? I haven't got any sentiment, eh? Well, let me show you something, Phil. You see my watch chain here? You think that's an elf's tooth hanging on it, don't you? Yeah. Well, it's not. This tooth belongs to the first girl I ever went out with. <laughs> Rosie Gum. <laughs> and another thing, you know that big moose head that hangs in my den? If that's her mother, I'll scream. <laughs> well, it's not. If you want to know something, I got that moose head. It's Come in. Pardon me, Mr. Benny, but we were sent over here to move the furniture out of the room. The furniture already? Yeah. Come on, Mervyn. Okay, Laverne. <laughs> well, for heaven's sake, can't they even wait until we're through? We've been here three years. Another ten minutes isn't going to make any difference. That's our business, buddy. Grab that chair, Mervyn. Okay. Hmm. Imagine that, fellas, all this rush to get over into that new building. Well, what's the matter with that new building? Don't you believe in progress? Don't you believe in the advancement of radio? Well, certainly I do. But listen, Phil, you should be the last one to want to go into that new studio. Why? Because when we get there, your orchestra will have to wear shoes. <laughs> that's why. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, they're going to wear shoes next Sunday night, and that's an order. Order or no order, you're going to see plenty of bunions tapping time. <laughs> Fine bunch of artists you got. Eight hillbillies, four huckleberry fins, and a zoo. <laughs> Phil, I wish you'd tell your first violinist, incidentally, to stop selling sandwiches while the program is going on. <laughs> well, he's got to make a living some way. Not at my expense. I bought a three-decker from him last week, and all it had in it was a strip of bacon and two bars of the Lambeth Walk. I'll tell you one thing, Phil. Hey, Mervyn, give me a hand with this ashtray, will you? The ashtray? I got it. Together now. <clears throat> I give you my word of honor, folks. That ashtray doesn't weigh over three ounces. Now, look, be as quiet as you can, will you, fellas? Okay, okay, we'll watch it. Gee, he's a fuss budget, ain't he, Laverne? Yeah. <laughs> Gee, Mary, look at him taking those chairs out. I can't bear to watch it. Just think, we spent three years working in this one little room. Yeah. Now we gotta leave. Oh, well, we've had some mighty funny programs come out of here. We've had some mighty other kind, too. <laughs> well, naturally, we can't always click. Even a castanet misses once in a while. 
<laughs> Gee, Mary, don't you feel sad about leaving here? Do I? What do you think I got on this piece of paper? Hey, Mervyn, what? I'll bet it's one of them lousy poems. <laughs> Now, you keep out of this. Is it a poem, Mary? Yes. It's a farewell to this old studio. Well, this is one time I'll appreciate it. What's the title of your poem? I've got those. I hate to leave this studio with as fond memories where I've spent so many happy days blues. <laughs> well, take a deep breath and start the poem. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> throat> I feel so lonely, sad, and blue, I could bite my nails and say boo-hoo. For today we move, this gang and me, from NBC to NBC. That's very clever, Mary. Now get funny. <laughs> you may say, what does it matter? But here we've heard Jack's funny chatter. It brought a smile, a laugh, a roar. That's right. And now and then, a great big snore. <laughs> Mary, I feel bad enough as it is. When program care we did begin, Don Wilson only had one chin. Hey, he did at that. And little me was sweet 16. And Kenny looked like Bobby Green. Gee, and it seemed like yesterday. Hey, Laverne, ain't that something? Yeah, have you got an aspirin? Hmm. That all, Mary? Uh, one more verse. Oh. In my throat there is a lump as we leave this dear old dump. Dump? So here's good luck and lots of joy from Flatfoot Mary with a ploy ploy. <laughs> Yeah! yeah. <laughs> uh, Mary, I thought that was one of your best poems. It was simply grand. And you know, Jack, I wrote that one in bed. In bed, huh? <laughs> yeah. Was I surprised when I woke up? Well, yeah. <laughs> I imagine it would be a shock. And now, folks, Phil Harris and his orchestra will play a brand new peppy tune called What Have You Got That Gets Me. Are you ready, Phil? All set. Hey, Mervyn, shall we dance? Yes, comrade, let's. <laughs> mm, play, Phil. I'll collect the tickets. <laughs> that was What Have You Got That Gets Me, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Say, Phil, uh, that number is from my new Paramount picture, Artists and Models Abroad. I know. That's why I played it. Well, it's a swell tune. Uh, you know, Phil, originally uh, I sang a whole chorus of that number to Joan Bennett in one of our love scenes. Didn't I, Mary? Yeah, but the cotton in her ear showed, so they had to cut it out. <laughs> wasn't the reason at all. They just didn't want me to conflict with Crosby. <laughs> After all, we both work for the same studio. You know. Well, how does the picture look, Jack? I mean, uh, how are you in it? Oh, I'd rather not talk about it, Don. It'll, you know, it'll sound like I'm conceited and I'm bragging, you know. Wait till it comes out and you'll see for yourself how great I am. <laughs> no kidding. Well, on the level, you know, now here, I'm supposed to be a comedian. Yet I handled the love interest with Joan Bennett about as well as... Well, I won't say better, but as well as any lover on the screen. And believe me, I'm sincere. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> well, I did. Why, Jack, I thought you didn't kiss Joan once in the whole picture. Well, I... Well, what's that, Jack? You didn't even kiss Joan Bennett? Well, heavens knows I tried to. Phil, she's as quick as a deer. <laughs> But, you know, there was one other scene I had, fellas. Now, you talk about pathos. Well... Hey, Mervyn, bring over the stepladder. I want to take these drapes down. The what? The stepladder. <laughs> now, Phil, you talk about pathos. Here it is, Laverne. Hold it steady now. Oh. Now, you talk about pathos. There's one scene where Joan and I quarrel, and she says goodbye and leaves me. And there's a look that comes over my face that... <laughs> Isn't that awful? Did you, did you hurt yourself, Laverne? Yeah, I banged my elbow. Oh, I'll kiss it for you. <laughs> oh, what's the use? Let's forget my picture, will you, fellas? We're way ahead of you. Hmm. Hey, Mervyn, hand me that screwdriver, will you? We oui, wee, oui, monsieur. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go away. Huh? Say, fellas... <laughs> It's about time for Kenny's song. Where is he? I don't know. I haven't seen him. He comes in whenever he feels like it. Oh, well, if he doesn't show up, I'll sing. Hey, Kenny! Hey, 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 hey. yeah. Hello, Jack. Gee, I'm burned up. Well, so am I. Where were you? Should have been here when the show started. Well, it's not my fault I'm late. I got here an hour ago. Well, what happened? Well, every time I try to come into the studio, two guys would pick me up and throw me in a truck. <laughs> 
Darn those movers. But what, what did they think you were, a statue or something? Oh, I guess so. One guy said, careful, don't drop it. <laughs> well, Kenny, that's the topper. You didn't have to be shoved around like that. Why didn't you tell those mugs to let you alone? I thought it was part of the program. Oh, you did. <laughs> Bend over, Kenny. Like this? Yeah. Ouch. That's part of the program, too. <laughs> It's getting to be more fun every year. It sure is. Now, let's drop it. It's time for your song. What are you going to sing? Well, uh, at first, I was going to sing, You Go to My Head. Uh Uh-huh. And then I said to myself, No, Kenny, why don't you sing Now It Can Be Told? Oh. And then I thought it over and said, Kenny Baker, the song... Well, to cut a long story short, Kenny, what's it going to be? Oh, I'm so mixed up now, the heck with it. The heck with nothing. Go ahead with your song. Hey, Mervyn, give me a hand with this, will you? I got it. Put him down. He's got to sing. <laughs> yeah. Now, listen, you fellas. I've had just about enough from you. You can finish all of this moving later. Ah, pipe down, you old mackerel. <laughs> mackerel? Those are fighting words, brother. Yeah? Well, you want to make something out of it? <laughs> You're just lucky I got this coal. <laughs> Sing, Kenny. <laughs> that was, uh... That was I've Got a Date with a Dream, sung by Kenny Baker. And that was swell, Kenny. You were an excellent boy. Thanks, Jack. And it was quite of you to admit it. Well, there's nothing... There's nothing white about it. You have a marvelous voice, and there's no getting away from it. Well, if it's so darn marvelous, what do you want to get away from it for? I don't want to get away from it. I paid you a compliment, you little brat. You did? Yes. Bend over, Kenny. <laughs> when you beat that, Mary, you pay a fellow a compliment, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, it's your own fault. You always try to mix them up. Yeah, why don't you pick on somebody your size? That's what I say. Now listen, you guy. Yeah. Yeah. Get away from me, you'll catch my cold. <laughs> And now, folks, if I may be permitted to talk on my own program, I would like to announce that next Sunday night, we will again attempt a stupendous and artistic dramatic triumph. We are going to present none other than the... Hold it, Jack. Come in. Hey, Jack, look who's here. Well, well, the mayor of Van Nuys. Hiya, boss! Well, Andy, we're sure glad to see you. Gee, I thought you forgot about us this year. What if you finally showed up? Huh? Yes, sir, and I better be terrific. <laughs> <laughs> well, make yourself at home, Andy. This is your hangout. Hiya, Mayor. Hello, Curly. How are all the girls? Are they still chasing you? They sure are, Andy. Well, if you get out of breath, let me know. <laughs> hey, Andy, look who's here. Hello, Your Honor. Hello, Mary. <laughs> I'll give you a kiss if I thought you'd appreciate it. I won't, so I'm Tucker. <laughs> well, that's settled. We don't have to waste the sound effect there. <laughs> hey, and there's Kenny. What have you been doing, kid? Oh, just singing and bending over. <laughs> Say, Andy, you're not going to forget your old friend Don Wilson, are you? I should say not. Hello, Don. Hello, Andy. You, you put, put on, on a little weight, weight haven't you? <laughs> Hey, one at a time, fellas. Well, Andy, we're sure glad to have you with us again. Tell me, did you have a good time this summer? I had a swell time, Buck. I went to Honolulu and I took Ma and Pa along. To Honolulu? Say, that must have been a real vacation. See, I could just picture your Pa with those Hawaiian girls in their grass skirts there. Wow! Huh? Oh, oh, he didn't hang around them much. What's the matter? Was he bashful? Oh, it wasn't that, Buck. Ma had him on a leash. <laughs> Oh, you had him on a leash, eh? How did it work out? Well, not so good. We had trouble getting him into restaurants. Oh. Well, anyway, Andy, I envy you. I should have waited a little bit there. So. Anyway, Andy, I, I really, I envy you that trip. See, I remember when I was there and saw those beautiful hula dancers. See, they are gorgeous. But then that's nothing compared with the marvelous scenery, the palm trees, the tropical flowers and the coloring of the sky against the blue Pacific. Yes, sir, they sure can't wiggle. (laughs) 
Andy, I wish you'd keep up with the conversation. I was talking about the flowers and scenery. Oh, I can enjoy that stuff when I'm on the Townsend plan. <laughs> That's right. Hey, but say, Andy, uh, how about the boat trip? Did you enjoy your boat trip? I sure did. But there was one day when it was awful rough. Do you want to hear about it? Yeah, bend over, Andy. <laughs> Don't bother. We can hear about it later. What do you got in that package, Andy? Oh, I nearly forgot. Here, Buck, here's a little present I brought you. A present? Well, something from Honolulu, huh? <laughs> Go ahead and open it. Well, gee, that was sweetie, Andy. Gee whiz. Oh, fellas, look at this. A real pineapple. <laughs> Gee. Gosh, I don't know what to say. I, I've, I've always wanted one of these. Huh? Well, for heaven's sake, Jack, you can buy one at any grocery store. Not one like this. This is a real Hawaiian pineapple. I know, because when I was over there, I used to look up and see thousands of them growing on the trees. Why, right, Jack, you couldn't have looked up because pineapples don't grow on trees. They're plants. They grow right out of the ground. Well, this was years ago. I was short then. <laughs> don't tell me about pineapples. Jack, you must be thinking of coconuts. I'm not thinking of coconuts. I'm telling you, fellas, I used to look up and see the pineapple. Why, you couldn't have looked up and seen it. I could, too. Listen, a full-grown pineapple plant is only three feet high. How tall were you at the time? One foot six and shut up. <laughs> Anyway, it is mighty sweetie, Andy. Thanks for the pineapple. You're welcome. Bring some cottage cheese next Sunday. We'll make a salad. Oh, no, no. This is mine. Stick around, Andy. Right after the program, I'll take you over to my place for a real home-cooked dinner. Gee, I'm hungry. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as I started to announce before, next Sunday night, we're going to present a stupendous and artistic dramatic triumph that we feel will... I'll answer it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Billy. This is Rochester. Oh, you. Are what you do plan- you want? Are you planning to come home for dinner tonight? Why, certainly I am. Well, if you want something to eat, you better bring that pineapple. <laughs> now, what are you talking about? There was plenty of food in the icebox when I left the house this morning. What happened to it? In the which? In the icebox. When I left this morning, it was just bulging with food. Well, the swelling's gone down now. <laughs> Rochester, did you throw another party this afternoon? Well, come to think of it, a few of my friends dropped in for some tea and donuts. Now, listen, if you just served tea and donuts, what happened to all those lamb chops? Well, I ran out of donuts. Yes? So we bored holes in the chops and dumped them. <laughs> That's fine. And what happened to that big roast turkey that was there? Oh, that? Yeah. That was first prize in the bingo game. <laughs> Well, that's the last straw. You got a lot of nerve inviting people to the house without my permission. Well, I went to college with them. I don't care where you went. <laughs> See that you have some food in the house when I get there. Okay. Goodbye. Say, hey, boy. What? As long as you're coming home, will you bring my fan mail? <laughs> yes, I'll bring it. Goodbye. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as I started to announce... Next Sunday night, we're going to present a stupendous and artistic dramatic triumph that we feel... All right, Marvin, we're nearly through. Let's take up this rug. Okay, get off, buddy. Now, wait a minute. I thought you guys had gone. Now, you're not going to take this rug until we're through with our program. I'm standing on it, and I won't get off. Well, you better. You're too old to do a backflip. I am, eh? Well, I'm not budging off this rug. Come on, Marvin. He asked for it. Okay. Well, that's the last straw. Listen, you mugs, I'm going to take this up with the head of NBC. Who do you think I am? Oh, pardon me, Mr. Swallow. I didn't recognize you in those overalls. Play <laughs> Uh, We ran overtime, so good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen... For the first time, from the new NBC building in Hollywood, with its new studios, its new facilities, and its new equipment, we bring you that old foot, Jack Benny. (laughs) Well, thank you. Uh, Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I may be an old foot, but in these luxurious surroundings, I feel ten years younger. What a place this is. Have you ever seen such a gorgeous building? No, I haven't, Jack. It certainly is magnificent. Magnificent? 
Why, Don, I tell you, this building makes that new filling station across the street look like a nickel. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right, Jack. This place is absolutely the quintessence and penultimate of architectural symmetry. Uh, what is that, Don? <laughs> I said this place is the nut. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, you didn't have to make a fool out of me to do it. <laughs> but you're right, Don, it is the nut. Did you notice all that beautiful woodwork in the front lobby? Did I? Say, that's what I call ritzy. Ritzy? Why, well, I saw three termites working on it, and they were in evening clothes. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, huh? Oh, you know, Jack, I was just thinking what a contrast this is to the old studio. It certainly is, Don. The chandeliers are so luxurious, and the drapes are so costly. Yeah? Yes, sir, and the chairs for the audience are so soft and comfortable. Well, when it comes to those chairs, Don, I think they're a little too comfortable. There's a man sitting in the third row that's got a date with a dream. <laughs> I don't mind people sleeping through our program, but that guy's wearing a nightgown. <laughs> I'll take care of that. Uh, pardon me, madam, would you mind shaking your husband? Oh, no, he'll fall apart. Oh, well, wait till Phil starts his next number. Will he jump? Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jack. Some swell joint, ain't it? Joint? Phil, you never worked in a place as swanky as this in your life. Why, this building has improved the whole neighborhood. It sure has. You bet it has. When I walked in here tonight, a panhandler stopped me and gave me 50 cents. <laughs> well, I'm glad they're finally declaring dividends. <laughs> and, Phil, I want to congratulate you on the appearance of your orchestra. They're so neat, and they're even wearing shoes tonight. <laughs> How'd you get them to do it? I told them it was a publicity stunt. Oh, <laughs> Well, they look very nice, but I wish you'd tell your guitar player that the socks go inside the shoes. <laughs> Unless he's trying to sneak up on someone. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad the boys did dress up for this occasion, Phil, because these surroundings are simply divine. Come in. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Well, welcome to our new home. See, did you ever in your life see a place so modern and in the latest style? I'll say it's the latest style. You know that jar man that stands at the front entrance? Yeah. Well, he's wearing his hair up. <laughs> there you are. And you know, Mary, as I was saying to Don just a few minutes ago, I said, Don, this building is absolutely the quintessence and penultimate of architectural symmetry. Well, Don was right. Oh, oh. Oh, did you say that, Don? I knew it was one of us. I didn't know. But, Jack, I can't understand one thing. What's that, Mary? Why did they open this building so soon? Gee, the elevators aren't even working yet. Well, they must be working. I saw an elevator boy downstairs. What was he for? Well, you press his nose and he takes you up piggyback. Oh. <laughs> now, that's silly. <laughs> it's fun, too. Yeah. But then it takes time to finish a building like this. Why, the cement floor in the lobby isn't even dry yet. Cement? Yeah. I thought that rug was kind of wet. Well, there was no excuse for that, Mary. Imagine walking through fresh cement. There was a sign right in front of it. Yeah, that's what I tipped over. Oh. Well, Mary, let me ask you something. If you walk through a corridor of wet cement, how come you haven't got any of it on your shoes or your stockings? I don't know. I don't write this junk. <laughs> now you kill the whole illusion. <laughs> well, anyway, now that we're all here, that is all but Kenny. He probably went to the old building. Uh, how about having a good snappy band number, Phil? You know, with a lot of stuff that's wrong. Right this way, folks. Follow me, everybody. This is Studio B. Hmm, a bunch of sightseers right in the middle of a program. Now, folks, let me call your attention to this beautiful auditorium. Hey, buddy, we're in the middle of a broadcast. Quiet, please. <laughs> this room has a seating capacity of 325. Hmm. And you will note how the chairs tilt back to allow for shaving. <laughs> Hey, buddy. Now, are there any questions, please? Yes. Who was that lady I seen you with last night? Wasn't she a Lulu? <laughs> any other questions, please? Now, look, buddy. Now, please. you all follow me, folks. We'll proceed to Studio C. This way, please. Hey, Mamie, there's Jack Benny. Gee, am I disillusioned. <laughs> you know, folks, the woman that said that is as homely as a mud fence. Yeah, then why did you wink at me? <laughs> I deny that. <laughs> it's a fine time to bring visitors to a studio. Oh, well, have you got a good snappy number ready, Phil? Yeah, but you won't like it. Well, play it anyway. Hmm, disillusioned. She's no Miss Pasadena herself. Yes, sir. That was The Yam, played by Phil Harris and his Vine Street 12. 
And, Phil, I must say you got off to a swell start in our new studio. You kind of liked it, huh? Yes, I did. But say, Phil, who's that Chinaman sitting there in your brass section? Is he a new member in your band? No, he's waiting for our laundry. Oh. <laughs> your laundry? I didn't know you ever had any. <laughs> How do you like that, Mary? Phil has to have his laundry man up at the program. Isn't that awful? Well, at least he doesn't do his own. Like, guess who? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mary. If you're referring to me, you've never seen me do my own laundry, so don't start that. Well, what about last Monday morning when I was over to your house? Well, what about it? Why were you bending over that wash tub? Who, me? Yes, you. I could have been bobbing for apples, you know. <laughs> that was practicing for Halloween. And now, folks, I would like Say, to... Say, Jack, why don't you ever admit anything when you're caught? Listen, Phil, it so happened that there were apples in that wash tub. Apples? Yes. Well, they were under a lot of BVDs. <laughs> and now, folks, I'll sue you someday, Mary. <laughs> and now, folks, we are going I to... I bet present... you look cute with a mouthful of clothespins. <laughs> All right, Phil, let's drop it. And now, folks, going from wash day to tonight's program, we are going to present one of the greatest plays that we have ever attempted. Our version of Walter Wanger's famous screen success, the... Right this way, folks. Follow me, everybody. This is Studio B. Getting to be awful. Gosh. Getting to be awful, I said. This room could see 325 people, or 650 if they know each other well enough. (laughs) Well, of all the... Now, are there any questions, please? A young man, is that gentleman standing over there, Don Wilson? Yes, madam. Won't you say something, Mr. Wilson? Uh, Gladly. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, I bid all of you welcome to our new NBC studio. I think you will agree that it is the eighth wonder of the world. Thank you. Now, right this way, folks. Follow me, and please stay in line. Hey, where are we going now? Kenny, what are you doing in that sightseeing? Oh, hello, Jack. I'll be back in a little while. You're going to stay right here. Oh, darn it. All right, folks. This way, please. Tough luck, Kenny. Now, Kenny, what's the idea of walking all around this building with a bunch of sightseers? Well, I tried it by myself, and I couldn't get out of the basement. The basement? What are you doing in the basement? I think I fell through a ventilator. Oh. Well, when you find out, let me know. Okay. See you later, Jack. Kenny, you've got to stay right here and sing your song. Well, I want to see the building. But you can't sing while you're roaming all around the studios. What are you, an artist or a tourist? I'm a strolling troubadour and shut up. <laughs> what? What did you say? Why, Kenny. Gosh, was that me? <laughs> Kenny, I'm really amazed. You, of all people. Well... Let's forget it. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, as I've been trying to announce all evening, tonight we are going to present our version... Well, gee, I'm sorry, Jack. Never mind, Kenny. Our version of Walter Wanger's current film success, that emotional drama of blazing passion, love, and jealousy, Al Jeers. Uh, this picture starred Charles Boyer and Hetty Lamar. Now, I will play the part of Pepe Lamoco, that notorious Parisian jewel thief, as portrayed on the screen by Mr. Boyer. And Mary Livingston will play the part of Inez, my sweetheart. Jack, are you really going to try and follow Charles Boyer in this part? Why, certainly. You don't think I lived in the French Quarter of Waukegan for nothing. <laughs> I did try very hard, folks, to get Miss Hetty Lamar for our play tonight to enact her original role. But unfortunately, she happens to be in Honolulu. Why, Jack, I saw her this afternoon at the Brown Derby. Hetty Lamar? You saw Hetty? Yes, Hetty and Feedy. She was all there. (laughs) Oh. Well, anyway, we couldn't get Hetty to play this part, but we did get a young lady who goes to the same beauty parlor that Miss Lamar does. In fact, she works there. Now, this drama will go on immediately after the next number. Go ahead with your song, Kenny. Gee, Jack, I'm sorry I was rude before and hurt your feelings. That's all right, Kenny. I'll take it out of your salary. Thanks. I feel much lighter now. All right, sing. Uh, Say, Jack. Yes, Mary? uh, That beauty operator just called up, said she wouldn't be able to make the program. She can? No, and she said to forget about the Trocadero, too. Oh, darn it. And I've been rehearsing the Lambeth Walk all afternoon. Well, we got to get somebody to play Hetty's part. Give me that phone, Mary. Sing, Kenny. Hello? Hello, operator. Very good. That was Two Sleepy People, sung by Kenny Baker. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> As our play tonight happens to be very long, we will God, start... Jack, I'm awful sorry I was so fresh before. Can you ever forgive me? Yes, yes, Kenny, I forgive you. I've forgotten the whole thing. I'll bet you're lying. I'll bet you're right. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we bring you our version of Walter Wange's dramatic spectacle, Algiers. Algiers, a gay modern city, teeming with commerce from all the seven seas, while above the city, grim, silent, mysterious, by the tangled buildings and twisted streets of the native quarter known as the Casbah. The scene is the hideout of the notorious jewel thief, Pepe Lamoco. As the curtain rises, we find two members of his gang, Three-Fingered Harris and Bubbles Baker. <laughs> they are waiting for their leader's return. Curtain. Music. Hey, Three Finger. What is it, Bubbles? I'm worried about Pepe. He said he'd be here at 7 o'clock, and it's 5.30 already. You've still got an hour and a half. What are you starting to worry now for? Well, it takes me a little time to get rolling. Oh. <laughs> if Peppy's out with that girl he met yesterday, I'll fill him so full of holes, he'll sound like a pipe organ in the wind. Don't be jealous, Inez. Peppy loves you. He's crazy about you. Yeah. I work and I slave, and what do I get? A broken-down boy, eh? See you later, fellas. <laughs> Gee, she's plenty burnt up, ain't she? Yeah, what does she see in that old book? <laughs> Here comes Peppy now. Hmm. Hello, Peppy. Hello, Three Finger. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Lamoco. Oh, it is you, Bubo. Well, gentlemen, let us get down to business. Gee, I'm sorry I hollered at you before, Peppy. Oh, forget it. <laughs> Forget it. Well, gentlemen, I have brought the pearls which we stole last night. Here they are. Oh, boy. But these are not enough, gentlemen. Tomorrow night, I am sending you to the Grand Ball at the Beverly Algiers Hotel. <laughs> the Beverly Algiers. Oh, I know the place. Right across the street from the Brown Fairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a block west of Sheik's Fifth Avenue. <laughs> There will be beautiful ladies there, and even more beautiful jewels. Oh. But remember, Sleeping Air. What is it, Chief? This time, when you bring back the jewels, you will first remove the ladies. <laughs> now, here is what you must do. Tomorrow night, you will go, both of them. Maybe the police. Hide the jewels. Quick. I'll put them in the cookie jar. The cookie jar? Good. They will never suspect. Come in. Ah, it is you, Inspector Wilson. Good evening, Pepe, you bad boy. <laughs> what brings you to the Casbah? Pepe, I've come to tell you that the police are trying to get in touch with you. They're looking for you, Pepe. They want you. Oh, I am in no mood to play a benefit. <laughs> Why don't you get Haddy Canco? <laughs> this is not a benefit, Pepe. There were some Jews stolen last night. Now, where are they? Jewels? What jewels? Sit down, my friend. Make us up at home. Will you have a cookie, Inspector? Boom up! <laughs> Leave the room. Gee, I nearly spilled the beans, didn't I? Hmm. Beans in a cookie jar? <laughs> he makes Joe. Someday I laugh till he dies. <laughs> have some tea, my friend. I must go, Peppy. But I'm warning you, stay out of the city. You're wanted in sickest countries, so be careful. Thank you, Inspector. Goodbye. Are you scared, boss? Do not worry, Sleeping Gear. They will never get Pepe Lomoco. I am master of the Casbah. Ah, oh, it is you. Hello, Inez. Hello, Pappy. That's Pepe. <laughs> I had yeast for breakfast. <laughs> but you are trembling, Inez. What is the matter, my little dog? Don't dub me, you two-time and crook. Me, Pappy? If the finance company hadn't taken away my camel, I'd go home to Mother. <laughs> oh, Inez, do not talk like that. I love you. Oh, you do, eh? Well, what about that other girl? Girl? What other girl? The one I saw you drinking tea with yesterday in the cafe. That Teddy Lamar. You did not see her. I did, too. I was watching you from the kitchen. Oh, so that's how I got that meaty thing. <laughs> but do not worry, Inez. It was merely a little tape to day. It was just an afternoon flotation. It was nothing. 
believe me. Well, if I see you with her again, I'll take this gun and make Paramount happy. <laughs> <laughs> My little cobra, you are so excited. Come here. Close your eyes and tease, Peppy. How else do you think I can do it? <laughs> Now listen to me, Inez. Hey, Pepe, Pepe. What is it? You know that beautiful girl you had tea with yesterday? You mean Hedy Lamar? Yes, she has come to the Casbah. She wants to see you. Oh, then she did come back like she promised. My Hedy. Aha. Uh-huh. I knew you were lying to me, you dog, you puppy. I'm Pepe. You're in love with Diana Jane. But you'll never live to see her again, Pepe, because I'm going to kill you. Inez, you are insane. Put down that gun. I won't, I won't. Put it down, I say. Right this way, folks. Follow me, everybody. Studio B. That fellow again. This room has a seating capacity of 300. 25 left since I was here last. Hey, Chief, Chief. Look at that dame over there with those big diamonds. Leave her alone. She is a tourist. Quiet, please. Now, folks, you will notice the beautiful decorations on the wall, the new hat on Miss Livingston, and the lousy acting. Hmm. <laughs> now, are there any questions, please? Yes. How does this building differ from Radio City in New York? Well, in the first place, this one is much smaller. I know that. But has this one got the same kind of cell for the that you have in the Morse State? Or is it just the cell for that you have on the Morse Sardinia question? Oh, yes, but ours is the more advanced type. Kathy, I am going to kill you. Wait a minute. Any other questions, please? <laughs> Any other questions, please? Just one more. Now, that switchboard over there, is that a Ben Dwellcorn from Boston? Or is it a Belgian and did it? I beg your pardon? <laughs> I said, is that a Belgian that did it? I still don't get it. He said, is it a Belgian that did it? <laughs> no, it isn't. All right, folks, follow me to Studio C. Oh. Kenny, come back here. Oh, shucks. <laughs> All right, Tiny. So, you're in love with that other dame, eh? But you'll never live to see her again, Peppy, because I'm going to kill you. Inez, put down that gun. You don't know what you are doing. I don't, Inez. You are crazy, Inez. Give me that gun. Hey, Chief, Chief. Here comes Teddy Lamar now. Wait, Inez. I will prove my love for you and send her away. Come in. Teddy. Teddy, my darling. Hiya, Peppy. <laughs> Teddy, you kept your promise and came back to me. Oh, darling, come into my arms. Jeez me, Peppy. Jeez me. My sweet. Doggone it, I forgot to put my lipstick on. Oh, so this is the Jane you threw me over for, eh? Uh, you ain't I hot stuff? I know. Well, say goodbye to her, Peppy, because you'll never live to see her again. Oh. I know. I know. What did you do to me? Oh, Peppy, I'm so sorry I shot you. Don't worry, I know. It was not. <laughs> Everything is getting back. I feel like that's all. Goodbye, I Goodbye, Peppy. And you. Goodbye, Hedy. So long, Buck! Oh, play field. <laughs> and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Meanwhile, I hope you all enjoyed our version of Algiers. All right, Mary, let's go. Just a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I'm mad at you. Why did you use me in your play tonight? Why, who are you? Mr. Bald Hedy Lamar. Goodbye. <laughs> Someday I will teal him. Good night, folks. The Jello program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. For now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we take you to Jack Benny's new home in Beverly Hills, where he's throwing a Halloween party for his whole gang. Take it away, Beverly! <laughs> I'm no millionaire. Hey, Rochester, will you hurry up with those sandwiches? They'll all be here in a minute. Yes, sir. I'm no millionaire. And I'm not... And stop fair. that crooning, will you? You're no Bing Crosby, you know. That's right. He's fairer than I am. <laughs> yes, yeah, slightly. And look, Rochester, look how thick you're cutting those sandwiches. I'm no millionaire either. <laughs> now slice that roast beef a little thinner. I'm using a razor now. <laughs> Well, sharpen it. <laughs> Goodness, you think I was expecting a crowd of starving Armenians? Well, I don't think you've got enough to eat here, boss. Rochester, there's plenty of food for everybody. Nobody's going to go hungry at my party tonight. Just the same, I could make a lot of money bootlegging hot dogs. <laughs> oh, you could. Now, Rochester, you know perfectly well that I always have to give me that. 
This is the only house in the neighborhood where the mice are picking in the pantry. <laughs> now that's just a lie. On this morning, using my rowing machine. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Happy Halloween. Gee, I'm glad you got here early. You can help me get things ready. Okay, but you better be careful, Jack. All the kids in the neighborhood are out tonight, and they're raising the dickens. Well, naturally, Mary. After all, it's Halloween, you know. Yes, but you ought to see what they just did in front of your house. They tore your big sign down. What sign? You know, the one that says, uh, Jack Benny's residence, admission 25 cents. <laughs> Oh, darn those kids in this neighborhood. I'm going right out there and give them a good spanking. Did you see who they were? Yes, it was Ronnie Coleman, Wally Beery, Bobby Taylor, and the Barrymore brothers. Oh, the Beverly Hills mob, eh? <laughs> what a bunch of rowdies. <laughs> <laughs> Remember last year when they put ink in your swimming pool? Yeah, <laughs> and all the time I thought the water was too cold. You remember? <laughs> Every time I took a swim, I turned blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, those kids better not go in the backyard this year. I set a bear trap for them. A bear trap? Yeah, that'll fix them. Say, Mary, open that jar of stuffed olives, will you, and put one on each plate so it'll look nice, will you? Just one on each plate? Yeah. What are they stuffed with, platinum? Oh, Rochester. What do you want, boy? I thought you were going to bring your brother over to help out tonight. Where is he? He's a timber. September. <laughs> September? See, that's an unusual name. How did he get that? Well, you see, boss, I was born in Rochester, and he was born in September. <laughs> oh, I get it. I... Of course, of course, that's only his middle name. Oh, his middle name? Huh? Yeah, he was born in the middle of September. All right! <laughs> now, never mind that. Get him out here. I want to talk to him. Oh, September? Come in, you call me, brother? Yeah, the boss want to talk to you. Now, uh, September, I suppose you've had experience working at private parties, haven't you? Well, I'll oh, tell you... Oh, he's had experience, all right. <laughs> that boy, that boy's been around. Rochester, I'm talking to Septi. <laughs> now, listen. This is a rather delicate question, but I suppose you're honest. I mean, you can be trusted. Well, I don't like to commit myself. What? Oh, he can be trusted all right. He used to work in a bank. Oh, in a bank, eh? Well, that's good enough for me. I'll give him $3 for helping me out tonight. Only $3? Well, I'll bet that's more than he got at the bank. Why, man, there was more than that stuff to his broom every day. <laughs> well, that's all I'm going to pay. Now, get busy, both of you. How are you coming along, Mary? Fine, Jack. And stop eating those olives. You'll spoil your dinner. That's what I'm trying to do. Oh. Well, then think of me. If some of my gang don't get an olive on their plate tonight, they'll go around saying I'm cheap. <laughs> and another thing, Mary, don't put so much lettuce in that salad. What is this, a rabbit's convention? Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. An extra head of lettuce isn't going to break you. That's not the point. I don't like... I like to see things dainty. If they're any daintier, we'll have to use tweezers. <laughs> You just wait. If you want to know something, Mary, we're going to have a squab for dinner. One squab for the whole gang? Yeah. What are you going to do, wave it at us? <laughs> well, there'll be other things, won't there? Vegetables and fruit and dressing and... What are you going to have for dessert? Popsicles. And they're delicious, too. <laughs> answer the door, Rochester. You answered, September. Are well, you closer than I am? No, I think you're closer. No, no, you is. Well, we've got to open that door. Is there a surveyor in the house? <laughs> now, one of you answer it. Never mind, I'm in now. Oh, hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. <laughs> oh. How am I doing? Say, you're the regular Halloween kid, aren't you? I suppose you've been out raising the dickens tonight, huh? Have I? Yeah. And you know, when I left my house tonight, yeah. I stuck a pin in our front doorbell so it'd keep on ringing all the time. <laughs> Oh, boy, you should have heard it. A pin in your own doorbell. I bet your mother and father were mad, huh? Nah, they're away for the weekend. <laughs> Kenny, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard of. You're the only guy in the world that would ring a doorbell to annoy someone in an empty house. Well, that's nothing. When I go home tonight and open the door, a pail of water's going to fall on me. <laughs> Oh, 
It is? Yeah. Oh, boy, I can hardly wait. I can imagine the surprise. Kenny, put down that olive. You'll spoil your dinner. Oh, one little olive isn't going to hurt him. Don't be so stingy. It's not that, but everybody will want one. And besides, they look nice on the table. Say, Jack, I'd like to clean up a little bit before dinner. Can I go upstairs and wash my hands? Yeah, but it'll cost you a nickel to get in the bathroom. <laughs> Now, Mary, you know better than that. So don't pass any of those smart remarks. Say, Kenny, when the gang comes here later, we want to have a regular party. You know, a lot of entertainment and fun. Will you sing a song for us? Sure, well. And say, Jack, I got a pip, too. You want to hear it? Yeah, well, wait till the gang gets here. No, I want to do it now. I want to see if you like it. Oh, all right, go ahead. Say, Mary, peel those hard-boiled eggs, will you? They're old enough to peel themselves. Do as I say. <laughs> go ahead and sing, Kenny. Hey, boss, boss! What is it, Rochester? You know that bear trap you set out in the backyard for those kids? Yeah. Well, we just caught a bear in it. <laughs> a bear? Well, if there's an Italian on the other end of that chain, I worked with him in Bordeaux. Let's go out and see. Sing, Kenny. Hey. Hey, Kenny, that song was simply wonderful. It was swell. Oh, did you really like it, Jack? I sure did. But say, I wonder where all that applause came from. There's a seal in the goldfish bowl. Oh. <laughs> a trained bear in the backyard and a seal in the goldfish bowl. This place looks like the NBA club. <laughs> hey, Rochester. Yes, sir? Uh, where's that bowl of punch I made? I want it out here on the table so the guests can have a drink before dinner. I'm afraid that punch is kind of weak, boss. Weak? Yes, sir. If you ask me, it could stand a gin transfusion. <laughs> now, Rochester, nobody asked for your opinion. And incidentally, I thought I heard some dice rattling in the kitchen before. You can cut that out, too. Dice? I wasn't fooling with no dice. Well, I thought I heard it. Now, get back to work. Yes, sir. By the way, how's your brother doing in the kitchen? Fine. He just won the gas stove from the cook. <laughs> oh, he did, eh? Hey, September. September. Is someone paging me? Yes, I am. I don't want any crap shooting going on in this house. You're here to work, and that's all. Remember that. There's the door, Rochester. There's the door, September. You've got new shoes. Break them in. <laughs> I'll get one of you guys to answer that door if I have to tie a pork chop on it. <laughs> Rochester, answer the door. Doors, doors, doors. I'd like a job working a tent sometime. You will if you're not careful. Say, Jack, I'm getting hungry. What are we going to eat? Kenny, you'll eat when everybody gets here and put down that goldfish. Well, I'm only petting it. Tell them what you did with the other one. Kenny, if you eat another goldfish, you'll get yours. Well, 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 look who's here. Hello, Mr. Harris. Hi, you, Rochester. Well, hiya, Phil. Well, Phil, I thought you'd never get here. Come on in, Barbara. Barbara? Oh, Jack, uh, I hope you don't mind. I brought a girlfriend of mine along. Hey, I should say I don't. But, hey, she's beautiful. Huh? Wow! Kenny! <laughs> Uh, come right in, Miss, uh, Miss... Uh, this is Miss Whitney. Oh, how do you do, Miss Whitney? Uh, welcome to our happy little gathering. Thank you, Mr. Benny. I'm so glad Phil invited me. I do hope it's not an imposition. Oh, no, no. The more the merrier. It's always open house at the Chateau Benny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, Miss Whitney, uh, this is Kenny Baker. Hello, Kenny. Boy, I could go for you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Don't mind, Kenny. He's such an impulsive kid. And now, Miss Whitney, I'd like you to meet Mary Livingston. Hello, Mary. It's so nice meeting you, my dear. Oh, Rally. Well, it's just too, too ultra, ain't it? <laughs> Mary. Well, those sweet dames burn me up. <laughs> you little minx. <laughs> Say, and Phil, old man, I, I'm so glad you were able to make it tonight. You know, we're going to have a squab for dinner. I knew it wouldn't be two. <laughs> well, I didn't know you were going to bring a guest. At that, we may have a little trouble carving it so that everybody gets a piece. Why don't you send it to the Mayo Brothers? <laughs> oh, don't be so cute. You want to hear, you, you know, the, you, the way you hear this gang talk. <laughs> I'm so nervous. She's so beautiful, you know. I <laughs> No, really. 
You know, to hear this gang talk, Miss Whitney, you'd think I was a regular old miser, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. Hmm. <laughs> well, fellas, as soon as the rest of the gang get here, we'll put on the old feed bag. Mr. Benny? What is it, Rochester? A man just brought in a case of champagne. Did you order it? A case of champagne? Certainly not. I told him you wouldn't buy champagne if Sally Rand was behind every bubble. <laughs> Anyway, I don't want it. Send it back. Yes, sir. Hmm. If he didn't get so many laughs, I'd fire him. <laughs> Good heavens, what's that? Oh, hello, Don. What's... Oh, by the way, I want you to meet a friend of Phil's. Uh, uh, this is Miss Whitney, Don Wilson. How do you do, Mr. Wilson? Well, I'm very glad to know you, Miss Whitney. But you know, Miss Whitney, I've had a feeling all evening that I've seen you somewhere before. Are you by any chance in the movies? No, I'm not. Well, I am. In fact, I'm a star at Paramount. And then, of course, there's my radio work, too. Tell her how much money you make and get it over with. <laughs> Mary! <laughs> you know, Miss Whitney, there are times when Miss Livingston just drives me frantic. But I suppose, well, well, most women are like that. Uh, don't you think so, Miss Whitney? I mean... Yes, but why don't you stand still? <laughs> oh, that's just a habit of mine. Pretty girls always make me nervous. You know? If I was her, I'd yawn right in your face. Mary, please. <laughs> we have company. I'll say you have. What are we going to eat? Yeah, gee, I'm starving. Pretty yeah. soon, boys, pretty soon. Hey, Rochester, how about dinner? We'll be ready in a few minutes. Okay, come on, folks. No use waiting any longer. Let's start in with these hors d'oeuvres first. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Hey, stand hey, back, hey, back hey, one at a time, for heaven's sake. What's the matter with you guys? Oh, I want two of those sardines. Kenny, you'll just take the one with your name in front of it. <laughs> now, don't be a pig. Gosh, this is worse than Russia. Now, Miss Whitney, don't be bashful. Take anything you want. Just help yourself. I tried to, but you hit my hand with a fork. Oh! <laughs> Was that you? I... <laughs> Got all mixed up in this crowd. I'm so sorry. Hey, Phil, hand me that devil egg. Oh, no, I saw it first. Oh, I want a piece too. No, no, get away. Get away. Get away. Everybody let go of that egg. <laughs> now, let go. This is the first meal I ever saw with a referee. <laughs> well, you need one here. Now, everybody sit down at the table and stop acting like a pack of cannibals. Uh, Miss Whitney, you sit right here at my left. Thank you. And Phil, you sit way down at the other end of the table. I could sit in Pomona and I wouldn't have to worry about you. <laughs> That's so. <laughs> All right, uh, Rochester, we're ready. <laughs> There's the door, Rochester. There's the door, September. I wonder who that can be. Only I was thinking of the same thing. Well, stop guessing and see who it is. <laughs> You have no idea, Miss Whitney, what I go through with these two boys. The servant problem is simply awful. I know. I'm a chambermaid myself. <laughs> oh, at the Billsmore, I thought I recognized you. I've seen you around there lots of times. Don't be a sap, Jack. She doesn't work there. She's only kidding you. <laughs> As if I didn't know. <laughs> Say, she's not the type at all. Just the same. I'll bet you can whip up a room in a hurry. <laughs> now, don't be catty. Hey, look who's here. Hiya, fellas. Happy Halloween. Hey, 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 hey. hey so you, you finally got here, Andy. Hey, what happened to your Ma and Pa? I thought you were bringing them along. Well, you know, it's Halloween, Buck, and they're going out to a costume party. A costume party, eh? Yeah, Ma's going as Marie Antoinette, and Pa's taking an axe. <laughs> Well, that ought to be a lot of fun. It's too bad that uh, you had to miss it, Andy. Uh, sure was, Buck. I was all set to go as a geranium. <laughs> as a geranium? <laughs> yeah, but I look lousy in a flower pot. <laughs> well, you'll have a lot more fun right here. Say, Andy, I want you to meet a guest of mine, Miss Whitney. Hello, Andy. Hiya, Babs. What are you doing here? Why, Andy, do you two know each other? Oh, sure. We used to go to high school together. Hey, Babs, will you ever forget the time I kissed you? <laughs> I certainly will. <laughs> well, Andy, you might as well sit down. We're about ready to eat. Oh, uh, Mr. Benny, I'm sorry, but there's going to be a slight delay. 
What's the matter now, Rochester? Well, September had a little argument with the cook and threw the squad at him. He did? Yeah, it hit him right in the mouth, which was open at the time. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Shall I serve the dressing? The cook ate the squab. That's all we had. What are we going to eat now? Well, there's that bear outside. Do you like venison? <laughs> Never mind that. Now, Rochester, run right down to the store and get some Frankfurters and hurry. Yes, sir. Gee, I'm awfully sorry, fellas. Oh, that's all right. Thank you. Gee, Miss, Miss Whitney, I hope the next time you come here, everything won't go wrong. Oh, that's all right. I think this is quite jolly. Really, it's fun. That's a lie if I ever heard one. It is not. <laughs> now, look, fellas, while we're waiting, how about having a little entertainment? Who plays the piano? I do. All right, how about a song, Phil? Oh, oh that's right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, Phil. Sing something, huh? Oh, all right, but I don't do so well on an empty stomach. Oh, don't worry. We'll eat later. Come on, Phil. What'll it be? Well, how about uh, whatever you got that gets me? Oh, hey, that's right. 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 Okay, right. hit it, Kenny. Let's have some fun tonight, boys. <laughs> Say, that was that was swell, Phil. Say, Andy, how about you singing a chorus? Oh, not me, Buck. I'm a little hoarse tonight. Oh, well, I'm glad you told oh, him. Come on, Andy. Come on, Andy. Well, all right. All, all right. I'll do it if Mary sings with me. Sure. How about it, Mary? I'm so weak now, I'll do anything. Oh, Have a go, Murray. Get right well, in there. I hit it, Kenny. You haven't got that certain glance. You don't romance. And when we dance, you only dance. But what have you got that gets me? Here's what I got. A cow, a goat, a gravel throat. My voice sounds like an old coyote. That's what I got that gets you. <laughs> You're happy, you're slappy, but I love you. I'm Don Juan and Romeo, too. You haven't got a grand physique. Your chin is weak. But I got what they call technique. That's, That's what, what I, I got, got that gets me. <laughs> That was all right, but gee, you guys didn't have to insult me insult in that song. Insult you? You invite us here for dinner tonight and we don't get anything to eat. Well, it's not my fault. Accidents can happen, you know. Anyway, Rochester will be right back here with the Frankfurters. Excuse me a minute. Hello? Say, Mr. Benny, I'm over here at the Delton Testing Store. You forgot to give me money for the Frankfurters. Well, you pay for them, Rochester, and I'll give it back to you later. Well, I don't know about that, boss. Now, Rochester, pay for that out of your own pocket. I ain't got no pants on. <laughs> That's a lie. You had pants on when you left the house. They could have worn out, you know. <laughs> That's ridiculous. If you're not back here in five minutes with those Frankfurters, I'll... Uh, I'll move you out of the guest room. <laughs> now, hurry up. Well, looks like we might have to... Hey, fellas. Hey, where are you? Hey, fellas. We're out here in the kitchen. You ought to see what we found in the icebox. I'll buy you turkey. Come on, let's... Cook it nothing. Give me a drumstick. Now, wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute. I'm saving that for Thanksgiving. Well, let's tie him to a chair, fellas. We got yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, cut it off now, fellas. Wait a minute. Now, cut it off now. Now, stop. We'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Gee, that... That Miss Whitney was beautiful. And so charming, too. Do you marry... Mary, do you think she liked me? Oh, sure. How could she resist you, you big, strong dope? <laughs> Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that genial host of Beverly Hills, a man who is famous for his lavish and extravagant parties... Jock Benny. Jock <laughs> Benny. Well, thank you. Hello again. This is Jack Benny, the Elsa Maxwell of Southern California talking. <laughs> And thanks, Don. I imagine you were referring to that blowout I gave for the gang last Sunday night. I uh, certainly was. We had a lot of fun that night. What a spread I put on. Did you enjoy yourself, Don? Oh, we sure did, Jack. We all had a marvelous time. Hey, Phil, wasn't that a great party? Boy, that was a party with a capital P-U. <laughs> Phil, I might have known you wouldn't like it. What do you expect at a party anyway? Well, for one thing, I expect to eat. Eat? Brother, you handed out that food like it was radium. <laughs> 
Now, now, wait a minute, Phil. There might have been a slight delay, but you finally got a meal, didn't you? Yeah, hot dogs and root beer. Well. I went to bed that night and dreamt that Dracula and Frankenstein were shooting pool. <laughs> shooting pool? My goodness. Not only that, I was the eight ball. <laughs> well, hit me on the head and sink my bridge work. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I wasn't going to admit it, fellas. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't going to admit it, but those hot dogs got me, too. Boy, what I went through. What happened, Jack? Did you have a nightmare? I think so. I was never a totem pole before. <laughs> I got so excited, I punctured my hot water bag. <laughs> well, you should have known better than to serve that kind of food late at night. All right, Harris, I'll make a note of that. And incidentally, that's the last time you will ever be invited to my house. You couldn't get me in that dump again with a subpoena. Well, don't worry your pretty little head about that. You're just jealous because I made such a hit with that girl you brought to the party. You mean Barbara? Yes, Barbara. You didn't get any closer to her than War Admiral did to Seabiscuit. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, when she went out the door, I was only two lengths behind her and moving up fast. <laughs> hmm, so don't give me that. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, fellas. What are you talking about? Oh, Wilson was just telling me what a marvelous time he had at my party last Sunday night. John? Yeah. Oh, that guy has a good time just lacing his shoes. Well, he hasn't seen him in ten years. <laughs> but Mary, now... Really, Mary, don't... Now, wait a minute. Don't tell me you didn't enjoy yourself at my party. Well, I had a swell time, Jack. Potatoes, hot dogs, and root beer. Gosh, what a horrible dream I had. Oh, you too, huh? Yeah, I dreamt that Clark Gable was chasing me up the Empire State Building. Clark Gable? What's horrible about that? He didn't catch me. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. I'm going to eat ice cream and pickles tonight and give him another chance. <laughs> that's right, Mary. Never say die. But I'm sorry the food I served my party upset you. That's really a shame. There ought to be a law against you entertaining. Oh, there should, eh? You see, Mary Phil is burnt out because his girl, Barbara, was hanging around me all the time. Did you notice the way she kept looking at me all evening? Yeah, Phil told her he had a glass eye. <laughs> oh, so that's why she asked me to cry. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> well, just the same, before the party was over, she got to like me, and that's why Phil is so mad. I'm not mad. I just think that affair you had was a washout, that's all. Is that so? You know, Mary, Phil doesn't think a party's a success. Unless all the guests go home in a patrol wagon. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Jack. I've met some of the finest people in the world in patrol wagons. Yeah, I can imagine. That's where you signed me up, remember? <laughs> well, I was there by accident. I thought it was a sightseeing bus. <laughs> a sightseeing bus? Then why did you have your lawyer with you? Because he's never seen Chinatown and shut up. <laughs> See, I'll buy everything. But you know what hurts me, fellas? It's the first time any of you have ever been in my new home and you haven't said one word about it. Well, Jack, I meant to tell you all about that. I think your house is simply exquisite. Thanks, Don. Gee, I love that big fireplace in the library. Is it cozy? Oh, it's just ducky. Oh. But, Jack, I saw a cement mixer in your kitchen. Now, what's that for? <laughs> that cement mixer? Yeah. Jack makes his own grape nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. That cement mixer just happens to be an antique. But you know what kills me? You didn't notice the nice things I have in my house. What about that lovely, thick oriental rug I've got? You mean the one in the living room? Yes. I got a Palm Beach suit that's thicker than that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have, Mr. Smarty. Well, I like the rug, and it's plenty thick. Go on. I saw a bug in it with an overcoat on. <laughs> All right. Keep it up. Keep it up, Mary. Now, anybody can run down by rugs and wear hats like you do is beyond me. The one you got on now looks like a bird's eye view of Lake Tahoe. <laughs> If I had a hat like that, I'd wear a veil, too. <laughs> oh, kid, no That's funny. You're the only one that guessed it. Well. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the silliest thing I ever saw. Yeah, that's what I say. Oh, hello, Kenny. Hello, I didn't see you come in. Where were you? Well, I was out in the hall whistling at the girls. Whistling? Now, oh, Kenny, you shouldn't do that. I know. A dog came up and bit me. Oh, 
<laughs> well, that'll teach you a lesson. Say, Kenny, did you have a good time at my party the other night? I had a swell time, Jack. But, wow, those hot dogs, what they did to me. Oh, now, don't tell me you had a nightmare, too. Did I? You know what, Jack? I went to bed and dreamt I was president of the United States. Oh, so you were president, eh? Yeah. Boy, was the country in a mess when I woke up. <laughs> Well, I can imagine. Well, well, President Baker. What a dream. Who was vice president? Maxie Rosenblum. <laughs> oh, quite an administration there. Well, for the sake of our country, I'm glad you woke up. <laughs> Say, Kenny, getting back to the party, well, that was the first time you saw my new house, wasn't it? Yes, it was. See, it's beautiful, Jack. And those paintings in your living room are the last words. Oh, they are masterpieces, every one of them. Oh, I like the picture of the girl's head that hangs over the fireplace. Oh, you mean the Mona Lisa? Yeah. Mona Lisa? Why, Jack, the Mona Lisa has a smile on her face. And the girl in your picture's frowning. Frowning? Yeah. Darn that Rochester. I told him he was hanging it upside down. <laughs> he knows absolutely nothing about art. Say, Jack, uh, tell him what he did with your painting of Napoleon. Yeah. What was it, Jack? Oh, he hung the picture sideways, and Napoleon's hand kept falling out of his vest. <laughs> Well, I'll have things straightened out pretty soon. Hey, Teddy, it's about time for your song. What's it going to be tonight? I'm going to sing If I Loved You More, and I dedicate it to Oscar, my pet rabbit. Gee, what a thoughtful kid. Sing, Kenny. Are you listening, Bill? I mean, Oscar? That was If I Loved You More, sung by Kenny Baker. And, Kenny, I could tell that came right from the heart. I'm sure Oscar, your pet rabbit, enjoyed it very much. He better or I'll eat him. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't do that, kid. No. And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, as our play this evening is quite long, without further ado, I will announce our feature attraction. Tonight, we will add another brick in our monument to theatrical history. We are going to present our version of MGM's sensational story of pugilistic triumph and nerve-tingling suspense, The Crowd Roars. Thank you. Now, I will play the part as portrayed on the screen by Robert Taylor, that of a prize fighter who battles his way to the top, fighting and knocking out the toughest men the ring has ever known. <laughs> Mary, I want him to believe this. Believe. Now, Mary will play the part of Sheila, my sweetheart, as portrayed on the screen by Maureen O'Sullivan. Why don't you get her and leave me alone? Well, if you want to know something, prima donna, I came darn near getting Maureen O'Sullivan. Well, why didn't you? Well, unfortunately, she thinks I'm repulsive. <laughs> Now, let's see. Oh, yeah, Don Wilson will be the fight announcer, and Phil, Harris. oh, Phil, you're going to be in the play, too. Well, that's better than listening to it. Phil, that little remark may cause you to listen to this program next year if you're in touch with it at all. <laughs> Do I make myself clear? <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, Phil is going to be my manager. Don is the fight okay, announcer. Okay, Jack. Now, this play of the Fistic Arena will go on immediately after the next number. Go ahead, Phil. Oh, uh, hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I wish you wouldn't be a prize fighter. Why not? Look what happened to me. <laughs> oh, I was wondering how he got that way. Play, Phil. <laughs> that was F.D.R. Jones, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, folks, as time is getting short, we will proceed with our play. That epic of the prize ring, The Crowd Roars, or Button, Button, Who Hit Me on the Button? <laughs> Take it, Don. The scene is the home of the Bennies in the thriving little town of Waukegan, Illinois, many years ago. As the curtain rises, we find Master Benny, a child of six, busy in the library. Curtain? Darn it. Oh, Daddy. Daddy. What is it, Stinky? <laughs> Daddy, can I go out with the other kids? Not until you finish your lesson. Hey, what's that tune you was playing? Schubert's Unfinished Symphony, and I'm not surprised. <laughs> well, 
neither am I. Say, Daddy, why do I have to keep practicing? I don't want to be a violinist. I want to be a prize fighter. Prize fighter? Why, son, you couldn't lick a popsicle. <laughs> I could, too. Now, I'll get going to your lessons. I don't want to hear another word out of you. Oh, all right. Hey, wait till I get out of here. <laughs> I wish I could go, too. Oh, well, I won't listen. Five years later, and Master Benny is now 11 years old. <laughs> oh, there I go again. Hey, son, ain't that the same tune you've been playing for five years? Yeah. Wish the teacher would show you how to turn over the page. <laughs> well, I don't want to be a violinist. I want to be a prize fighter. I only yesterday I beat up that Stewart kid that lives across the street. You mean Jimmy Stewart? No, Gloria. <laughs> she won't forget me in a hurry. Well, stop bragging going with your lessons. Okay, but one of these days I'm going to be the champion of the world, Dad. And you'll be proud of me. I'd be proud of you if you knew how to eat with a fork. <laughs> I'll show him. Wait and see. Ten years later. <laughs> Fifteen years later. I give up. Well, I could do better, but I'm playing with boxing gloves on. Anyway, I'm through with this. I'm going to New York and make a name for myself. I'm a champion and the world's going to know about it. So long, Dad. I'm packing up. Don't forget your toupee. I got it on my chest. I'm a he-man now. So long, Pop. Good luck, son. and Jack Benny has made rapid strides as a prize fighter. After a series of sensational knockouts, he is now known as Killer Benny. That's me, folks, a tiger if there ever was one. We now take you to the killer's training camp where he is working out with his manager, Curly Harris. Ow! Hey, Curly, what do you want, Killer? I wish you'd get me a new punching bag. This one keeps punching me back. <laughs> Never mind, Dad. Did you do your old work this morning? No, I couldn't find my broom. <laughs> Now, look, Carly, when is my next bout? I haven't had a fight in two days. I'm working on it, killer. I got a guy in mind for you, but he ain't out of the hospital yet. Well, prop him up. I'm raring to go. <laughs> I'll get you a fight pretty soon, but I'm warning you, killer. You better start saving your dough. Why, you throw away your money like Diamond Jim Brady. I don't throw away my money. I know that, but this happens to be the play. <laughs> But gee whiz, I like a little fun once in a while. Okay, killer, but if you want to be a champion, you better stop running around with women. Okay. Now remember that, women are poison. I got you, Chief. No women. Right. See you later. So long. Now what'll I do? I guess I'll skip rope a little while. One, two, buck Michelle. Train four. Shut the door. Five, six. Give up ten. Hello, can I come in? Are you a woman? Yes. Now get out of here. You're poison. What? Oh, I'm sorry, Sheila. I didn't know it was you. Well, don't holler at me like that or I'll take my tights back. <laughs> well, I said I was sorry. I'm nervous. She I want to fight. Well, how are you shaping up, killer? Fine. Look at these arms. They're like steel. Yeah, what are those bumps on them? Rivet. <laughs> You're looking at the next champ, Sheila. Get these muscles. Look at his physique. I've seen better physiques on parsnips. <laughs> See, don't you love me anymore, Sheila? I love you, killer, but you're getting slapped, happy from all this fighting. Yeah. Walking around on your heels. On my heels? Yeah, you look like Corrigan doing a toe dance. Well, don't worry, Sheila. If it'll make you any happier, my next fight will be my last. Who's that? That's Harris, my manager. I don't want him to see you. I'm in strict training. Well, what'll I do? Here, hide behind the beer barrel. <laughs> okay. Hey, killer, killer, have I got news for you. What is it, Coily? Last your big chance has come. I just arranged the match between you and the champion of California. The champion of California? Who's that? Kenny Baker, the Glendale assassin. Oh, Kid Baker, eh? Say, I heard about him. He's plenty tough. What am I fighting, Baker? As soon as we can catch him. Oh. Now, listen, Chief, why don't you give me a real fighter like Joe Lewis? I'm dying to meet him. You're fighting him next. That's the... St what? <laughs> oh, well, you can't take it with you. <laughs> But don't worry, Chief, because you're looking at the next champ right now. That's the spirit. Go on, Killer. So long. Goodbye, Sheila. Goodbye. Well, it certainly fooled him up to the last line. Oh, Killer, 
Sheila, you're not really going through with this, are you? Sure I am, Sheila. Darling, you don't know what you're doing. But your baker's dynamite, he'll cut you to ribbons, he'll mangle you. Who, me? <laughs> you may be tough, Sheila. But I'll make enough dough out of this fight to retire. And when we do, you're going to be Mrs. Killer Benny. <laughs> Two months later, the scene is Madison Square Garden in New York City. The place is jammed with people, and the main event is about to begin. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event. In this corner, in black tights, we have the champion, Kick Baker of the Glen Dale Assassin. And in this corner, in three tights... <laughs> How do you feel, Killer? Okay, where's my glasses? I can't see a thing without them. Here they are. Thanks. Good evening, folks. This is Sam Wilson talking from the ringside of Madison Square Garden. The referee is now calling the contestants at the center of the ring for their final instructions. Now, listen, boys. You're both in here to do the best you can. Yeah. I want this to be a nice, clean fight, and when I tell you to sign a father set, I want you to send a rave of slaughter match to Sam. <laughs> no, I don't want any kind of slaughter, Rage. No. No coming up a slaughter No, no. Just no. a slaughter fight. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? What? You understand? No. I do. Good. Now go to your quarters, boys, and when the bell rings, come out, sir, and sister wants it. Okay. Well, good luck, Baker. You're going to need it. Oh, yeah? I'll knock that toupee right off your chest. Well, it's gray, so have a little respect. Now, remember one thing, Baker. You're talking to the Walt Keegan Wildcat. Oh, I am, eh? Well, you're talking to the Glendale Narcissus. That's assassin. Yeah. <laughs> All right, boys. Go to your corner. There's the bell, folks, and the tight is on. The boys meet the center of the ring. Hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. Kenny leads with the right to the chin, and Baker collars with the left to the jaw. Ow. Pardon my glove. Kenny takes it with a smile. He tries an uppercut, but misses. Baker comes back with an undercut, which falls short. Then he comes back with a New York cut, which Baker snaps at. What a fight, folks. What a fight. Come on, Killer. Knock him cold. What's the matter with you? Sheila, stop talking. Sheila stops talking, and Benny rushes Baker. Baker comes back with a right to the chin. A left, Ooh. a right, Ooh. a left, Ooh. a right, Ooh. a left, Ooh. a right. Ooh. Benny's down! A, a one, a two, a three, a four. Benny's up! A right, Ooh. a left, Ooh. a right, Ooh. a left. Ooh. Benny's down! What am I, an elevator? A one, a two, a three, a four, a tundin, a tatat, a milgin, a tundin, a tatat, a... and ten. Baker is still champion! Oh, Killer. Killer, say something. Speak to me. Speak to me. <laughs> I sure gave it to that Benny, didn't I? You're Benny. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Two years later, Killer Benny has retired from the ring, married his sweetheart Sheila, and settled down on a little farm in the country. Let's drop in on them. Oh, Killer! Killer! What is it, honey? Uh, call the hogs, will you? Okay. Then we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. I hope you all like our little play tonight, The Crowd Roars. See, Jack, I think you played your part swell. You were so natural and convincing. You look so cute in your tights. Oh, Mary, this is only a play on the radio. I'm not wearing tights. Oh, no, take a look. Oh, darn it, my suspenders broke again. <laughs> Good night, folks. Give me a pin. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the political excitement being over, we bring you that prominent citizen of Beverly Hills who was just elected dog catcher, Jack Benny. <laughs> The 
Hello again. This is the Honorable Jack Benny talking. <laughs> and, Don, that was awfully nice of you, but I wish you hadn't mentioned anything about my latest triumph. <laughs> I'm trying very hard to forget it. Yes, but, Jack, I just can't figure out how a fellow like you would accept such a job as dog catcher. Don, it was all a misunderstanding. I thought I was running for mayor. <laughs> Oh, well, I might as well make the best of it. Imagine me, dog catcher, with my bony legs. <laughs> God. It might be dangerous at that. Uh, when do you start your new duties? Oh, I've been working all week, but I better get a new pair of glasses for this job. Yesterday, I caught Bobby Breen three times. <laughs> you did? Yeah, the last time, he bit me. <laughs> But you know, you know what burns me up, Don? Here, Andy Devine is mayor of Van Nuys, Al Jolson is mayor of Encino, and I've got fleas. <laughs> I found one on my arm this morning, leaning on a shovel. <laughs> he likes me so well, he's building. <laughs> oh, well, that's just my luck. What's the matter, Jack? What are you raving about now? Oh, nothing, Mary. I'm just sore about the election, that's all. Yeah, I'd make a darn good mayor of Beverly Hills, but they can't see it. Oh, gee whiz, Jack. Haven't you got enough to do as it is? No. You're in radio, you're in pictures. Well. And you get violin lessons on Tuesdays? <laughs> what else do you want? Mary, if you're referring to my little group of pupils, I'm certainly not getting rich on them. You're not, eh? No. If I didn't sell them rosin and strings now and then, I'd hardly break <laughs> either. <laughs> Break even? Yeah. You've been making plenty of profit on those violin strings, according to Winchell's column last night. Winchell? What did he have to say about it? He said, uh, what prominent radio and picture star has been seen kidnapping cats? <laughs> well, he didn't necessarily mean me. He should have a line in his column saying, what feminine radio star wears plenty-looking hats? <laughs> I, wish you, I wish you could see the one Mary's got on tonight. It's a Lulu, folks. It looks like an extra eyelid. <laughs> oh, kid. What do you think of it, Phil? Phil? Phil didn't get here yet, Jack. He didn't? Oh, say, that reminds me. I must tell you, kid, something before Phil comes in. Is he burned up at me? What'd you do, cut his salary again? No. <laughs> But Don, Don, remember that girl he brought to my party two weeks ago? Oh, you mean that beautiful brunette Barbara Whitney? Yes, Barbara. Yes. Say, Jack, uh, didn't I see you and Barbara at the Wiltshire Bowl last Monday night? That was us. <laughs> Wiltshire Bowl? Why, that's where Phil and his boys are playing, isn't it? Sure, that was the idea, Don. I took Barbara there to get Phil's goat, and you should have seen his face when we walked in. Was he burned up? Burned up, Don. You never heard such hot music from that orchestra in your life. <laughs> What happened when Phil introduced you on the floor, Jack? Oh, well, that was just a dirty trick. What was it, Barry? Oh. Well, Jack and Barbara were sitting at a table, so Phil asked Jack to stand up and take a bow. Yes? Now, Mary. And when he did, the guitar player hit him with a tomato. <laughs> you'd have got a bigger laugh if you'd have said tomato. <laughs> you know, you don't have to get risky on this program. <laughs> Well, it's just lucky for Phil that I laughed it off and sat down. Well, personally, Jack, I think it was a pretty cheap thing for Phil to do. Oh, I didn't care about getting hit with a tomato, Don, but the manager came over and wanted me to sign a contract to do it every night. <laughs> What's the matter? Wasn't enough dough in it? Oh, the money was all right, but that sort of comedy is dated, you know. <laughs> But Barbara and I had a good time anyway. I got enough pleasure just watching Phil squirm. Say, Jack, who was that fellow sitting at the same table with you? You know, that good-looking guy. Oh, that was a relative of Barbara's from out of town, her Uncle Louie. Hey, Jack, watch out, watch out. Here comes Phil now. Oh, boy, is he burned up. I'm almost afraid to face him. <laughs> oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jack, old boy. How's my baby? Wow, and he's very nice. <laughs> oh, he's just putting it on. Now, watch me. Mary. Say, Phil... Have you seen Barbara lately? <laughs> Barbara who? You know who I mean. Barbara Whitney, the girl I took to your Wilshire Bowl last Monday night. Oh, yeah. She brings a lot of guys in there. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Mary, you see how mad he is? Hot diggity. I'm not mad about your taking Barbara out. Oh, not much. But if you ever come into my club again and start handing out cards, I'll have you thrown out. What cards? You know, the ones that say Jack Benny, violin lessons and supplies. <laughs> He's trying to change the subject. Oh, boy, is he sizzling. Wahoo! Now, wait a minute, Jack. Yeah. Let's get one thing straight. I'm not a bit jealous about Bart. Oh, no, no. Well, I'm not. Oh, heaven forbid. <laughs> oh, of course not. Look, you took her out Monday night, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I took her out Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. What do you know about that? Well, let me tell you something, Smarty. It's customary for a fellow to send flowers to a girl, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I haven't seen Barbara since Monday night. And yesterday, she sent me the most gorgeous box of roses you ever saw. <laughs> I know she did. Yeah, what are you laughing at? I told her you were dead. <laughs> oh, so that's why that card had a black border. I thought it was something new. <laughs> Phil, the next time you tell a girl that I'm dead and I'm not, you get yours. <laughs> what a heel he turned out to be. Who's burned up now? I'm not burned up. I just can't imagine anyone doing a thing like that. That's all. Sing, Kenny. Kenny isn't even here yet. Well, all right, don't holler at me. What are you going to play, Phil? Well, I'm going to... Well, go ahead and play it. We haven't got it all night. Sing, Kenny. I mean, play, Phil. What a dirty trick to do to a pal. <laughs> Uh, that was You Got Me from the Mask and Wig Show, played by the Jello Orchestra and directed by a young man who had best read the want ads. <laughs> if you get what I mean, maestro. What's the matter with you, Jack? Haven't you got a sense of humor? Sense of humor? Phil, I don't see anything funny in telling Barbara that I was dead. Oh, she'd have found out sooner or later. <laughs> well, it's nothing to laugh at. It was an awful thing to do. Jack, you don't think for a minute Phil really said that, do you? Yes, I do. That guy would say anything. How about the time he told Carol Lombard that I wore a girdle? <laughs> you were there. Yeah, they were snapping you all night. <laughs> hmm. And now he's trying to get me in wrong with my girl, Barbara. Your girl? Yeah. What are you talking about? She was with me when you met her, wasn't she? Hello, Jack. Sure she was with you, but she can improve herself, can't she? Hiya, Phil. Improve herself. Ha, ha. That's a laugh. Well, the laugh's on you, big boy. Mary, did you ever see such an all-around egotist? Hello, Mary. No, I haven't, Jack, but here's that idea. Just the same, Mr. Harris. If you want to know something, I'm going to propose to Barbara. When? When his rheumatism gets better. He can't bend his knees this week. Oh, sticking up for him, huh? Oh, oh, hello. Hello, Kenny. Hey, Jack, what's the big argument all about? Oh, Phil and I were having a little discussion about my girlfriend, Miss Whitney. Was she the girl you had with you at the Wilshire Bowl the other night? Yeah. Oh, were you there, Kenny? Hey, why didn't you come over to my table and say hello? I was afraid to. Why? Phil told me you had smallpox. <laughs> Smallpox? Well, that's the worst yet. Kenny, you're a friend of mine. Why didn't you come over anyway? Well, I went out to get vaccinated, and by the time I got back, you were gone. <laughs> So Harris told another lie, huh? Well, he's just sore because I took his ex-girl Barbara up to his place and danced every dance. Wait a minute. You danced every dance with her? All right, so the waiter had one little pot <laughs> Hey, what's that? Well, that's unusual, Jack. Why did you let the waiter dance with your girl? Oh, I don't know. It was either that or give him a tip. <laughs> Now, Mary, that had nothing to do with it. I just happened to know him, that's all. Say, Jack, who was that good-looking fellow sitting with you and Barbara at the table? Oh, that was a relative of hers from out of town, her Uncle Louie. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Her Uncle Louie, that's rich. He was holding Barbara's hand all evening, wasn't he? Well, naturally, he hadn't seen her in a long time. Her uncle is bound to be a little affectionate. Well, somebody ought to tell her aunt. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Say, maybe there is something to that. Oh, I... Gee, I can't believe that Barbara would... Gosh, she, she acted like she liked me. I, gee, I wish I could find out. Do you want me to ask her for you? No, Phil, I'll ask her myself. Huh? Why don't you use my system? Just walk right up to her and hear her on the back and say, Listen, babe, how do we stand? <laughs> Kenny, Kenny, you're a nice boy and all that, but don't try to tell me anything about women. Oh, yeah? yeah. I've been slapped more than you have. <laughs> you're happier than I am, too. <laughs> Suppose I'll have to go on guessing. Yeah. Oh, Jack, I just thought of something. I know how you can find out whether Barbara likes you or not. How? Well, come here a minute and I'll whisper to you. All right. Mm hmm. Uh huh. 
Go away, Kenny. Mm -hmm. Say, it might work at that. Should we do it now? Sure, why not? Okay, hey, fellas, carry on with the show, will you? Mary and I have to go someplace. Where are you going, Jack? Never mind, I'll tell you later. Hey, Rochester, get my car ready. We're leaving right away. Did you get five? No! <laughs> Come on, Mary, sing, Kenny. See you later. Gee, I hope this works. <laughs> Take it easy, Rochester. Hey, Mary, you sure you know where the place is? Yes, Jack, and stop being so fidgety. Oh, gosh, I've never been in this neighborhood before. Anyway, I feel funny about going to a fortune teller. Well, this one is marvelous. She'll tell you things that'll make your hair stand up. She will? She can't do it to me. <laughs> never mind, Rochester. Hey, we're not going to a fire. Slow down. Okay, boy. Yeah. I hate to see that evening so well, Stop that singing. If I want entertainment, I'll put in a radio. A radio in this car would stand out like a bathroom in a log cabin. <laughs> now, stop arguing. You nearly hit that truck. See, the way you drive, I'm surprised you don't get a ticket. I'll never get a ticket driving this car. Why not? All the cops think it's a mirage. <laughs> be so comical. See that fortune teller lives in a spooky neighborhood. Are you sure we're going the right way, Mary? We'll be there in a minute. It's 1002 Dracula Drive. <laughs> Dracula Drive? Uh, turn left at this corner, Rochester. Yes, sir. Whee! <laughs> Rochester, when you make a left turn, you're supposed to stick out your hand. I did that last time and the steering wheel went with it. <laughs> Now you better have that fixed immediately. Oh, Jack, why don't you trade in this piece of junk? I'm going to, Mary. I'm trying to get an allowance of $400. You couldn't get $400 on this car if the cushions were stuffed with government bonds. I couldn't, eh? <laughs> That's a good one, Miss Livingston. Shut up! <laughs> and by the way, Rochester, I thought I told you to wear a chauffeur's uniform while you're driving. That ain't gonna help things any. I'll do it just the same. Uh, say, Jack, there's a place over there, that old frame building. Gee, it's a funny-looking dump. And a... Stop right here, Rochester. Okay. Well, here we are. <laughs> yes, yeah, right up against the telegraph pole. Well, we ought to have bricks. I'm tired of throwing that anchor out. <laughs> We're here, anyway. Uh, yeah, there's a sign. Uh, Madam Zombie, psychic. Reveals your past, present, and future. Screeno every Thursday night. Hmm. Just our luck to come on Sunday. Gee, this is a weird-looking place. Hey, Rochester, we'll only be a few minutes. Wait out here for us, will you? I won't stay out here all alone in this neighborhood. Oh, all right, then come along with us. What a creepy place. Ring the bell, Mary. There's the button. Okay. <laughs> Gee, that's a peculiar bell. Nobody home. Let's go. <laughs> Give him a chance and stop trembling. Here comes somebody now. Hmm. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? My name is Jack Benny. I came here to see Madame Zombie. She's occupied at present. Won't you come in? Yes. Come on, Mary. You too, Rochester. Madame Zombie is busy with a client. In the meantime, you may be seated. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Kind of hard to see in here, isn't it, huh? This place is darker than a telephone booth in Harlem. <laughs> Quiet, Rochester, and where are you? Here I am. Well, open your eyes so I can see you. <laughs> right now, I'd give $2 for a coal miner's hat. Well, just put a candle on the one you're wearing. That'll <laughs> Now, pardon me, mister, but... I hope we won't have to wait very long. Did you have an appointment, or are you the reckless type? Well, I had no appointment, but I'm quite anxious to have my fortune told. You see, I 
want to find out whether a certain girl loves me. Well, I've never seen the young lady, but offhand, I'd say no. <laughs> well, offhand, I didn't ask you. Well, when can I see Madame Zombie? Have patience. She is now communing with the spirit world. I can stand a drink myself. <laughs> Rochester. Now, where, where is Madame Zombie? At present, she is flying through space, and when she returns, you will be summoned. I see. <coughs> what was that? I didn't hear anything. You didn't? <laughs> Rochester, did you hear anything? Rochester! Rochester! I'm out the car, boy! <laughs> Now, how did he get through that door without opening it? It's got a keyhole, ain't it? Oh, that's right. Say, mister, I wonder how long we'll have to wait. Not very long now, Mr. Benny. Excuse me, please. I'll call you later. <laughs> Mary, this is an awful place you brought me to. I wish I hadn't come. Yeah, it is kind of spooky. Yeah. Candy, popcorn, peanuts, and program. <laughs> you can't tell one spirit from another without a program. <laughs> Well, that's just a racket. Mary, why you ever brought me to a joint like this, I'll never know. God, are you sure this Madam Zombie knows her business? Oh, certainly, Jack. She's wonderful. Well, that's good. Are you going to have your fortune told, too? No, I'm just going to collect my commission and get out of here. Oh, I get it. Why, well, Mary, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, quiet. Here comes that werewolf again. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, you're still here. We're ready for you, Mr. Benny. At last. If you'll follow me, I'll take you to the mystic chamber. The inner sanctum of Madame Zombie. <laughs> Gee. Gee. Enter. This is an odd-looking room here. Mary, do you smell that incense? She reminds me of that perfume I gave you for Christmas. Remember? Yeah, open the window. <laughs> there she is. Madame Zombie, I have brought you another client. One who seeks your advice and counsel. Very well, I shall guide him. You may go now, Junior. At once. <laughs> uh, how do you do? Sit right down here, Mr. Benny. Now tell me, what is your problem? Uh, Madam Zombie, I'd like to find out whether a certain girl is fond of me, or whether I'm pursuing a false dream. Uh, can you help me? Yes. Now gaze with me into this crystal ball. Concentrate, and think only of your question. Yes, Madam Zombie. Wait. Wait. I'm waiting. Now... Now I'm in a trance. I see little things creeping and crawling about. Little things? <laughs> oh, what are you laughing at? She's got ants in her trance. <laughs> Mary, you'll break the spell. Madam, Madam Zombie, are you still in the trance? Yes. Oh, now it comes to me. I see a tall, beautiful brunette with sparkling eyes and a dazzling smile. Is her name Barbara? Yes. And I see her holding a man in her arms. She's kissing him. Kissing him? Is it me? No, 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 no. Is... <laughs> Is it Phil? No, 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 no. Well, for heaven's sake, who is it? Uncle Louie. <laughs> Uncle Louie? I can't believe it. I can't believe it. You're a fake, Madam Zombie. You don't know anything. I knew you were a crook. You're a phony, Madam Zombie. I'm not going to pay you for the visit. I'm not surprised. I saw that in the crystal, too. Oh, you did, eh? Well, come on, Mary. Let's go. No, you don't, wise guy. Hey, Bush! Bush! What do you want, Mary? I got a deadbeat here. Give him the work. Okay. Mary, take my arm. Let's run out of here. Hurry up. Wait for me. Oh, darn those steps. I broke my ankle. I could have told you that ten minutes ago. Well, why didn't you? I was holding out for your neck. Oh, come on, Mary. Let's go. Gosh, my ankle hurts. Drive slower, Rochester. Okay, boss. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Ooh, my ankle. Rochester, stop at the first drugstore we come to, will you? 
Mary, will you run in and get me some liniment? Sure, Jack. Give me the money. Oh, never mind. I probably got some at home. Good night, folks. <laughs> Ooh, this ankle. <laughs> The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, hey, Jack, Jack, oh, Phil, where's Jack? I don't know. I got enough trouble taking track of my hillbillies. Oh, I know where Jack is. He's in the next room talking to Barbara Whitney on the telephone. Oh, boy, is he gaga about her. Well, she's beautiful. Yes, but it's a shame the way Jack is falling for her. I think she's nothing but a gold digger. Well, she'll have to use a dredge to get any out of him. <laughs> Say, fellas, let's open the door and listen in on him. Oh, no, that wouldn't be nice. Ain't that too bad. Open her up, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Barbara? Yeah? Oh, you don't really mean that. You do? Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> Gee, that was cute. What a sap. Oh, let him alone. He's only young twice. <laughs> oh, oh, you know I do, Barbara. I called you four times today, didn't I? That's four nickels. <laughs> That's 20 cents. What a Romeo. He keeps books yet. <laughs> now, look, honey, am I going to see you tonight? Oh, you're going to a cooking school? Well, that's encouraging. Uh, how about Monday night? I see. Well, Tuesday night? Wednesday night? When you get to Friday, it's me. <laughs> What's that, Barbara? Oh, you can see me Thursday night? Well, that's swell. Shall I bring you some more peanut brittle? <laughs> oh, it's no trouble. I insist. I'll bring you a great big bag. Gee, you must get it wholesale. <laughs> well, Barbara, I have to hang up now. I'll see you Thursday. Bye-bye, honey. Let's get back here. Hurry up. See what a gal. I got a pocket full of grits. Oh, hello, fellas. I'm sorry I'm late. I just bumped into an old friend of mine out in the corridor. Old friend, eh? Yeah, I haven't seen him in years. In fact, I used to go to school with him. I bet he was surprised to see you got out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good one. Well, fellas, how about getting started with the program? I'm raring to go. Oh, you certainly look at Jack. I've never seen you so radiant and happy. Why, you're positively beaming. Well, why shouldn't I be happy? At Thanksgiving, the frost is on the pumpkin. I'm going to have turkey and dressing and cranberries. Nuts. And nuts and raisins. <laughs> Oh, boy, it's the holiday season. All right, Jack, all right. Cut the kid. And we know you were talking to Barbara on the phone. We heard you mention her name. Barbara? Oh, I know what you mean. I was talking to my tailor in Santa Barbara. It was a, it was a long-distance call. Your tailor? Yeah. You always pay for your suits with peanut brittle? <laughs> peanut brittle? Oh, oh, I just sent him that for a gag. He's a nice fella, and I like him. You must like him all right. You kept calling him honey. Honey? Yeah, we heard you. Well, well, why, sure I call him Honey. That happens to be his name. Honey Boy Ginsburg. <laughs> now, listen, fellas, that was just a business call, so let's forget it. Well, if it was a business call and he's your tailor, why couldn't he see you tonight? Because he's busy. He's working on my suit, that's why. Well, if he's working on your suit, why is he going to cooking school? He's making candies for lamb chops and cut up. <laughs> Gosh, you'd think this was a quiz program. Well, Jack, the whole thing is your fault. Now, why didn't you come out in the first place and admit that you were talking to Barbara? You're not ashamed of her, are you? Now, look, fellas, let's drop it. I was talking to my tailor. His name is Honey Boy, and he lives in Santa Barbara. Now, do you mind if I get off the witness stand? No. Say, Jack, did he make that suit you've got on now? This one? Yeah, but the cuffs on the sleeves are my own idea. They're... <laughs> it's the latest thing, too. Not bad, huh? That's the only Mackinac I ever saw with pants. <laughs> 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 well, that's just sour grapes. You don't know what you're talking about. Say, Jack, it's not a bad-looking suit at that, but isn't it just a little loose on you? Well, yes, Don, but it's supposed to be. You see, this is an English grape model. It's not supposed to fit snug, you know. That's the same. You look like you were punctured. <laughs> well, Mary, if I were you, I wouldn't pass any remarks about anyone else's apparel, especially with that hat you've got on tonight. Where do you get them all? <laughs> You ought to see this one, folks. It looks like a bird's eye view of a knit on a gnat. <laughs> oh, what a lid. Oh, oh, hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. How's your love life? 
Love life? What are you talking about? Did you buy that ring yet? Ring? What ring? Oh, I saw Jack in a jewelry store the other day looking for some rings. Don't get excited, Kenny. He's buying it for his tailor. <laughs> oh. Well, Jack, I, I hope, hope you'll both be very happy. <laughs> Now, Kenny, just relax and don't get all confused. What's that you got in your hand? Well, oh, I'm selling some tickets on a tur- turkey raffle. You want to buy one? <laughs> that was two turkeys, wasn't it? <laughs> no, one ticket. Turkey two... raffle. Oh, well. Well. Oh, come on. How about it, Jack? They're only a half a dollar. Isn't that cute, Kenny, running a raffle? <laughs> Are you having any trouble selling tickets? Not until now. <laughs> I was talking to Kenny. Uh, Kenny, it's time for your song now, and I'll buy a ticket right after you finish. How's that? Oh, buy it now, Jack. What's three minutes' interest on 50 cents? <laughs> Mary, I'm not going to interrupt the program for a personal matter. I'll buy a ticket later. Go ahead with your song, Kenny. Okay. Wait a minute. I'll tell you. <coughs> hello? Who? Oh, hello, honey. Boy. <laughs> I said, hello, honey. Boy, am I glad to hear from you. Who is it, Jack? My tailor. He's calling from Santa Barbara. What? What's that? You can't make my soup Thursday night? <laughs> nice work, Jack. We don't catch on. Mary, quiet. Well, gee, I wish you could make it. I've got reservations at the Copeland Grove. Oh, he dances, too. Well, look, honey, boy. <laughs> How about Friday night? Or Saturday night. Hmm? I smell a rat. Does anybody else? Why? <laughs> Look, Mr. Ginsburg, I'll have to call you back later. What? Yes, I like the soup. All right, I love the soup. <laughs> what? All right, I love you. Goodbye. <laughs> well, sing, Kenny. What are you looking at? Oh, gosh. Well, I gotta have soup, don't I? What am I, a nudist? <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, as our feature attraction for this evening is rather long, tonight the Benny White Face Minstrels will present their version of Metro Goldwyn Mayer's current film achievement, that stirring drama of newsreel cameramen and their adventures in the jungle, that sensational story, Too Hot to Handle. Thank you. As you may remember, this picture starred Clark Gable and Myrna Lloyd. I will play the part of that ace cameraman as portrayed on the screen by Mr. Gable. Uh, Myrna Loy's role will be enacted... Wait a minute, Jack. Why do you always grab the star part for yourself? Now, Myrna Loy's role will be enacted... One by... week you're Bob Taylor, this week you're Gable. Why can't I have a part like that? Uh, now, Myrna Loy's role <laughs> will be enacted... By... What am I around here, a stooge? Definitely. <laughs> Now, Mary, uh, Mary, you're going to play uh, Myrna Loy's part. That's a relief. I thought you were going to grab that, too. <laughs> no, that's all yours. <laughs> now, you're going to be Myrna Livingston, that daredevil flyer. Now, in this play, you have a brother who is also a flyer. What are we, a trapeze act? <laughs> Mary, you're an aviatrix. In fact, you're just as much at home in the air as you are on the ground. That's fine. I get dizzy when I eat a three-decker sandwich. <laughs> all right, you'll only be acting, and we'll get a better joke for tonight. <laughs> Now, let's see. In the last scene, we go into the jungles of Africa. So, Kenny, uh, Kenny, you have to play the part of a cannibal. A cannibal? What's that? A cannibal, Kenny, is the kind of a guy who'd go into a restaurant and order the waiter. <laughs> now, Don, Don, you have to be a cannibal, too. Oh, Jack, I don't think I'd like to do that. Cannibals have no class or dignity. Well, Don, we'll let you wear spats. <laughs> You'll do all right. But, Jack, I can't play the part of a savage. I'm not vicious enough. Don, you'll be vicious if I have to cut your salary. <laughs> Which threw me a thought. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, who else do we need? See, Jack. What is it, Kenny? If you cut Don's salary, will you buy a raffle ticket? <laughs> Maybe. Well, so much for the casting of our play. So now, folks... Say, Jack, not that I care, but is there a part for me in this taffy pole? 
Oh, yes, Phil. Yeah, you're going to be my boss, the head of the union newsreel company, and your name is Phil Fathead. <laughs> Fathead? Yes. Well, you better call me by my first name or I'll knock that gold tooth right out of the front row. <laughs> I haven't got a gold tooth, Smarty. I've been eating salmon. <laughs> Now, our play, Spawn of the North, I mean, Too Hot to Handle, <laughs> will go on immediately after the next number. Are you ready, Maestro? Yeah, but I don't like the idea of being cooped up in an office. Isn't there any other part for me? Yes, Phil, if you can stand a crank in your ear, you can be a camera. <laughs> now, go ahead and play. Hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Are you going in the jungle tonight to visit the cannibals? Yes, I am. Why? Well, I'll be seeing you. Yum, yum. <laughs> Fine cannibal. I hope I give him indigestion. <laughs> that, uh, that was Jeepers Creepers, played by Colonel Corn and his orchestra. <laughs> what a leader. His baton says ever sharp on it. You know, Phil, you'd think you could buy a real baton with what I pay you. Just about. <laughs> Phil, I could answer that remark, but you wouldn't appreciate it. And now, folks, we will proceed with our play, Too Hot to Handle or Sleepy Time Down South Africa. <laughs> the opening scene is the office of the Union Newsreel Company, New York City. As the curtain rises, we find the editor impatiently awaiting the arrival of his ace cameraman, Clark Benny, who needs no introduction. <laughs> curtain. Music. Hello? Union Newsreel Company? Mr. Benny? Well, he's not here. He's in China. Yes, I'll tell him when he gets back. Oh, Miss... Uh, Miss Stewart, who was that calling Benny? His tailor, Barbara Whitney. Oh. Well, Clark better get here today. I sent him to China five weeks ago to get some war pictures. We need him right away. Here he comes now. Oh, hiya, chief old boy. How's the old kid? Gee, it's good to be back. It's about time you got here. Have you got the pictures with you? Yes, sir, and I got some swell stuff. Boy, did I have a time. There. Well, tell me. How did you find things in China? China? <laughs> That's what on me. I thought you sent me to Chinatown. <laughs> well, well. Chinatown? Why, you blundering idiot, you're fired. Now, calm down, Chief. You don't want to fire me. Well, I'm the best cameraman in the business, and you know it. You call yourself a cameraman. Yeah. Why, you were on the SS Roxbury when it sank last year, and you didn't even get a shot of it. Well, naturally. The captain hollered women and children first, and I felt young. <laughs> Anyway, if you'd give me a little more dough, I could do better work. More dough? Yeah. My camera's been in the hot shop so much, the soundtrack is coming out in dialect. <laughs> what do you expect, anyway? I've had enough of your alibis, Clark. You're through. Oh, you can't fire me, Chief. Imagine how my wife and kitties will feel. Yeah, I haven't got any wife and kitties. That's why I said imagine. <laughs> Anyway, Chief, I've got an idea that'll give us the greatest scoop of the year. What is it? You know, I just ran into Myrna Livingston, the famous flyer. You know, the girl whose brother was lost in the jungles of Africa four years ago? Yeah, I remember. Now, here's the dope, Chief. She knows exactly where her brother is. Now, if you let me go down there and save him and get pictures of the rescue, it'll make news real history. What do you say? Oh, you couldn't find her, brother. You haven't got one chance in a million. Go on, that's what you said when I bought that ticket on the Irish street stage. Well, you didn't win, did you? No, but I turned green. <laughs> Hello, Chief. Myrna will be here in a few minutes. I don't want to disappoint her. Come on, what do you say? It's a deal, but remember, this is your last chance. Thanks, boss. You'll never regret it. Hmm, here she comes now. Hello, Myrna. Hello, Clark. That's Clark. <laughs> now, listen, Myrna. I got great news for you. The Chief is going to let us take that trip to Africa and save your brother. Isn't that great? My brother? Yes, your brother. Ignaz Livingston. Remember? Oh, yes, Ignaz. Well, why can't you go alone? You've got to come with me. Your brother's been there four years. I won't be able to tell him from a cannibal. We couldn't do that at home. <laughs> oh, come on, Myrna, come on. It'll be a great experience. But, Clark, what about clothes? I don't know what to wear in Africa. All you need is a ring in your nose and that hat. <laughs> come on, let's go. Okay. Wait a minute. I'm not taking any chances this time. I'm going with you. Hooray, attaboy, Chief. Hey, Myrna, where's your airplane? On oh, my charm bracelet. Not that one. <laughs> Where's the real one? The one that goes up in the air. It's in the elevator rehearsing. Good. Come on, Chief. Come on, Myrna. Come on, Chief. Come on, Myrna. We're off to Africa. Two weeks later, Clark, Myrna, and Fathead land in Africa. 
As we picked them up, they'd been fighting their way through the jungle for several days and have almost reached their destination. Gee, I'm tired. I didn't think it was going to be like this. Three days of walking through this infernal jungle. Yeah, me with snowshoes on. <laughs> That's your fault. My fault? What am I, a weather vane? See, it's dangerous, too, with all those wild animals prowling around. Oh, boy, am I hot. Well, you ought to be hot. What's the idea of wearing a fur coat? Can I help it if this lion wants to play piggyback? <laughs> Get off! Hmm, this wouldn't happen if it wasn't an MGM picture. Hmm. Yeah, I hope we get there pretty soon. Hey, listen to that. Careful, there must be snakes. Could be our audience, you know. <laughs> Quiet, Myrna. Hey, Fathead, what'd you do with the movie camera? Where is it? You know that hippopotamus we passed a little while ago? Yes. Well, he yawned. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I'm here to get pictures and no camera. Whoop! Darn, those gazelles are always running between my legs. <laughs> oh, Clark, look, look. What's the matter? Look, there's my brother Ignaz. Where? Right over there. That's a baboon. <laughs> oh, look at him. Isn't he cute? Hello, baboon. Hello, Uncle Jack. <laughs> Uncle Jack, now that's just a wild guess. Oh, yeah? How's everybody in Waukegan? <laughs> oh, a wise guy, eh? Let's get out of here. Relative. That baboon don't look a bit like me, does he, Mary? He would if he chased. Oh, you've been reading Darwin. Hey, hey listen to that. This is those tom -toms. We must be almost there. What's that right ahead of us? A village. There's a whole tribe of natives. Gee, that bear's looking. Yeah. Here comes one of them this way. Now, that's nonchalant. Let me do the talking. I can speak their language. Hello there. Goomba. <laughs> I'll find out where Ignaz is. Ooba, gooba, lolly, mono, Ignaz? Ignaz, gooba, bula, kiki, floy, floy. <laughs> Hear that? We're just in time. Ignaz is still alive. I'll find out where he is. Uba gooba, lomo chi chi, Ignaz. Walla kiki zuba frigidaire. Frigidaire? What does he mean? They're keeping your brother on ice. Why are they keeping him on ice? So he won't be too hot to handle. <laughs> Thanks, nephew. Hey. Here they go again. Look! Look, the natives are coming towards us. Yes, and they're carrying a white man on their shoulders. You're right. That's my brother. We must save him. Do something, Clark. Do something. Take it easy, Myrna. Don't get hysterical. I'll talk to the chief of the tribe. I think that's it in front. Paul! Oh. Me wanna talk up. Are you the chief? Goomba! Gooba, gooba. Zama Powwow Chiki Ulamona Kalamuga? Would you mind saying that again? <laughs> oh, he talks English. Yes, I went to college, but I came back to the jungle to govern my people. Good, then we can talk. Now listen to me. The white man you are holding prisoner is this girl's brother. And I want you to release him immediately. Oh, no, we're going to eat him. Eat him? <laughs> then you're still a cannibal. What good does it do you to go to college? I use a knife and fork now. <laughs> I'll get this, you. We came here to rescue that white man, and he's going back with us. Sorry, old man, but he's on the menu for tonight. Oh, <laughs> you can't do that. Well, then at least, at least let us talk to him. Oh, please, please. After all, he's my brother. All right, but make it snappy. Come on, Myrna. There he is. Gee, he looks weak. His face is so pale and thin. Oh, brother. Brother. Who is it? Ignaz. Ignaz. It's your sister, Myrna. Gee, I'm glad you folks got here. It's been terrible. What happened? What did they do to you? Well, after my plane cracked up, they grabbed me and then they privacy seated right in my sulfur center talk to them. Oh. <laughs> and they pulled the center and they grabbed me right in my sulfur oh. and the privacy seated rape was right to the sulfur oh. center. 
Oh, it was ghastly. <laughs> I could imagine. Why, the brutes. What else did they do? You haven't heard the worst. Last night they came here, and they took my pharmacy right into my center oh. pocket. <laughs> and you know that wrong with it? Yes. yes. Well, the whole pharmacy was taken right out of the package. <laughs> And the please of these, oh, my heart is all in the whole place. Oh, well, did they rouse friends? Did you, did you, did They certainly did. That's a lie. You keep out of this, Chief. I've had enough from you. Oh, yeah? Wait till I get you in a casserole. I'm not afraid of you. Now, come on, fathead. Let's grab Myrna's brother and go. Mm. They're starting again. Stop that noise. Quiet. My people are getting ready for the dance of death. The dance of death. Listen. Full of mud. cha cha <laughs> little overtime, so good night, folks. The Jell-O program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. For now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who, after lying flat on his back for three days with a bad cold, <coughs> threw off the covers and said, good heavens, it's Sunday. The show must go on. Them was my words, exactly. So now we bring you that heroic personality, that rugged thespian, that grand old trooper, Jack Benny. Thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny, that red-nosed sluggy with a sniff, sniff. <laughs> And, Don, just as you say, I deserve a lot of credit for coming down here tonight. No matter how an actor feels, his first duty is to his public. Oh, you're right, Jack, and I'm mighty proud of you. Why, Don, I've always been like that. I remember one time when I was playing Vaudeville in Peoria, Illinois. And even though I had hay fever and I was following the Golden Rod Trio, <laughs> I went on and did that show just the same. <laughs> Well, that was a real test, Jack. But no kidding, Don. For the last three days, I've been a pretty sick boy. And if it hadn't been for my physician, Dr. Jerome Schmink, I doubt that I'd be here today. Dr. Schmink? Why, Jack, I know him, but he's not a physician. He's a chiropodist. A chiropodist? Yes. Oh, well, that explains it. Explains what? Well, the minute he came into my room, he said, Open your mouth, say ah, and take off your shoes. <laughs> Now I understand. Well, how was he, Jack? Did he take good care of your cold? Well, Don, my cold isn't completely cured, but my corns feel wonderful. <laughs> anyway, I should have known he was a foot doctor. When he went to take my pulse, he had his watch in one hand and my ankle in the other. <laughs> well, I guess we all made mistakes. Hello, hero. How's the brave little soldier tonight? <laughs> well, I wouldn't joke about it, Phil. My illness was much more serious than you think. It was, huh? Yes. Yeah. My doctor told me that if my cold was one germ worse, I'd have found out if angels have dirty faces. <laughs> you mean you'd have found out if the devil was a sissy? Listen, Phil, if you were as sick as I was, you wouldn't be clowning about it tonight, believe me. Well, I know you were sick. I came to visit you, didn't I? Sure you did. You knew I had a cold, so you figured I'd have a bottle of whiskey around. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, and that was some stuff you had, too. Wow. Yeah, what was the matter with it? I took one drink and my inlays did the Lambeth Walk. <laughs> well, it serves you right. And incidentally, Phil, I want to thank you very much for the lovely gift you sent me. That was sweet. Yeah, wasn't it? What was it, Jack? Well, I happened to tell Phil I was sick as a dog and he sent me a can of kennel ration. <laughs> <laughs> kennel ration? Yeah, I didn't mind that so much, but Rochester made me an omelet out of it. <laughs> Oh, hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. Is your cold better? Not much, Kenny. But as weak as I was today, I jumped out of bed, grabbed a taxi cab, and rushed down here to the studio. And why did I do it? I don't know. Is it because you're a ham? <laughs> no, and don't be so fresh. And another thing, Kenny, at least you could have come to see me while I was sick. Well, yeah, Kenny, you should have gone there just for laughs. What laugh? Now, Phil. When I went up to see Jack, he was wearing a nightgown. A nightgown? <laughs> well, certainly I was wearing a nightgown. It creeps up around my neck where my cold is and keeps me warm. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. You should have seen it, fellas. He looked like old Mother Hubbard. 
<laughs> well, one more crack out of you, and I'll go to the cupboard and tear up your option. <laughs> I was talking to Kenny, so you keep out of it. Oh, boy. I bet you were a riot in your nightgown. Yeah, Kenny, if you'll come out of your hysterics for a minute, I'd like to ask you who won that Thanksgiving turkey you were selling tickets on last week. Oh, that? Yeah. Oh, a fellow by the name of Baker. Kenneth L. Baker. <laughs> I see. Just a racket, huh? You sold me a ticket and dipped me out of 50 cents. You know what that means? Yes, Barnum was right. Hmm. <laughs> Tomorrow, when you get your check, think of Barnum. <laughs> you know, Kenny, I'm really surprised, you of all people. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. How do you feel? Mary, you can't possibly realize what an effort it was for me to come to work today. I was in a very critical condition. Well, it's your own fault, Jack. Here you were sick in bed for three days, and you wouldn't even hire a nurse. Now, wait a minute, Mary. I had a nurse, and you know it. Fine nurse. Well. All you did was paint a red cross on Rochester's coat. <laughs> Mary, I would have had a regular nurse, but I just couldn't find the right one. Well, of course you couldn't. What was wrong, Mary? Jack wanted a Cuban girl so he could get free rumba lessons. <laughs> oh, Mary, don't try to get laughs out of my illness. See, I hardly slept a wink all week. Well, how could you with all those silver dollars in your mattress? <laughs> well, you can all kid about my sickness, but it was lucky for me that Rochester knows something about medicine. He was the only one who thought of putting a mustard plaster on my chest. Is it still there? Yeah. Say, Jack, did he save your chest before he put the plaster on? No, he didn't. Why? Oh, brother, I hope I'm there for the unveiling. <laughs> <laughs> Say, that's right. Darn that, Rochester. Now, how am I going to get this mustard plaster off? Oh, well, I'll help you, Jack. It'll only take a minute. No, no, not now, Jack. Oh, I've done this a lot of times. Now, uh, unbutton your shirt. Well... Well, okay. It might hurt a little, Jack. Oh, go ahead, Don. I can take it. You're dealing with a he-man. He-man? Hey, Mary, you want to hear something? What? When I went over to see Jack, he was wearing a nightgown. I know. He borrowed it from me. <laughs> now, Mary, you promised you wouldn't say a word about it. No kidding, Mary. Was that really your nightgown? Now, listen. Sure. Didn't you see the letters ML on it? Mary Livingston. Well, I'll be darned. Jack told me that stood for man's lingerie. <laughs> Oh, keep quiet, you two. I want to get this mustard plaster off. Go ahead, Don. Okay. Now, steady, Jack. Yeah. Steady. Ooh. Ooh, gee. Oh! Ooh. Take it easy, Don. Gee, this is more fun than Ocean Park. <laughs> Wait a minute, Don. Better not monkey with it. Say, Jack, let me try it. I can do it so you won't even feel. Oh, no, you don't, Phil. Come on, Jack. Now, it's not going to hurt a bit. Uh, come in. Well, all right, Phil. But if I feel one thing... <laughs> There you are. It didn't hurt a bit. Didn't hurt? Why, you idiot, you might have killed me. You better say, Kenny, go ahead. Okay. Oh, look at me. There isn't a hair on my chest. The tattooed lady has gone, too. It is. Darn you, Harris, all have to be redecorated. Oh! That, that was My Reverie, sung by Kenny Baker. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Ooh, my chest still hurts. Darn you, Phil. And now, ladies and gentlemen, before introducing our play, I would like to announce that next Sunday night we are going to do our broadcast from Radio City, New York. And the whole gang of us are going to be there. And... <coughs> Aren't we, fellas? We are. I don't know about you. <laughs> oh, I'll be there. Gee, it's going to be nice to see New York again. Jack, if you've got such a bad cold, what are you going to New York for? I understand they're having pretty bad snowstorms back there. Makes no difference, Don. I've got to be there next week. Well, what's all the rush about? What's so important? There's a sale at Macy's. <laughs> That's not the only reason I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an appointment with a big New York producer. You know, uh, fellas, you know, the Shakespearean cycle is on again in New York. And, um, no, really, and this producer, he wants me to appear in Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet? Yes. You couldn't be a flower pot on the balcony. <laughs> well, Phil, whether you like it or not, that's the play I'll probably do on Broadway. And I'm quite positive I'm going to be Romeo. It's my nighttime. You could be Juliet. <laughs> All right. You wait till next week. You'll see. And now, folks... Oh, boy, New York! Say, I haven't been there in two years. Two years, huh? Yeah. 
See, I bet the Empire State Building is wearing long pants now. Yes, Kenny, and the Chrysler Building just had puffs. <laughs> and now, folks, we must go on with our play. This being the climax of the football season, tonight we will bring you our annual drama of the gridiron entitled Hold That Line. For one moment, please. <laughs> Now, uh, once again, once again, I will play the part of Flash Benny, the famous football coach. Kenny Baker will be right end, Bill Harris left end, and Don Wilson will be the backfield. Now, hold on a minute, Jack. Uh, hold on, Jack. When the whistle blows, the backfield has to spread out. Well, you've been doing all right up to now. <laughs> Now, uh, let me see. Uh, say, Jack, am I going to be in the football play? Yes, Mary, you're going to be a beautiful co-ed watching the game way up in the grandstand. Oh, no, I want to be down on the field where the dialogue is. <laughs> well, I don't know, Mary. We let you in the game last year, and every time the players went in the huddle, they came out with lipstick on. <laughs> now, you can't play. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, you got a fat chance of winning the game without Butch Livingston. Oh, all right, Butch, but if you're going to play, take off that silly hat. <laughs> Lest the cheering section give you the Bronx salute. <laughs> you ought to see this one, folks. It looks like a plate of board. <laughs> Stephen got two potatoes. In it. <laughs> and now, folks, while we all get into our uniforms, uh, Phil Harris and his uneducated collegians will play. Wait a minute, I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is your nurse talking. <laughs> oh, hello, Rochester, what do you want? Well, I was a little worried, so I thought I'd call him and see how you're feeling. Well, that's very thoughtful, Rochester, I'm feeling fine. You are? Mama! <laughs> well, what's the matter? What are you my mind about? Oh, nothing, see you later, boy. Now, wait a minute. Why were you surprised when I told you I was feeling fine? Well... Well, what? You know that cough medicine I've been giving you all week? Yes, what about it? You ain't never going to have dandruff in your stomach. <laughs> Good heavens, Rochester, did you give me that hair tonic? I told you a thousand times to read the label. I told you a thousand times I can't read. <laughs> Well, you should get glasses. That ain't going to help any. <laughs> well, never mind that. I'll see you tonight. So long. So long, boy. Hey, wait a minute. You know that mustard plaster you put on me this morning? Yeah. Well, I had an awful time getting it off. Why didn't you shave my chest first? Shave you? Yes. Look, boss, I don't mind being a butler, a chauffeur, and a nurse, yeah. but when I get a raise in my hand, it's for defensive purposes only. <laughs> take this up with you tonight. Goodbye. Oh, wait a minute, boss. Am I going to New York with you? Yes, Rochester, you're going. Hold everything, Harlem. Here comes your son, Kim Dawn Blossom. <laughs> All right, go get excited. Goodbye. How do you like that, fella? Isn't that awful? I've been drinking hair tonic all week. Well, that won't hurt you. Look at my guitar player. He's the picture of hell. <laughs> yes, but if you ever take that stool out from under him, watch out. <laughs> go ahead and play, Phil. We've got a long sketch to do. That was Girlfriend of the Whirling Dervish, played by a boyfriend of anyone who's got a girlfriend. <laughs> and now for our football play, Hold That Line. The scene is Flatfoot College, located in the thriving little town of Toboggan Slide, Indiana. <laughs> the first half has just ended in the annual game with Meatball Tech. The coach is giving his team a pep talk in the locker room. Curtain, the usual. Now, listen, men. In this last half, we got to get in there and fight. Don't be discouraged. Why, that other team are a bunch of spineless jellyfish. Why, they're yellow. Yeah, but we're black and blue. <laughs> oh, let's not get technicolor. <laughs> now, listen, men. 
We've never won a game from Meatball Tech, but today it's a cinch. What do you mean a cinch? The score's 65 to nothing in their face. <laughs> well, we're still young, aren't we? <laughs> How we can win this game you guys will put a little pep into it. Especially you, Harris. In the second quarter, you had a marvelous chance for a touchdown, and you stopped right in the middle of the play to comb your hair. What was the idea? Well, I want to look good in the newsreel. <laughs> oh, you do, eh? And incidentally, I hate show-offs. The next time you get the ball, run with it. Don't truck on down. Well, I got rid of <laughs> Never mind. And you, Wilson. Oh, I'm sorry about that one fumble, Coach. One fumble? I thought you were playing drop the handkerchief. <laughs> And you, Bush. What is it, Coach? You're a great help, too. In the last play, you were penalized 15 yards for holding. Well, he was handsome. <laughs> handsome, eh? I wouldn't care if he was Clark Gable. But we're playing football. Gee whiz, Coach. I'm doing the best I can. I'll say you are. We haven't played a team this fall that you haven't given your phone number to. Well, it's a long winter. <laughs> Fine bunch of athletes. Hey, Coach. What do you want, Baker? You remember when I was running past the 40-yard line and I dropped the ball? Yes. Then I picked it up and dropped it again? Yes. And then I picked it up? Yes. And then I dropped it again? Well, what about it? Wasn't that aggravating? (laughs) It certainly was. And incidentally, Baker... What's the idea of playing football in a sailor suit? I thought it might rain. Oh. Well, I'm not taking any chances in the second half. I'm going in the game myself. Hooray! Okay, man. Now, let's get out in the field and give them a real game. Wait a minute. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Take it, Bush. Okay. Maybe it's an offer to play Notre Dame. Oh, Jack, this wire's from New York. It's from the Acme Hotel on 14th Street. Hmm, 14th <laughs> What does it say? It says, uh, can offer you excellent accommodations during your stay in New York. Rate $6 a week. Bath on every floor. Just follow the arrow. <laughs> well. Uh, can give you a lovely room overlooking a Tomcat. <laughs> Comcast. Above rate includes a continental breakfast consisting of a New England boiled dinner. <laughs> oh, I see. Signed, anxious. <laughs> mm, that sounds attractive. Six dollars a week. Uh, Bob, but it's really too far from everything. You know? Hey, Coach, what about the football game? That's right. Now remember, men, let's get out in that field and fight. <laughs> we'll win this game or my name ain't Flash Benny. <laughs> Here we are, folks. The score is 65 to nothing, and the second half is about to begin. The ball is already on the field, and here comes Flash Benny and his Flatfoot team. <laughs> Flatfoot is going to kick off the meatball, and the crowd is on pins and needles. Don't they have seats here? Shut up. <laughs> and there's the whistle. They're lining up. Flash Benny is about to kick off. On your toes, men. He's running toward the ball, and there's the kick. <laughs> Got to blow it up. <laughs> Give me another ball, fellas. Here's the watermelon, Coach. I don't want that. We haven't used a watermelon since we played Alabama. <laughs> hey, Wilson, give me that ball you've got. Oh, no, it's mine, and I want to kick it. <laughs> All right, you big baby. I hope you stub your toe. Baker, you hold the ball for the kick. Okay. There they go, folks. A new ball is being held in place by Baker. Big boy Wilson is about to kick off. And here comes the kick. What a kick! See, that ball looks awfully big. That's me! Whee! <laughs> Hemi, come down here! <laughs> Wilson missed the ball and kicked Baker. Meatball receives Baker on their own 40 yard line. <laughs> That's your ball, Wilson. What's this? It's a fumble, and Flatfoot recovers the ball. <laughs> Take it away and see you. All right, fellas, we got the ball. Now, here's our chance to pay off the mortgage and get our dean back from the finance company. Let him stay there. That's a fine spirit. Now, listen, Wilson. When the ball is snapped to me, I'll throw it to Harris, 
He'll pass it to you, and instead of going through center, you run around your own end. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You better take lunch. It'll be a long trip. <laughs> Never mind that. We'll try this play for a touchdown. Now get in there, Harris, and give those signals. I'm sorry, Coach. I forgot them. Forgot the signals? So did I. Hmm, fine thing. What do we do now? Let's change partners and dance. <laughs> no, that won't do. I know. I'll call the signals myself. Come on, men. This is our one big chance. <laughs> they come out of the huddle. They're lining up now. Life Benny is a quarter. All right, men. Signals. One for the money, two for the show. <laughs> I'll take the ball, and away we go. Benny has the ball. He passes it to Wilson. Wilson fumbles it, and Benny recovers, and there goes Benny down the field. What a burst of speed. Look at him. Wow. <laughs> oh, my chest. Wow, can that boy run. Look at him go. 20 yards, 30 yards, 40 yards. And here comes Steve Biscuit. night at the same time, broadcasting from Radio City, New York. Say, Jack, you better buy some galoshes. You... <laughs> you better buy some galoshes. You know it's snowing in New York. Oh, I won't need them. I'll have Rochester carry me piggyback. Good night, folks. <laughs> The Jell-O Program, coming to you from Radio City, New York, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome to New York that little ray of California sunshine. That shivering, quivering, ice-kissed comedian, Jack Benny. Thank you. Hello again. This is Jack Benny coming to you through a suit of long underwear. And, Don, it's sure great to be back in New York again, but, boy, this cold weather is really too much for me. Oh, Jack, I'll admit it has been pretty cold, but it's certainly much warmer today. I know that, Don, but I defrost very slowly. <laughs> you know, coming from California, my blood happens to be thin. What there is of it. I can hardly stand it. I know how you feel, Jack. After the sun goes down, it does get pretty frigid. Frigid? Why, Don, the other night I slept under six blankets. I felt like the bottom wheat cake. <laughs> but cold or no cold, it's good to be back in old Manhattan. Huh? Well, tell me, Jack, uh, you've been in town now since Thursday. What have you been doing with yourself? Oh, I've had a lot of fun, Don. I saw some shows, went to a couple of nightclubs, and last night I was invited over to Fred Allen's apartment for dinner. Oh, Fred Allen, huh? Yeah, he and I are pretty good friends now. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Has uh, Fred got a nice apartment? Oh, how could I tell, Don, with all that laundry hanging in the living room? <laughs> but, Don, you should have seen the meal he put on. Now, you know me, Don. I mean, you know, now, I don't, I don't want to sound catty. But after all, how often do I come to New York? Maybe once a year. Well? Well, you think he could have had sardines some other night. <laughs> sardines? Yeah, I wouldn't have liked him if he'd opened them with the key to the city. <laughs> oh, really? I got even with him, though. When I left, I took three spoons back to the automat. <laughs> well, he finds that out. Huh? Gee, it doesn't seem possible that Fred would invite you to dinner and serve that kind of a meal. Well, he did. And wait a minute. Here's the payoff. No, the only ones there were Fred, Portland, Mary, and myself. And when we got through eating, Fred asked me to get up and make an after-dinner speech. 
And after dinner speech, what was that for? Well, he was hoping I'd say something that he could use on his program next Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> you know. Oh, I get it. I fooled him, though. I got up and recited the Gettysburg Address in French. <laughs> Let him use that. Anyway, Fred and I are friends now. I'm not going to start running him down. Running him down? What have you been doing up till now? Well, Oh, it's you, Phil. Well, welcome to New York. <laughs> That's it. Keep bowing. Slash those curly teeth. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, Phil, I was wondering if you'd show up tonight. I haven't seen you since we got in town Thursday. Where are you living? At the Astor Bar. <laughs> The Astor Bar. Well, for goodness sake, why didn't you take a room in the hotel upstairs? Funny, the bartender asked me that when I was shaving this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can imagine the kind of time you've been having. Say, Phil, I was just looking over the boys in the orchestra. This, uh, this isn't your regular band, is it? No, Jack, these are local boys. What do you think of them? They're a fine bunch. They look like you picked them up at a rummage sale. <laughs> What if I did? Their instruments are new. Oh, yeah. Well, that's something, yes. But I can't understand why you didn't bring your regular band along. I offered to pay their expenses. Their expenses? That's rich. Well, I did. Sure you did. I got 14 musicians, and you wanted to put them in seven upper berths. <laughs> well, the berths were opposite each other. They could have slept crossways. <laughs> no, the train was crowded. Crowded? Yeah, I had to share my berth with an Indian that got on at Albuquerque. <laughs> Kept me up all night trying to sell me a blanket. Happened to snore once or twice. He tried to scalp me. I never <laughs> what a trip, huh? Hello, Jack. Here's your little glamour girl. Oh, hello, Mary. How are you? Uh, that's it, Mary. Keep bowing. Show your silly hat. Uh, how do you like this New York weather, Mary? What a change. Burp, it's cold. Burp? That's burp. <laughs> Burp. Hello, Don. Hello, Mary. Have you been having a good time since we got here? Oh, swell, Don. Gee, I love winter in New York. I've been taking long walks in Central Park every day. Walking in the park with all this snow? Are you crazy? It's almost gone now, Jack. Well, maybe it is, but I saw a picture of Mayor LaGuardia in front of the city hall last week, and the snow was way up to his ears. <laughs> oh, how high is that? <laughs> <laughs> Plenty high. He was standing on Grover Whalen. <laughs> Now, that's silly. What was Grover Whalen doing under the snow? He was keeping his gardenia fresh. <laughs> well. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Mary. I'd have never thought of that. Well, anyway, you can all have this winter weather. Every time I go out of the hotel, I just about freeze. Well, no wonder you came from California without an overcoat. Why don't you buy one? Oh, we're only going to be here a couple of weeks, say. I spent 50 or $60, you know. That's right. You can get a can of Sterno for a dime. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Mary, if you don't stop ribbing me, I'll tear into that hat you're wearing tonight. You ought to see this one, folks. I think it's cute. Yeah, it sure <laughs> is. Looks like something a bride would bake. <laughs> That's what the girl in the store said. Well, she was sure clicking. <laughs> Say, Phil, we got a long show to do. How about a number? Huh? Okay, Jackson. Uh, okay. Now, hold it a minute. Come in. Oh, how do you do? Hello, Jack. Are you busy? Well, miss, right now I'm... Oh, for heaven's sake, I'll be doggone Rosie Nicholson. That's me. Well, gee whiz. Come in. What a surprise. Hey, fellas, uh, this is Rosie Nicholson, a girl I used to go with when I lived here. How do you do? Hiya, Rosie. <laughs> Mary, Mary, this is an old sweetheart of mine. Oh, yeah? Well, well, Rosie, I... <laughs> Rosie, I haven't seen you in years. I knew you were in town, Jack, so I just thought I'd come up and say hello. Well, I'm glad you did. You're looking great. Uh, but, Rosie, uh, you've gained a little weight, haven't you? Yeah, now I go with a guy that feeds me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, so the same sense of humor, but you haven't, you haven't changed, though, Rosie. Really, you're a blonde now, and you were a blonde when I met you. That's right. Yeah. A lot of peroxide has gone over the dam since then. <laughs> Miss Livingstone, please. <laughs> Gosh, after all these years, it's sure good to see you again. Say, Rosie, are you married yet? No, but I'm still in there punching. <laughs> That's the spirit, gal. Don't give up. Say, will you ever forget the fun we used to have? Do you know how crazy I used to be about you? Yeah. Remember the time you gave me a lock of your hair? <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> Don't you wish you had it now? <laughs> 
talking still, Mary. We're reminiscing. Say, Rosie, let's sit down and talk over old times. Huh? All right, Jack. Play, Phil. Hey, Rosie, will you ever forget the time you got fired from the delicatessen for giving me extra pickles? Uh-huh. <laughs> that was Pocket Full of Dreams, played by Phil Harris and his Van Steeden Orchestra. And now, folks... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kenny, how do you... How do you like this kind of weather? It's a little different from Glendale, isn't it? Huh? I'll say it is. And you know, Jack, this is the first time I've ever seen snow. Well, well, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? It tastes good, too. Mm. <laughs> See, but fo- snow is funny stuff. Hmm? Say, Jack, I wonder where it comes from. Well, it's very simple, Kenny. Uh, snow is fundamentally rain. But due to atmospheric conditions... The moisture in the clouds condenses into minute crystals. And these tiny particles fall to the earth in dainty white flakes. Well, shut my mouth. <laughs> well, it serves me right for even attempting an explanation. Now, why don't you tell him about the stork? <laughs> no, keep still. He asked me a question and I answered it. I know, but ever since you bought that encyclopedia, you've been showing off. I have not. You have, too. The other day, I just asked you what time it was, and you told me how they make watches. Oh, forget it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as I started to announce, we are going to present an original... Is that? Yes. Is that Kenny Baker, your tenor singer? Oh, yes, Rosie. Oh, Kenny, this is Miss Nicholson, the girl I used to go with. Gee. Yeah. Do you live in New York, Miss Nicholson? Yes, I do. Are you a siren? Kenny! <laughs> I have to excuse him, Rosie. He's been reading the wrong kind of magazine. And now, folks, as I started to announce, Kenny, stand still and stop scratching. Tonight, we are going to present an original detective thriller entitled Murder in the Movies. Now, in this gripping drama, Phil Harris will be sergeant of police. Don Wilson will be lieutenant. And I will be the captain. We knew that. <laughs> Phil, if you're not happy here, I can arrange a taffy pull with your contact. <laughs> You see, they'd like that. <laughs> now, let's see. Well, I think that Stop before... Stop arguing, Phil. Jack should be police captain and nobody else. Why should he be? Just give me one reason. I'll give you two. He's got flat feet. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mary. My feet are not flat. Go on. Your yeah. footprints on the beach have fooled many a duck hunter. <laughs> well, I can't help that. Now, let's see. Well, Jack, is it really true that you purposely flattened your feet the day the United States entered the World War? No, Don. The World War had nothing to do with it. It was an accident. An accident? How could you accidentally flatten your feet? Because I was hanging out of a window at the time, and I was so surprised at the war news that I dropped. That's ridiculous. Why were you hanging out of a window? Because we were a large family and shut up. Let me ask you something, Phil. Where were you during the World War? I was in kindergarten. Kindergarten? (laughs) What are you laughing at? I'll bet he had a flask in his rompers. (laughs) You said it. Any guy that'll put on rompers just to avoid being shot, I have no sympathy for. Now, getting back to our play, I will be the captain, and Kenny, you work in a moving picture theater, so you're a ticket taker. Okay. Can I wear my new galoshes? No, Kenny, and incidentally, you're not supposed to wear galoshes indoors, so take them right off. What, and go barefooted? (laughs) Barefooted? Kenny, you mean to tell me you haven't got shoes under those galoshes? What do you think I am, a sissy? (laughs) Well, you've got a high voice, if that's what you mean. (laughs) Now, Mary, you're going to work in the same moving picture theater. You're a cashier. That's me, short-change Livingston. Well, there'll be none of that. And now, folks, our play, Murder in the Movies, will go on immediately after Kenny's song. Are you ready, Kenny? Yeah. Well, go ahead. And stop that scratching. Are you wearing long underwear or have you been to the flea circus? Both. Oh, you poor kid. See? That was Play It With a Kiss, sung by Kenny Baker. And, Kenny, that was simply marvelous. Thanks, Jack. Your kindness is exceeded only by your good looks. Well, well, hey, where did that come from? And now, folks, before somebody says something... He couldn't let that line go by without making a face at me. 
And now, folks, we will proceed with our original dramatic thriller entitled Murder at the Movies, or Please Don't Talk About Me When I'm Gone. The scene opens at police headquarters where we find Captain O'Benny and his assistants, Lieutenant Wilson and Sergeant Harris. Curtain. Music. Now listen, men. Things are going from bad to worse. The chief just called me up and said we'd better clean up the crooks in this district or else. Oh, we're doing all right. Doing all right. Now listen, Harris. You were on duty in Central Park last night when two men stole an elephant from the zoo. And you let them get away with it. Well, they told me they were Barnum and Bailey. I wouldn't care if they were Damon and Pythia. <laughs> Which they probably were. Well, I'm sorry, Chief. Sorry. And you, Wilson, you're a fine-looking policeman. Why are you wearing your bags on the seat of your pants? The patch fell off. Oh. Well, listen, fellas, I want action around here. Action. I'll, I'll fill this jail if I have to serve a dollar dinner. <laughs> That's what. I'll take it. Hello, police headquarters. I mean, hello, police headquarters. Hello, Cap. This is Mamie Livingston, cashier at the Bijou Theater. Oh, hello, Mamie. How's tricks? Fine. She just had pups. I don't mean that. What did you call me up for? Better get over here right away, Cap. A fellow was just murdered right in front of my box office. She was cute. Murder day? Eh? How do you know he's dead? He doesn't wait back. I see. Well, tell me, when did this murder happen? Three hours ago. Three hours? Why didn't you call me before? I was selling a ticket to a Scotchman. Oh. <laughs> well, hold everything, Mamie. We'll be right over. What's up, Cap? Plenty. There's been a murder in front of the Bijou Theater. We'd better get over there at once. Right with you, Cap. Now, this may be dangerous, so take everything you need. Oh, Harris, where's your bulletproof vest? At the cleaners. I'm going to a party tonight. Oh. Well, it's lucky you got an excuse. Come on, man. Let's go. <laughs> He is cold out tonight. Sure, it's cold. You ought to buy an overcoat. Oh, I can stand it. There's the police car. Let's go. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Murder at the Bijou Theater. Also, free dishes. That is all. Step on it, Wilson. I've almost got a set. Say, Cap, can we stop by Joe's pawn shop for a minute? What for? I want to pick up my gun. We haven't got time for that. Come on, give her the gas, Wilson. Okay. Here's the place, fellas. All right, break it up, men. Now stand back, everybody. There's the body, Cap. Yeah. Hmm. Help me lift him up, fellas. I'll take his overcoat for evidence. <laughs> evidence? Shut up. Now let's see. Well, well, he was shot right through the little finger. Little finger? How could that kill him? He was scratching his head at the time. <laughs> There's Mamie in the box office. I'll get the load down from her. Hello, Mamie. Hello, Cap. I'm glad you got here. Now, listen, Mamie. Now, tell me all you know about this murder. Well, Cap, I was sitting here selling tickets. When all of a sudden... How many, please? Two on the balcony. Thank you. All right, Mamie. All right. What happened? Well, anyway, I heard a shot. And all of a sudden... How many, please? Six. I want to lie down. <laughs> now, come on, Mamie. i got to get the facts. What did the murderer look like? What is the color of his hair? I don't know. He had a hat on. Well, his eyes, then. His eyes. What color were his eyes? He had dark glasses on. Oh, well, what about his face? What did his face look like? A veal cutlet. <laughs> You're trying to shield him. Now, where did he go? Well, as soon as he fired the shot, he ran into the theater. That's what I wanted to know. Come on, boys. We'll go in after him. Where were you, Cap? There's the doorman. Hey, buddy. Did a man come in here a few minutes ago with a gun in his hand? Yes, sir, he did. Was the gun smoking? Yes, so I made him sit in the loges. <laughs> Let's go in, man. This is a cinch. Oh, I'm sorry, mister, but you fellows will have to have tickets. Tickets? We're the police and we're after a criminal. Here, look at our badges. They're very pretty, but you've got to have tickets. <laughs> oh, all right. Hey, Wilson, buy three tickets. Okay. Now, see here, buddy. Did you get a good look at the murderer? Yes. He had purple hair, yellow eyes, and light green complexion. Now, that's ridiculous. How could he look like that? It could have been something I ate, you know. <laughs> oh, you're no help. Here are the tickets, Cap. Here you are, buddy. Hold your steps, please. <laughs> now, come on, man. The kid told us he went upstairs. Follow me. 
Okay, men. Here are the losers. Now, let's take it easy. We got them cornered now. Doves, please. Oh, here you are. I'm sorry, sir, but these tickets are for the main floor. Now, look here, buddy. We're the law. We're after a desperate criminal. He's sitting in the loges. Well, if he can afford it, can't you? <laughs> oh, all right. What do we owe you? Forty-five cents extra for three tickets. Here you are. Make a note of that, Harris. Sixty-five cents for expenses. <laughs> now, let's see. Here are the loges. Hey, fellas. I bet that's him there on that end seat. He looks like a killer. Yeah. Quiet, men. Let's sneak up on him. Oh, darn it, there's the newsreel. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Army beats Navy 14 to 7 in thrilling football game. The crowd is in a frenzy as Army scores its first touchdown. Wow, look at that guy run. Harris, you're here on business. New York City, New York. Animal lovers mourn the loss of Oscar the Elephant, which was stolen last night from Central Park Zoo. Police are baffled. We are not. Then where's the elephant? <laughs> Never mind, we'll find him. Hollywood, California. Heavy of beautiful girls arrive in Hollywood to take part in beauty contests. Look at those gorgeous creatures as they step off the plane. <laughs> Well, thank heaven that's over. Now, come on, man. we got to catch that murderer before he gets away. Hey, Cap, there's a fellow with a gun sitting over there by the door. That's the guy we want. Come on. Oh, now, what's that? It's the feature picture. Look! Yeah, there's the title. Jack Benny and Artist and Models. Why, that's my old picture. We can't nab that guy now. We'll have to wait until it's over. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not going to sit through this. Take it away. I give up. I surrender. What? I confess. I killed him. I'm a murderer. But I'm not going to sit to this picture. I'm going to hang, you hear me? Hang, hang! <laughs> Blast the bracelets on the men and take them away. I'm staying for the picture. Play, Phil. We're a little late, so good night, folks. Jello program coming to you from Radio City, New York, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, and yours truly, Don Wilson. For now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who came to New York in the middle of winter without an overcoat and still hasn't bought one, Jack Benny. Hello again, this is Jack Benny, the holdout talking. And, Don, I wish you'd stop harping about an overcoat. I told you last week I don't need one. I know, Jack, but it's dangerous to walk the streets this kind of weather without a coat. After all, this is winter. Don, believe me, cold weather doesn't bother me. I'm just naturally rugged. I was the first fellow in Waukegan to ever get a haircut in the middle of December. (laughs) I can take it. (laughs) Well, that may be so, Jack, but I still think that you're not dressed warm enough. Why, Don hasn't been so cold this week. As a matter of fact, it's been raining most of the time. Well, I think Don's right, Jack. You look silly walking down the street dressed the way you are. Three violinists in the front row. You think Congress had just passed a law against boars. (laughs) You know, Don, I can't understand why Phil had a... Oh, now they laugh. The reason they're laughing now, borscht is the first word they understood. (laughs) You know, Don, I can't understand why Phil had to pick out an orchestra that works for Fred Allen. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Maybe they're worried about something. Maybe they're serious musicians. Serious? Last Wednesday night, all Allen said was, hello, Porty, and those guys went into hysterics. Well, maybe, maybe they jumped their cue. You nearly jumped yours. Yes, right now. <laughs> That's probably what happened. Now, you know, I don't mind Alan telling him when to laugh and applaud. But when he throws lighted matches around to get them to stamp their feet, that's going too far. <laughs> oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Applecart. What upset you now? Oh, it's that smart Alec orchestra Phil had to ring in on me. I wish you'd just ignore him, Mary. <laughs> you haven't been out with any of the boys in this band, have you? Only the brass section. Oh. I like fellas with derbies. Oh, good. Well, stay away from the woodwinds. 
But by the way, Mary, I thought you were going to meet me the other night for dinner and go to a show afterwards. Jack, I've told you a thousand times I'm not going out with you until you buy an overcoat. Oh, you're as bad as Don. I told you I don't need an overcoat. This blue suit keeps me plenty warm. It ought to. You got your gray one under it. <laughs> oh, is that darn thing showing again? <laughs> anyway, you missed a wonderful treat. I saw that new Olson and Johnson review. Oh, if they got a show here, what's the name of it? It's called Hex a Poppin'. <laughs> Hexapoppin'? Yeah. Not the night I saw it. Go away, Phil. Just say, Mary, you missed a grand evening's entertainment. Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, I went over to visit my folks in Plainfield that night. They're having trouble with the landlord again. Hey, that's been going on for years. Mary, your father's working. Why doesn't he pay the rent? Oh, he says everything belongs to the Indians anyway. Well, the least he could do is give the landlord a string of beads. The only thing I can't understand, Mary, is how your family keep from being thrown out. Thrown out? My folks move so often, Mama wears a gypsy costume. Oh. Well, I guess some people are just naturally restless. Yeah, we even had to change our dog's name from Fido to Rover. Mm, nice family. <laughs> Say, Jack. What? I just got a letter from Mama that'll positively kill you. Well, it's about time. What's the Noel Coward of Plainfield got to say? <laughs> Here it is. Oh, this is a riot. Well, never mind the build-up. Just read it. Okay. Huh? My darling daughter, Mary, just a line to let you know how happy your visit made us, and to tell you that you left a pair of gloves here on the piano. That was careless. They fit me fine, but I will send them to you immediately, if that's the way you feel about it. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, it's lucky you left when you did. I think your sister Lulu has the month, as she was blowing up a balloon yesterday, and when she stopped, her cheeks wouldn't go down. <laughs> Oh, that's too bad. Right now, she looks like a tuba player getting ready for a high note. Say, it's a good thing you got away from there. By the way, Mary, your grandfather is at it again. He may be old, but he certainly follows the latest style. I remember the old geezer. This morning, when he came into breakfast, he was wearing his beard up. <laughs> he was. Say, with his beard up over his face, he must have trouble eating. Mama's coming to that. Oh, uh. <laughs> Uh, we had chicken soup for lunch today, and you should have seen your grandfather looking for a noodle in the haystack. <laughs> Old gal's cooking tonight. Any other bulletins? Uh, no other news, except your cousin Otto is in trouble with the police again. Now what? They caught him on a ladder the other night, and he wasn't eloping. <laughs> That's right. You can't take silverware to Niagara Falls. Huh? That's all for now. Give my love to the gang and hope to see you before you leave. Your devoted mother, Gypsy Rose Livingston. <laughs> Wow. Uh, P.S. It's only two weeks to Christmas, so give my love to Jack, too. Well, that's very sweet of her. What a racketeer. Now, let's get on with the program. Oh, Kenny. Hey, where's Kenny? He's supposed to sing right now. I don't know. Oh, I remember. Kenny borrowed $10 from me and said he was going out to see the World's Fair. The World's Fair? That doesn't open until spring. He'll wait. Darn that kid. Well, if we can't have a song, I'll have to play a violin solo. A violin solo? Get back in your seats, man. That's what I say. Hand me a violin, Phil. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Can't we talk this over? I know what I'm doing, Phil. Let go of me. Hey, boys, do you know uh, At Long Last Love? No. How about My Reverie? No. no. Fine orchestra. Hey, piano player. Yeah? Do you know when it's tulip time in Holland? I think it's in April, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, never mind. They'd probably ruin it for me anyway. Well, as long as we have to do without Kenny, play something, Phil. We've got to get going here. Hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I'm awfully sorry you're not going to play a violin solo tonight. You are? Well, so am I. But who are we, the people? <laughs> get out of here. Be glad when the beaver season opens. I'd like to bag him. Play <laughs> Pocket Full of Dreams, played by the orchestra with a vocal refrain by Phil Martinelli. <laughs> and now, <laughs> now, I know why you didn't want me to play my violin, Phil. It was just so you could do a number yourself, you big ham. Well, what if I did? Don't be so jealous. I'm not jealous. If I couldn't sing better than that, I wouldn't even attempt it. <laughs> me jealous. Why should I be? I got more money in the bank than you have, haven't I, Mary? You've got more money in your socks than he has in the bank. <laughs> Mary, if you're referring to that bulge above my shoe, I was getting out of the bathtub this morning and I sprained my ankle. Well, you've got Lincoln's picture on the bandage. 
All right, Mary. Anyway, that's what happened. Bathtub? What were you doing in the bathtub? I was sailing a boat. Oh. <laughs> what was I doing in the bathtub? What do you think I was doing? Diving for pearls? <laughs> Huh? Or my laundry? That could happen. Now, wait a minute, I, Mary. I shouldn't even discuss it, but I don't do my own laundry. Well, someone should. <laughs> All right, just keep it up, fellas. Just keep it up. So, when I do my Christmas shopping, I'll remember every word that was said here. <laughs> to prove my faith in you, I'm going to let you handle the show from now on. Where are you going, Jack? Well, I've still got a lot of Christmas shopping to do, and I thought I'd finish it up today. You can handle things around here, can't you, Don? Oh, sure, Jack. Go right ahead. Can I go with you, Jack? Yeah, because if I leave you here, you're liable to say something about me. All right, I'll go with you and say it. Hey, there. Really? Come on, Don. I'll see you. Go. I, we're going ahead. I'll see you later. Huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Billy, this is Rochester. Oh, well, it's about time. We've been in town ten days, and it's the first I've heard from you. Where are you? I'm up here in Harlem enjoying a little southern hospitality. <laughs> oh, well, you know, Rochester, even though we're in New York, you still have work to do. I thought this was a pleasure trip. Pleasure trip? I've had to unpack my own bags, answer the phone, and do everything myself. You expect to get paid this week, don't you? Definitely. <laughs> I thought so. What have you been doing? Well, last Wednesday night, some friends of mine threw a big banquet in my honor. Oh, did you have a good time? I don't know. It ain't over yet. <laughs> it ain't over yet? Well, for heaven's sake, how long is this party going to last? Until somebody with a blue coat knocks on the door with an axe. <laughs> Well, I don't mind you having a good time, Rochester, but in case things get dull there, I wish you'd drop around and press some pants for me. Okay, boss, I'll be there tomorrow. Fine. Oh, incidentally, uh, when I unpacked my bags the other day, I couldn't find my full dress suit. You couldn't? Mama! I'm not asking for sympathy, Rochester. Where is my full dress suit? You mean the one you look so good in? Stop flattering me. Rochester, where is my full dress suit? Why don't you wear your tuxedo? Now, Rochester, for the last time, where is my full dress suit? Well, I'll be doggone. I got it on. I thought so. Of all the brazen, unmitigated nerve, how dare you put on any of my wardrobe? How dare you? Are you disappointed in me, boss? <laughs> disappointed? Now, listen to me, Rochester. Yes, sir? I want you to be at my hotel at 8 o'clock sharp tomorrow morning. Shall I come formal? <laughs> yes, bring the suit. Goodbye. So long, boss. Well, that's positively the last word in nerve. Play, Phil. I gotta go out and do some shopping. Come on. <laughs> Store is crowded, isn't it, Mary? Yeah, getting through this mob is like playing Notre Dame. Yeah, everybody's shoving and pushing. Ooh, ooh! Madam, will you please watch your umbrella? <laughs> mm. You better stick close to me, Mary, and don't get lost. And take your hand out of my pocket. Not my hand. Then whose is it? Well, for goodness... Hey, buddy, what are you doing with your hand in my pocket? I don't know. I guess I'm an optimist. <laughs> hmm, let's get away from here, Mary. Now, let's see. Here's my Christmas list. An electric razor for Don. A necktie for Kenny. A chorus girl for Phil. And, uh... What are you going to get for me, Jack? I'm not going to tell you, Mary. It's a surprise. It's something between a Rolls Royce and a compact. <laughs> I'll bet the last will be first. Oh, I don't know about that. Remember last Christmas I gave you that lovely bottle of perfume? Fine perfume. I put some on my handkerchief and had to bury it. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. Incidentally, I have to buy some. I wish you'd help me pick it out. Okay, here's the counter, Jack. Oh, yes. 
Uh, pardon me, miss. Uh, I'd like to get a bottle of perfume. Yes, sir. Now, here's something new this season that's very popular. Well, well, what an attractive bottle, isn't it, Mary? Yeah. Uh, what's the name of that, miss? It's called Springtime in the Bronx. <laughs> Oh, yes, it's lovely that time of year with the bagels all in bloom. <laughs> but, miss, look, I'd like something a little more exotic. Uh, something, shall we say, uh, ooh-la-la? Oui, oui. Well. Now, here's a perfume that's all the rage in Paris. It's called Toujours L'Amour Voulez-Vous. <laughs> well, well, Toujours L'Amour Voulez-Vous. Uh, what does that mean, Mary? Love, your magic smell is everywhere. <laughs> Well, it sounds much better in French. Uh, uh, how much is that, miss? Ten dollars an ounce, or four thousand dollars a gallon. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that's a little steep. Uh, let's see. What else have you got? Now, here's something very nice. It sells for three dollars and a half a bottle. Hey, that's quite a bargain. Who makes that? Hague and Hague. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid that won't do either. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Gee, miss, I don't know what kind of perfume to buy. Why don't you just run some violets through a ringer and make it yourself? <laughs> well, of all the impertinence. Come on, Mary, I've got a good mind to report her. Well, it's not her fault, Jack. She's busy. Busy? Yes, when you spend that much time with a girl, you either have to buy something or marry her. Oh. Well, come on, i got to get some neckties for Kenny. And stick close to me, Mary, you'll get lost in this crowd. Hey, Jack, there's that fellow again. Where? Ouch! Buddy, will you please keep your hand out of my pocket? I'm sorry. Sorry? You're the clumsiest pickpocket I've ever met. Well, I'm young yet. <laughs> And stay away from me until you loin something. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, where's the uh, where's the necktie counter? Uh, there's a floor walker, Jack. Ask him. Oh, yes. Uh, pardon me, mister. Good afternoon. What can I do for you, sir? I'm uh, looking for ties. Uh, where can I get a good dollar necktie? I'm afraid you better ask somebody else. Why? I work here. I'm prejudiced. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, I... I'd like to find the necktie department. Where is it? Neckties. Now, let's see. That wouldn't come under crockery, would it? No, it comes under chin, if I remember. <laughs> now, look, mister, I haven't got all day. Where can I buy a tie? Well, you don't have to get huffy about it. I'm not huffy. You big dope. Oh, go back to Hollywood and squeeze an orange. <laughs> Look here, hey, you. Hey, Jack, there's the next night apartment right in back of you. Oh, that's right. Fine floor walker. Is a disgrace to his carnation? <laughs> Fine floor walker. Is a disgrace to his carnation? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we are. Well, well, there's... Quite a selection here. <laughs> yes, sir. What can I do for you? I'd like to buy some ties. Four in hand, bow, or railroad. <laughs> Look, I want a necktie. A regular necktie. I'm glad to hear that. The one you're wearing is awful. <laughs> well, it is a little wrinkle. Now, here's a very snappy tie, mister, with an American flag on it. Oh, yes. Take it, Jack. It'll go good with your white shirt with the stars on it. Yes, <laughs> It is unusual, uh... How much is this tie with the flag on it? Sixty-two dollars and fifty cents. Sixty-two fifty? Yes, Betsy Ross made it. <laughs> For heaven's sake, what is this, a store or a museum? I don't know. I always come in the back door. <laughs> well, that settles it. I'm getting out of this joint. Wait a minute, Jack. As long as you're here, why don't you buy an overcoat? I told you before, I don't need one. I do, too. I do not, and take your hand out of my pocket. And come in quicker. <laughs> Good heavens, you're getting monotonous. <laughs> All right. Come on, Mary, I'll buy that overcoat just so you'll keep still. Where's that silly floor walker again? There he is, right over there. Oh, yeah. Say, mister, I hate to go through this again, but can you tell me where the overcoat department is? I'm not speaking to you. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, I'm not going to make up with you either. <laughs> Come on, Mary. I'll find the overcoats myself. You better carry some of these bundles, honey. I'm loaded now. Rochester. Oh, hello, Mr. Billy. You shopping too? Yeah, I thought you were up at Harlem at a banquet. I was, but I ran into some money with a pair of dice, so my girlfriend brought me down here to liquidate. Oh, I see. Boss, I'd like you to meet Miss, uh, Miss Lucille. Lu uh, what is your last name, honey? Garbo. Oh, Lucille Garbo. How do you do? Glad to know you, Mr. Benny. Rochester's been telling me about that big oil well you two own. Oil well? What oil well? Uh, come on, honey, let's go. Rochester. Uh, see you later, boss. Oil well? Wait till I see him tomorrow. Oh, Jack, I found the overcoat department. I've got one all picked out for you. Look, and I'll pick out my own. Where is it? Come on, I'll show you. Now, Mary, while I'm buying my coat, you can run along. You don't have to stay. I wouldn't miss this for a million dollars. All right, but I don't want any remarks. Here's the salesman. Isn't he cute? Oh, so that's it, huh? How do you do, sir? Uh, how do you do? Uh, I'm Jack Benny, and I'd like to buy an overcoat. I see. Oh, Joe. Yeah? Come over here. I'm going to need help on this. Okay, Mr. Peters. <laughs> hmm. Now, what have you got in mind, Mr. Benny? Uh, well, I'd like to get... Now, here's a very popular model. All wool, double-breasted, and wears like I am. Well, it's nice, yeah, but I'd don't rather... try it on. I'm sure you'll like it. Uh, look, I, I don't care for the color. Try it on anyway. Hold him, Joe. I got him. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There you are, Mr. Benny. A perfect fit. A perfect fit? Absolutely. Now, do you want the sleeves lengthened, or are you going to wear gloves? <laughs> Now, look, mister, I don't like this coat at all. In the first place, it's too long. Look, when I move, it drags down the floor. Not if you walk on your toes. Well, that's about the silliest thing I've ever heard. It looks marvelous on you. Marvelous? I've been in shower curtains that fit better than this. <laughs> now, look here. I don't like this model at all. Take it off. All right. I don't like the weight, and I don't like the color. But it's only twenty nine fifty. Put it back on, fellas. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Mary. I don't want this coat at any price. Oh, you don't, huh? Well, try it on again. This coat will grow on you. Grow? I could raise pigeons in it now. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Brown, I don't now, want... Now, just slip it on again. Look, but I don't like I this... got it, Mr. Peters. Hey, what's the matter with you guys, anyway? There you are. Now, how do you like it? I don't like it. Look at this coat. There aren't even buttons on it. Of course not. This is the new zipper model. Look. <laughs> There you are. Mary, let's get out of here. These fellas are maniacs. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You look like a guy seeking out of a sack of potatoes. Well, I've just had about enough of this. I'm going home. Unzipper me. Okay, here we go again. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. All right, Jack. Oh, no, you don't. Grab him, Joe. All right, got him. Out of my way, you. Out of my way. All right, Joe, let him have it. Ha-ha, you missed me. What a sore loser. Oh, Jack, he shot me right through my new hat. Well, no wonder it looks like a wild duck. Good <laughs> heavens, what a mess. And we'll be with you again next Sunday at the same time, broadcasting from Hollywood, <laughs> California. And, uh, folks, I want you all to know that I was only kidding before. I really have an overcoat, haven't I, Mary? Yes, but the elbows are out. <laughs> of course, that's why I didn't wear it. Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Bill Harris, Jenny Baker, and Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Jack Benny and his gang, who are en route from New York to Hollywood have reached Chicago. So we pick them up at the station where they are about to board the train going west. Take it away! Hey, Rochester, did you see the rest of the gang? No, boss, I guess we're the first ones here. Doggone it. You know what, Rochester? I forgot to tip the taxi driver. Why didn't you remind me? I thought it was premeditated. <laughs> well, it wasn't. All aboard! Train leaving on track five for Memphis, New Orleans, Jacksonville, Palm Beach, Miami, and Montreal. Or Montreal? Listen, Mr. Montreal is in Canada. It's nowhere near Miami. All right, so I make one little mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Fine train announcer. Hey, Ma, get a load of this. Junior, stop staring at that man in the blue and yellow overcoat. For heaven's sake, yes. <laughs> have you ever seen an overcoat like this before? No, and neither have you. Hmm. Junior, I'm sorry, mister. You have to excuse him for being so precocious. So what? That means fresh, adult. <laughs> I know what it means, and stay away from me. Hey, Rochester. Yes, sir? Our train leaves in ten minutes. Where's my brown leather bag? I thought you was carrying it. Me? You probably left it on the street when we got out of the taxi. Somebody must have stolen it by now. That old thing? <laughs> yes, all my belongings are in it. Now go get it. Okay, boss. I'll be back in a flash with the train. <laughs> All the careless, good for nothing. Oh, hello, Don. Hello, Jack. Where's the rest of the gang? They're around here somewhere. Say, it's pretty cold here in Chicago, isn't it? Oh, it sure is. Well, well, I see you finally got an overcoat. Yeah. That one's kind of loud for you, isn't it, Jack? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's warm, though. Isn't it? All aboard! Train leaving on track seven for Peoria, Emporia, Oskaloosa, Tuscaloosa, Toscanini, Vini Vini, and Rum Elbow. Or... <laughs> From Elbow, that guy's nuts. Gee whiz, Dom, it's getting late. I wonder what's keeping the rest of the gang. Oh, don't worry, Jack. They'll show up. Yeah. Mr. Benning, I looked all around the station. I can't find your bag anywhere. Well, of course it's not in the station. You left it out on the sidewalk. Now go and get it. Okay. Say, boss, it's kind of chilly outside. Can I have my overcoat? <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> His coat. You know, down someday, Rochester's going to carry that kidding too far. Hello, Bo Peep. Here's one of your sheets. Well, it's about time, Mary. I haven't seen you since we got off the century. Where have you been? Oh, I had lunch with a fellow I met on the train last night. Mary, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. What's the idea? Well, he was lonesome, and I was lonesome and hungry. <laughs> That's no excuse. I told you a thousand times it's not right to go to lunch with strangers. You said it. I paid the check. <laughs> Well, that'll teach you a lesson. Now, come on with me. I want to go over to the newsstand and get some magazines. Hey, boy, boy, I found the bag. Here it is. That's good. Hey, but what'd you bring all those red caps along with you for? I didn't bring them. They're picketing me. <laughs> oh. Well, wait for me by the ticket gate. Come on, Mary. Say, Jack, I wish you'd take off Rochester's coat. Everybody's staring at you. Mary, this isn't Rochester's coat. Oh, no? Look at that lodge button on the lapel. Lodge button? Yeah, since when do you belong to the sons and daughters of the Deep South? <laughs> I don't belong. I'm just an honorary member. Here's the newsstand. We've only got about five minutes. All aboard! Train leaving on track 11 for White Sulphur Springs, Warm Springs, Palm Springs, Hot Springs, and Simmons Mattresses. <laughs> Simmons mattresses? Where's that? Right near Folder Dreams. Well, I deserve that. Here's the newsstand, Mary. What do you want? Uh, let me see. There's photo play and the Saturday evening post. And... Yeah, and there's Collier. Yes, sir. Is there anything I can do for you? I beg your pardon? I said, is there anything I can do for you? Yes, we'd like to buy some magazine. <laughs> What have you got there? Well, we have the latest Cosmopolitan. Cosmopolitan? Huh? Yes, and here's the new Liberty. <laughs> what do you want, Mary? Oh, I'll just take a box of the Furman. <laughs> Mary, don't encourage him. Perhaps you'd like a good novel to read on the train. A novel? Oh, I don't know. Say, Mary, what's that book over there by you? Where? The one that's nailed up on the wall. You can't take it with you. <laughs> Well, there's no use buying it, then. Come on, Mary, we'll get something on the train. All right. Oh, Jack, look at those cute little toy dogs there. Let's get one. Toy dog? Not now, Mary. Well, take one on the train with you, mister. They're only a dollar. No, no, I don't think so. Oh, go ahead. They're very cute. Oh, I don't care if they are. What good is a toy dog on a train? Well, for one thing, you don't have to take them on and off. <laughs> That's a lot of sales talk. Come on, Mary, we've only got two minutes. Oh, Jack, Jack, I found Phil. Hiya, baby. You looking for me? Yes, Phil, we're leaving in a couple of minutes. You had me worried to death. Where were you? I just stopped in for a shave and a haircut. And you know, Jack, it's the first time I ever had a lady barber. Oh, yeah? Say, I'll bet you had a lot of fun. What, with a razor in her hand? <laughs> 
I see. Well, she certainly gave you a fine haircut. Get a load of it, Mary. <laughs> it looks like she cut off too much and pasted it back. <laughs> it does with that. Hey, where's Kenny? He's always the last one to show up. All aboard! Three leaving on track one for Toledo, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, East Orange. Well, boss, I got all the bags on the train. Is there anything else you want me to do? Yeah, look around the station. See if you can find Kenny Baker. I saw him wandering around here a little while ago, and I thought he might get lost. Well? So I checked him in the parcel room. Well, for heaven's sake, go and get him. Here's a dime. Oh, it'll cost a quarter. I insured him. <laughs> All right, here. Now, hurry up. California train is now ready. All passengers, hold your tickets, please. Oh, boy, I hardly wait to get back. Come on, get in here, will you? Now, let's see. What did I do with mine? Oh, here they are. Junior, come along. And I told you to stop staring at that man's overcoat. Well, I may never see one again. Hmm. I'm sorry, mister, but Junior's a little bit upset. Yeah, I'm worried about the market. The market, eh? What stock did you buy, Junior? Amalgamated rompers. Well, watch out or I'll pull yours down and give you a good whack. Come along, Junior. He's just an old grouchy wouchy. Listen, madam, before I met your son, I was a picture of hell. <laughs> hey, boss, here's Mr. Baker. Hello, Jack. Say, if I got time to run out and get a sandwich? No, Kenny, you can eat on the train. I don't like your sandwiches. <laughs> Kenny, I'm talking about the diner. Now, we're getting on the train now, so remember what I told you this morning. Oh, don't worry, Jack. I won't forget. Tickets, please. Tickets. Is everybody here? Yeah, we're all here, Jack. Here are the tickets, conductor. Thank you. Now, let's see. One, two, three, four, five and a half. Five full tickets and one half fare. That's correct. Right through the gate, everybody. Come along, Kenny, dear. Yes, Uncle Jack. <laughs> Now, stay cool, Kenny, but it wouldn't hurt you to try and look a little younger. Say, Jack, as long as you're going through with this, why don't you give Kenny a teething ring? A teething ring? Yeah, he doesn't look like a kid at all. Oh, no, you ought to see the underwear he pinned on me. <laughs> Never mind, Dad. Get on the train. All aboard! Train leaving west on track nine for Kansas City, Dodge City, Las Vegas. Albert QQ. <laughs> Albert QQ? And shut up. <laughs> well, thank heaven, at least we're getting rid of you. Oh, no, you're not. I'm the engineer. Oh, my goodness, what a ride we're going to have. Boy. <laughs> Gee, this ride back home seems kind of long, doesn't it? Yeah, I'll sure be glad when we get off. Boy, what a trip. Well, I don't know what you fellas are complaining about. Every time the conductor comes by, I have to stick a lollipop in my mouth. That's too bad. Yeah, and another thing. I can blow my own nose. <laughs> Stop beeping, Kenny. I thought I told you to go and play with that little boy, Junior. It looks better. <laughs> and besides, he's good company for you. Fine company. This morning he told me a story about a traveling salesman. <laughs> All right, then stay here and be quiet. Hey, this train is moving right along. Huh? Well, by the way, Jack, I meant to ask you, whatever happened to that play you were going to do in New York? What play? Oh, you know, that Shakespearean thing that you told us about before we left Hollywood. Oh, that? Well, I'll tell you, Don, I spoke to the producer about it last week, and we decided to do it in the spring. It looks like I'm going to play Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar? That's a hot one. Well, uh, you're going to laugh, fellas. But I'm going in for a little more of that highbrow stuff. Say, Jack, I'd like to be in that play, too. Can you get me a job carrying a spear? Yes, Bill, but you'll have to walk in front of me. <laughs> You'd be fine doing Shakespeare with that corny dialogue of yours. Huh? Quick, Jack, give me a lollipop. Here comes the conductor. Oh, yes, here you are, Kenny. Oh, hello, conductor. How are you, Mr. Benny? Are you having a nice trip? Oh, fine, fine, yes, sir. Say, this nephew of yours, are you positive he's only 12 years old? Why, yes, conductor. He's a pretty big boy for his age, but they they grow like weeds in California. <laughs> weeds yet. <laughs> now sit up, Kenny, like a good little boy. Well, well. Tell me, young man, are you really only 12 years old? Da, da, whatever that means. <laughs> All right, don't overdo it. Cute kid, isn't he, conductor? Huh? Yes, but he can stand a shave. <laughs> hmm. Hey, fellas, we're slowing down a little. I guess we're coming into a town. Yeah, there's a few houses. Wow, look at that beautiful girl standing at that crossing up ahead. Where? Oh, say, she is good looking. I guess the engineer saw her, too. <laughs> say, where's Mary? 
saw her just a few minutes ago talking to some fellow back in the observation car. Now, I've told her time and again not to talk to strangers. I'm going in there and put a stop to that. Well, Phil, I'm kind of tired. I think I'll stretch out on this seat and take a nap. See you later, Don. What are you going to do, Kenny? Oh, I'm going back in a club car and have a scotch and soda. Okay, I'll put a nipple on it so it'll look all right. <laughs> Let's go, kid. Oh, Mary is annoying this time. Oh, I'll be glad to get home. Is this your first trip to California, uh, Mr., uh, Miss... I didn't get your name. Thompson. Thompson. Oh, yes. Is this your first trip to California, Mr. Thompson? No, I've been there lots of times. Well, you'll just love it. I always say there's no place like California. You know, I was born in Plainfield, New Jersey, but after all, New Jersey is New Jersey, and California is California. So what? Oh, you're a card. (laughs) (laughs) You're such a distinguished-looking man, Mr. Thompson. Uh, What business are you in? I'm a psychiatrist. Oh, I'm glad I bumped into you. I've been having more trouble with my feet. (laughs) Mary. Young lady, a psychiatrist is a... Oh, ma- I'm in the radio business. You know, the Jell-O program starring Mary Livingston and Stooges. <laughs> oh, we're a riot. <laughs> I'm Sam, it's Mr. Thompson. Are you hungry? No, I'm not. Mary. Well, if you'd eat something, Mr. Thompson, you wouldn't have a headache. I haven't got a headache. Mary! Oh, hello, Jack. Come here a minute. I want to talk to you. Uh, excuse me a minute. Gladly. <laughs> All right, Mary, come on with me. Who's that fellow you were talking to? Oh, some fresh guy trying to date me up. (laughs) Well, it's your old fault. Now, let's get back in our own car. Mary, you got more nerve. Uh Uh-uh, here comes that little brat, Junior. Let's ignore him. Hiya, Dracula. (laughs) Hmm. Mary, there's nothing funny about that. Let me tell you something, young man. If you're not careful, you'll grow up to be worse than the dead end kid. So, sissies. Wish he'd stick his tongue out at me once more so I can hit him on top of the head. I think he's a cute little boy. Cute. Last night he put a poached egg in my berth. <laughs> oh, Jack, look at Don over there, sound asleep. Doesn't he look sweet? Yeah, he looks like a whale that was washed up on the beach. <laughs> you better wake him up, Jack. We'll be in pretty soon. Yeah. Where's Rochester? My bags aren't even packed. Oh, Phil, did you see Rochester anywhere? Yeah, come here a minute. Jack, you want to hear something funny? What? Rochester's in that drawing room talking to the porter. Boy, is he giving them a line. He is, eh? Let's listen. You know, Sylvester, I used to be a porter myself, but I gave it up. There ain't no future in it. You're right, Rochester. Say, how long have you been Mr. Bennett's private secretary and personal advisor? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. For well, about two years now, you know Mr. Bennett don't make a move without consulting me. He calls me his half in the evening. That's just a big fib. Quiet, Jack. This is good. Say, Rochester, what kind of a man is your boss? Is he nice to work for? Oh, very pleasant. Very pleasant. <laughs> you ought to see how he throws his money away. He does. Not far, but he throws it. <laughs> Wait till I get a hold of him. One thing, Mr. Benny, he sure has funny radio programs. Well, he ought to. I'll write every word of them. That's all I want to know. <laughs> Listen, author. Uh-huh. See you later, Sylvester. When you get through writing my programs, Anthony, I wish you'd pack my bag. We're getting off the train pretty soon. Okay, boy. Say, Kenny. Yes, Dad? As soon as we get to the station, we'll have to go right to the studio. Have you got your song ready for the program? Yeah, but I better run through it again. That's right. We won't have time for rehearsals. Go ahead, Kenny. Put down those blocks and sing. My personal advice. Well, fellas, we're pulling into the station pretty soon. Hey, Don, did you see the tops of my pajamas any place? No, I didn't, Phil. Me neither. Darn no souvenir hunters. Rochester, you sure you got everything in the bag? Yes, sir. Am I tired? When I get home, I'm going to bed and won't get up till 1939. Well, you need a little rest the way you've been dis- dissipating on this trip. Look at those white circles under your eyes. <laughs> Let's see, uh, where did I put my reading glasses? Your glasses are for Adam. And look, Rochester, you forgot to pack my blanket. Is that the one Fred Allen said you took from the Sherry Netherlands Hotel? Mary, I didn't take any blanket from the Sherry Netherlands. Then what's that SN on there? That's where I bought it, Saks 9th Avenue. <laughs> so there. Wait a minute, Saks hasn't got a store on 9th Avenue. I'll bet you $25 there's a fellow named Sam Saks who runs a store on 9th Avenue. And he sells blankets. 
Anyway, Alan's got a nerve saying I ever took anything out of a hotel. Well, what about that little incident at the Ritz last year? Never mind that. Well, what's it, Mary? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack walked out of the Ritz with a chair and a floor lamp and told the house detective he was in the finance company. <laughs> Well, I just did that for a laugh. Well, those laughs look very good in your living room. <laughs> You're making that up, Mary, and you know it. Hey, we're coming in, fellas. We're coming in. Yeah, right. <laughs> Los Angeles, Los Angeles, keep track of your baggage. Don't forget what belongs to you, and please don't forget what belongs to us. <laughs> Well, here we are. What a crowd at the station. Go, go on, look at all those girls in Central Avenue. Don't tell me they came down to meet you, Rochester. I don't know, but I'm getting off ahead of the porter. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Hey, Porter. Yes, sir. Everything was fine. Here's a tip for you. Thank you, Mr. Benny. Wow, a $10 bill. A $10 bill? Here's your glasses, boy. <laughs> Right now. Yes. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> well, I guess... I guess he earned it. Come on, fellas. So long, Conductor. We had a swell trip. So long, Mr. Benny. Goodbye, young man. Goodbye, Conductor. We sure fooled you, didn't we? <laughs> Benny. Well, so long, fellas. See you all at the broadcast. Oh, so long, hey, Doc. Come, come, come on, Rochester. Let's go. Hey, Mr. Benny. Look who's here to greet us. Why, Andy! I your best welcome home! Well, doggone it, Andy, I had a hunch the mayor of Van Nuys would come down to the station to greet us. Yeah, and I even tried to get our local jug band down here. Well, why didn't you? Well, by the time they got their jugs empty, they weren't in the mood. Oh, well, tell me, Andy, how's everything in California? Oh, just fine, Buck. I hear you had a couple of days of pretty heavy rain. Is that true? I ain't no squealer. <laughs> Now, oh, come on, Andy. Come on. You can trust me. It did rain here, didn't it? Wait a minute. Are you sure there ain't no microphones around? Of course not. Buck, it came down in buckets. <laughs> it did? And old man Moses drowned. I know, Andy. I know. I read all about it. Oh, Junior. Junior, there he is now. Hello, Uncle Andy. Hello, Junior. Hi, you sis. Hey, what is this? Hey, Buck, this is my sister Flossie from Indianapolis, and this is my nephew, Junior. Yeah, I met the little rattlesnake. <laughs> well, I gotta run along, Andy. I'm anxious to get home. Goodbye, Junior. See you around, Snow White. <laughs> you won't see me around if I have to put on a false beard. So long, Andy. Hey, wait a minute, Buck. Hey, Flossie, you and Junior wait for me in the buggy. I want to talk to Buck a minute. All right. Come on, Junior. Andy, I can't tell you how good it feels to be back home. Say, how's your folks? Oh, they're all excited, getting ready for Christmas. They are, huh? Yeah, they were trimming the Christmas tree last night, and Pa fell off the ladder and hung a star on Ma's ear. Yeah? Yeah, then Ma hung one on him. <laughs> Oh, they're still at it, eh? Buck, they've been fighting so much lately, we're trying to get Clem McCarthy for a hired man. Well, I don't blame her. Well, see you later, Andy. I gotta run along now. So long, Buck! So long. Oh, Rochester! Yes, Buck? Quit signing autographs and get me a taxi cab. Okay, see you tonight, Josephine. All aboard. Ray meeting for Salt Lake City, Denver, Chicago, Cleveland, New Jersey, and Mars. <laughs> Then we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. So Merry Christmas, everybody, from my whole gang. What are you going to give me for a Christmas present, Jack? Mary, I'm going to give you two tickets to my new Paramount picture, Artists and Models Abroad, which opens in key cities all over the country next week. <laughs> Good night, folks. Gee, I'm glad I got that in. <laughs> The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with This Can't Be Love. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I've been thinking that today is a day of universal thank yous. Everybody's unwrapping Christmas gifts. Everybody's saying thank you to somebody else. And we want to say it, too. 
We want to thank you listeners for your gift to us of friendship and loyalty during the past four and a half years. You've made us mighty happy, tuning in every Sunday night, and we hope that we in turn have helped make you happy and brought you some pleasant half hours. So for the makers of Jell-O and for every one of us on the Jell-O program, thank you and Merry Christmas. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this being Christmas Day, we look in on Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where he is holding open house for all his friends. Take it away! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle around the table. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a rumble seat with Gable. Jingle bells, jingle bells, dum da Mary, I wish you wouldn't jingle this ladder. I'm liable to fall off. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. And hand me the rest of those ornaments. I want to get this tree decorated before the gang gets here. It's a fine time to be trimming a Christmas tree. It should have been done a week ago. Well, I wanted to look around and get a real good one. I never saw such a droopy tree. It looks like Zazu Pitts in a green dress. <laughs> Mary, all this tree needs is a few decorations. Now, uh, hand me up those candy canes. Here you are. And hold the ladder. Hey, I had 12 of these candy canes. Now there's only 11. Where's the other one? Don't look at me. I'm not looking at you. I'm asking you. All right, I ate it. Here's 10 cents. <laughs> Smarty, I bet you'd be surprised if I took it. I wouldn't be surprised if you sued me. <laughs> Mary, I want to get this finished. Hey, Rochester. Yes, boss? Uh, where's that big glass star I told you to pack away last Christmas? You mean that shiny one with the three points on it? That star has five points. Well, it went down two points this last year. <laughs> All right, bring it anyway. Mary, hand me some of that silver tinsel there. Will you? Here you are. Say, Jack, are your socks dry yet? Yeah. Well, take them off the tree. People will be here soon. <laughs> okay. Now, hang on to the ladder, Mary. I want to fix these top branches here. Hold tight now. Well, I'll be darned. What's the matter, Jack? There's a little squirrel up here on the top. <laughs> Hello, squirrel. Hello, nut. <laughs> Get away from me. Shoot. Mary, hand me that Cupid doll I won at Ocean Park. I'll hang that on the treetop there. Oh, Jack, that looks so corny. Why don't you get rid of it? Listen, Mary, I threw over a hundred baseballs to win this doll, and I'm going to keep it. That's right. Say, how much tinfoil have you got saved up by now? About three ton. Oh, shut up. <laughs> hand me a couple of those popcorn balls. There's the door, Mr. Benny. You want me to answer it? Look, Rochester, I'm up here on the ladder. My arms are full of ornaments, so what do you think? Well, how long before you'll be down? Answer the door! <laughs> yes, sir. Say, Mary, this tree is beginning to look pretty good now, isn't it? Huh? That tree wouldn't look good if Earl Carroll hung chorus girls on it. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, well, happy Yuletide, gentlemen. Entree! <laughs> The boys from Phil's Orchestra. Gosh, what they did to my house last time they were here. Come in, fellas! <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Rochester, take the boys in the other room and give them some refreshments. You mean that punch you fixed up this afternoon? Yeah, help yourself, boys. Take it easy, man. It ain't nothing to get excited about. <laughs> That Rochester doesn't think punch is any good unless you have to crawl away from the bowl. <laughs> now, let's see. I uh, say, Jack, who's all coming over tonight anyway? Well, there's our whole gang. Then I invited some very important people. See, Robert Taylor and Barbara Stanwyck, Clark Gable and Carol Lombard, Ronald Coleman and Ginger Rogers. Oh, a whole flock of them. Well, gee, I ought to run home and put on a dress with a lower back. Lower back? It's down to San Diego now. <laughs> And, oh, Mary, you want to hear something terrific? I asked Barbara Whitney to come here as my guest. 
Barbara Whitney. Yeah, you remember the girl I took away from Phil Harris? The girl you took away from Phil? <laughs> what are you laughing at? That's like taking a hair away from John L. Lewis's eyebrows. <laughs> Just the same, Phil will burn up when he sees her here. Is she coming alone? No, I asked Don Wilson to stop by and pick her up. Now, Mary, hand me some more of that tinsel. I want to get this tree finished. Well, I guess they're starting to arrive now, huh? Hey, Mr. Benny, are you still up on that ladder? Yes, I am. Okay, then I'll answer. <laughs> well, that's mighty sweet of you. See, now I think I'll put something on this branch here. Oh, Jack, why don't you stop fussing with that tree and come down? No, Mary, Miss Whitney will be here, and I want it to look beautiful. Hello, Rochester. Hello, Mr. Baker. Merry Christmas, seasons, felicitations, and wipe your feet. <laughs> Hiya, Kenny. Merry Christmas, everybody. Come on in, Kenny. Hang up your hat and coat and make yourself at home. Okay, Jack. Am I the first one here? No, the orchestra boys are in the other room. Hey, Kenny, don't hang your coat on the Christmas tree. Would need something. <laughs> well, it's not that, Bear. Oh, say, Jack, here's a little present for you. It's nothing much, but I hope you like it. Oh, thanks, Kenny. Here, catch it. Gee, I wonder what it is. I'll bet it's a baked apple. <laughs> bet it isn't. Say, it's a pretty package. Oh, Kenny, these are beautiful. They're the very latest thing, Jack, musical handkerchiefs. Musical handkerchiefs, huh? Yeah, every time you blow your nose, chimes ring. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. I can hardly wait till I catch a cold. Well, why don't you try one, Jack? Okay, I will. Now blow hard. <laughs> oh, isn't that a novelty? I wonder how they ever made these. They must have crossed a piece of linen with a hunk of Zillaphone. <laughs> Mary, you're positively brilliant. Say, Jack, as long as the orchestra boys are here, I'd like to go in the next room and brush up on my song. Oh, go ahead, Kenny. We'll want a little entertainment. Okay, see you later. Now, Mary, we've just got a few more things to put up. So hand me that big paper bell there. Here you are, Jack. Hey, Rochester, there's the door again. I got my shoes off. Well, put them on and answer it. Okay. <laughs> You know, Mary, the way Rochester has been acting lately, I've got a good mind not to give him his Christmas present. What'd you get him, Jack? A brand new vacuum cleaner. <laughs> a vacuum cleaner? Yes. Oh, that's lovely. He can play with it on his day off. Well, at least it's something practical. Here you are, boss. A couple of telegrams for you. Telegrams? Let's see who they're from, Mary. Okay. Christmas greetings, I suppose, huh? Oh, Jack, this wire's from Robert Taylor. Oh, Bob, huh? Yes, he says that, Dear Jack, Terribly sorry that Miss Stanwick and I are unable to come to your party tonight, as Miss Stanwick's dog, Rover, is quite ill. Hmm. I don't believe it. That's just a thin excuse. Hmm. What's the other wire, Mary? Uh, here it is. Uh, it says, uh, Dear Jack, believe me, Mr. Taylor is telling the truth. I have a terrible headache, signed Rover. <laughs> Well, it doesn't take Sherlock Holmes to see those, through those wires. I'm glad they're not coming. That burns me up. Hey, Jack, should I try my song now? Yes, go ahead and try it. What do I care? Mary, hand me some more of that lousy tinsel. <laughs> see, this side here could stand a few more ornaments. Mary, hold the ladder. Okay. And hold it tight. Remember what happened the last time I climbed a tree? Yeah, you saw the Rose Bowl game. <laughs> I don't mean that time. Wow, look at all those decorations. Hey, Mary, what's that round, shiny thing on top? Jack's head. <laughs> it is not. It's a silver moon. Hey, boss, another telegram for you. Take it, Mary. I wonder if I should put a popcorn ball on top there instead of a star. Oh, Jack, this telegram is from Ronald Coleman. Oh, Ronnie, huh? What does he say? He says, dear sir... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, regret exceedingly that I cannot attend your holiday gathering, and incidentally, how did you get my address? <laughs> how did I get his address? He lives right in back of me. Well, there's another one off your list. Yeah. Oh, darn it, that top bulb went out. Hold the ladder tight, Mary. 
Uh, I guess I can reach it. Oh, Jack, here comes Don Wilson and Barbara Whitney up the front steps. Oh, fine. Let them in, Mary. Okay. Gee, I hope Barbara will like the Christmas present I sent her. Hello, Don. Merry Christmas. Same to you, Mary. Merry Christmas, everybody. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Barbara. Merry <laughs> Was that the door, Mr. Benny? No, that was me. I fell off the ladder. Oh, I won't answer it then. <laughs> Help me up, Don. Ooh, I sat on some ornaments. I hope somebody sent me a pair of tweezers. Here, give me your hand, Jack. That's too bad. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Jack. It's all my fault. No, it isn't, Barbara. I'd have probably fallen off anyway. Gee, I'm glad to see you, Babs. Hey, did Don drive carefully on the way over? Well, he drove pretty fast, but he had his arm around me so I wouldn't bounce out. Oh. Oh, so that's it. Why, Don? From Harris to Benny to Wilson. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mary. I'm not a bit jealous of Don. He's my friend, aren't you, Don? Yes, Jack, and believe me, I acted like a perfect gentleman. Say, Babs. Did you get the Christmas present I sent you? Thanks, Jack. They were lovely, but I never wear pink ones. Oh, darn it, Barbara. Keep still. <laughs> God. Oh, boy. Jack is sure some devil. <laughs> Stop laughing, Kenny. I bought Barbara a pair of pink gloves. I bet they got lace on them. They have nothing on the kind. Now, come on, everybody. Let's go in the other room and have some refreshments. Oh, that's great. Let's go. Hey, boss, boss. What is it, Rochester? There's somebody at the back door who wants to see you. Oh, yes, I know who it is. Excuse me a minute. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, hello, Andy. Hiya, bud. Not so loud. Wait till I close the door. Now, look, Andy. You'll find the Santa Claus suit out there in the garage. And as soon as you're dressed, you climb up on the roof and come down the chimney. Well, well, I better put a beard on so they won't recognize me. Yeah, you better put one on your tonsils, too. <laughs> now, here, here's the bag with all the presents in it. Okay, gee, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Quiet, Andy. Quiet. They'll hear you. Oh, say, Buck, here's a little Christmas present that Ma sent you. I hope you like it. Well, that was very sweet of her. What is it, Andy? Well, it's a combination salad fork and back scratcher. <laughs> well, <laughs> say, there's a comb on there, too. Now, that's for your hair, are you? Uh... <laughs> Wait a minute, Andy. Say, there's a comb on there, too. <laughs> <There's> a... <laughs> that's for your hair as you're going by. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But it's too late now. <laughs> now, look, remember, Andy, remember when you're all dressed up, look, at when you're all dressed up, get up on the roof, see? And here's your cue. Huh. When you hear me say, Sandy Claus will be here in a minute, you come down the chimney. Okay, see you later, Buck. <laughs> I feel like a darn fool. <laughs> Quiet, Andy. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Dum, dum, dum. To well, here I am again, gang. Hey, I'm sorry, Barbara. I had a little business to attend to. Oh, that's quite all right. Uh, say, Jack, another telegram just came for you. It's from Clark Gable and Carol Lombard. Oh, oh, what does it say? It says that we would love to be with you tonight, but we were invited somewhere else in the nick of time. <laughs> Well, of all, uh, that's the last time I'll ever invite them. And I hope Ginger Rogers doesn't wire me that she can't come. She couldn't wait. She telephoned. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Well, the next time I'll give a party, I'll get a crowd if I have to change my name to Elsa Maxwell. This is awful. Yeah, what are we going to do with all this food in the kitchen? I don't know, Rochester. Doggone, I'll be eating so much cranberry sauce, I'll be red in the face. <laughs> That's a neat trick if you can do it. <laughs> Red in the face. Say, Jack, isn't Phil Harris coming over tonight? Phil? Of course he is. And wait till he sees Barbara Whitley here. Why, Jack, didn't you tell Phil I had a date with you tonight? No, let the wise guy find out for himself. Hey, boys, how about playing a number, fellas? And we'll wait and we'll dance till dinner is ready. Huh? Oh, yeah. 
And leave the punch ball on the table. You can go back. Come on, Babs. Let you and I dance. I'm sorry, Jack. I promised the first one to Don. Oh, I see. Well, Mary, looks like I'm stuck with you. Huh? Oh, no, you're not. I'm stuck with Kenny. Hmm. Well, play, boys. Hey, Rochester. I don't want to dance. <laughs> I don't want you to dance. I want you to put down that newspaper and get out of that easy chair. Hit it, boys. Who does Clark Gable think he is, anyway? Well, thanks, Barbara. I enjoyed that dance very much. So did I, Don. Say, Mary, I'm some dancer, ain't I? Kenny, you're marvelous, and believe me, I'm kidding. <laughs> thanks, pal. Hey, Jack, what are you doing up on that ladder again? I want to put these ornaments back on top of the tree. Now, Mary, hold the ladder steady this time, will you? There's the door, Rochester. Don't go on every time that bell rings you up on the ladder. <laughs> Listen, Rochester, you'd be trimming this tree yourself if you weren't colorblind. Mary, hand me up those scissors. Well, well, Merry Christmas, Mr. Harris. Hiya, Rochester. Say, Jack, it's Phil Harris. Oh, boy, wait till he sees Barbara here. Merry Christmas, Phil. Same to you, Jackson. Say, Jack, I brought a friend along. Do you mind? No, no, who is it? Joan Bennett. Joan Bennett? <laughs> Hello, Joan. Hello, Jack. Oh, my elbow. Well, Jack, what are you doing in that ridiculous position? Who, me? It's an encore, but you don't know it. <laughs> uh, help me up, Mary. Well, Joan, I'm awfully glad you dropped in. She was nice of Phil to bring you. Oh, he and I are old friends, aren't we, Phil? You said it, baby. <laughs> baby. You know, Joan, every girl he takes out, he calls baby. Well, he can't remember all their names. <laughs> Half of them you can't even pronounce. <laughs> oh, Joan, you know everybody here, don't you? Nearly everybody. Hello, Mary. Hello, Joan. Gee, that's a pretty dress you've got on. Thanks. You really like it? No, but it's Christmas. <laughs> Mary. Oh, Joan, I don't think you've met Miss Whitney. Uh, this is Barbara Whitney, my latest. Well, how do you do, Miss Bennett? How do you do? She's a little young for you, isn't she, Jack? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's me. Get them young, treat them rough, and buy them nothing. <laughs> you know, Joan, Phil is so witty at times. Hey, Miss Bennett! Miss Bennett! Yes, Kenny? Here I am under the mistletoe. <laughs> I'll be over in about five years. <laughs> Very good, Joan. Five years. Gosh, I'll be out of the mood by then. Look what's in a mood. <laughs> well, boys and girls, I hope you're all hungry. We're going to have a swell turkey. Don't tell me you went for a turkey. Yes, I did, Phil. We're going to have a marvelous dinner. Everything from soup to nuts. How much is it a plate? Well, just ignore that. Oh, well, Rochester, how's the turkey coming along? We're getting hungry. Well, it'll take time, boss. That's a pretty tough bird. <laughs> tough bird? He's been in the oven over three hours. I know, but every time I light the gas, he blows it out. be darned. Now, you go out in the kitchen and rush that turkey along. Okay. Man, that's the foulest foul I ever saw. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joan, but you know Rochester exaggerates, so the dinner is really lovely. Well, to tell the truth, Jack, I'm not hungry. Oh. Well, there's an unusual blonde. <laughs> Quiet, Mary. Well, folks, let's have some of these hors d'oeuvres here till dinner is ready. Oh, huh? yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Jack, uh, Rochester made a mistake. Well, what's the matter? There's only seven of us here, and he brought in eight olives. <laughs> well, Joan can have two. Gee, it's, it's good to see you again, Joan. Gosh, I haven't seen you since we finished making artisan models abroad. We sure had a lot of fun in that picture, didn't we? Yes, we did, Jack. It's playing around now. Have you seen it? Joan, you promise you won't tell anybody? I promise. I saw it 12 times. <laughs> Twelve times? Yeah. You know your part, Jeff? <laughs> a little trouble, didn't I? 
But say, Joan, no kidding. Gee, when I looked up at the screen and, and I saw you in my arms, see, it, it seemed just like a dream. You mean that scene where we were sitting on the park bench in the moonlight eating popcorn? Yeah. See, wasn't it marvelous? Well, I didn't think there was enough butter on it. <laughs> I'm talking about us. Oh. You know, Joan, the two of us worked so smoothly together. How would you like to make another picture with me sometime? Well, Jack, I don't know. I couldn't really say right now. Send him a telegram. Everybody else does. <laughs> Mary. Oh, say, Joan, I almost forgot. Come on out here in the hall a minute. I got a surprise for you. What is it? Oh, come on. Come on with me. You'll find out. Excuse us a minute, will you, fellas? Hey, Jack, what's the idea? Never mind. Come on, Joan. Oh, all right. Don't. Pull me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, here we are. Where? Right under the mistletoe. You know what that means, don't you? No. What does it mean? Well, it means this. <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> wow! Hooray. <laughs> Wasn't that swell, huh? Now, let's go back and, Joan, act nonchalant, huh? All right. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Jam, 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 da, jam, jam, jam. That's the idea. Hey, Jack, what are we going to eat? Oh, well, yeah, 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 how about yeah, yeah, All right, pretty soon, fellas, pretty soon. Now, look, everybody, before we go into dinner, I want you all to sit around the fireplace and get your presents. Sandy Claus is coming down the chimney. Sandy Claus? Yeah. Now, sit around the fireplace, everybody. Oh, I <laughs> Now, put out the lights, Mary. Okay, Jack. Because Sandy Claus will be down here in a minute. Because Sandy Claus will be down here in a minute. Because Sandy Claus... Oh, stop that clowning, Jack. I'm not clowning. Sandy Claus, are you deaf? Deaf nothing. I'm stuck in the chimney. <laughs> What do we do now? Let's see. That's it. Come on, fellas. See you later, Andy. Oh, Good night, folks, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.